وذرياته وأهل بيته وخلفائه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى أم الدين رضوان الله تعالى على مجمعين ناظرین اکرام میں قاسم رشید احمد آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوں آج کی یہ ٹرانسمیشن لے کر کے تھوڑی دیر کے لیے آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوں اس کے بعد میں اپنے کام سے جاؤں گا اور پھر بعد میں انشاءاللہ واپس آپ کی خدمت میں حاضری ہوگی چند گزارشات آپ کی خدمت میں پیش کرنا چاہتا ہوں یہ کہ الحمدللہ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے آپ کو یہ وہ ادارہ نصیب فرمایا ہے وہ ادارہ عطا فرمایا ہے کہ جس کا ایک سالہ سال کا نہیں بلکہ دسیوں سالوں کا کہہ لیجئے دس سال سے اوپر ہو گئے اس کا ریکارڈ ہے ڈیلیوری کا کہ ماشاءاللہ جو ہے جو آپ ڈونیٹ کرتے ہیں وہ یہ ادارہ احسن طریقے سے مشکل ترین مقامات کے اوپر اور پریشان کن حالات میں جا کر کے آپ کے پروجیکٹس ڈیلیور کرتا ہے ماشاءاللہ جس طریقے سے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کی ڈیلیوری ہے دنیا کے بے شمار ممالک کے اندر بہت کم ادارے ایسے ہیں جن کو وہ رسائی ملتی ہے اور وہ پہنچ ان کو حاصل ہوتی ہے اور ان مقامات پر جا کر کے وہ ڈیلیور کر پاتے ہیں اسی کی ایک کڑی الحمدللہ برما کے اندر کام کا ہے سلسلہ ہے انسائیڈ برما ایک تو ہے کہ بنگلہ دیش میں جو کوکس بازار میں ریفیجیز ہیں برما کے ان کی مدد کرنا اس میں بھی جو ہے میرے خیال میں انگلینڈ یا یورپ کے اداروں میں سب سے بڑا کام الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کا ہی ہے تین ہزار فیملیز کو وہاں پر سیٹل کرنا ان کو روزانہ جو ہے پانی وغیرہ کی سہولیات فراہم کرنا ان کے باتروم وغیرہ جو ہے اس کی روزانہ دیکھ بال کرنا صفائی کرنا ان کو جو ہے فیلٹرڈ پانی سپلائی کرنا ان کو راشن وغیرہ میڈیکل کلینک جو ہے اور ماشاءاللہ کئی بے شمار پروجیکٹ تو یہ انسائیڈ برما اور پھر انسائیڈ برما اسکولوں کا قیام کہ اسکولز وہاں پر اسٹیبلش کیے ماشاءاللہ تو اب جب ایسی جگہوں پہ پہنچ ہے تو یقیناً جو ہے غزہ جیسے علاقوں میں ماشاءاللہ الخیر کی یقیناً پہنچ ہوگی اور جس لحاظ سے الحمدللہ الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کا کام غزہ کے اندر ہو رہا ہے جو کہ ہم ثابت کر سکتے ہیں ماشاءاللہ یہ کہ اندر ریکارڈ ہے وہ اس کے مطلب ڈاکیمنٹس بھی ہیں اس کے فوٹیج بھی ہیں کافی حد تک تو جس طریقے سے الخیر کا کام غزہ کے اندر ہو رہا ہے جس طریقے سے الخیر کے ٹرکس غزہ کے اندر پہنچ رہے ہیں جو ہے اور اس وقت اسکین پر آپ دیکھ بھی رہے ہیں ماشاءاللہ جو یہ بارڈر ہے رفع بارڈر جسے کہتے ہیں تو وہاں سے بے شمار ٹرک جو ہے ہمارے داخل ہو رہے ہیں مختلف دنوں کی یہ فوٹیج ہے کوئی جو ہے کلپ کسی دن کا ہے کوئی کسی دن کا ہے تو روزانہ کی تو فوٹیج ظاہر ہے کوئی بھی ادارہ ریکارڈ نہیں کر سکتا ہے چونکہ بس ٹرک کی اس ٹائم پر داخل ہو رہے ہیں کچھ پتہ نہیں ہوتا ہے تو لیکن یہ کہ جتنا فوٹیج ہم حاصل کر پائے تو جو بھی ہم نے حاصل کیا یقین مانیے کہ جو ہے کسی اور ادارے کے پاس اس کا آدھا کیا ایک تہائی بھی نہیں ہوگا بلکہ جو ہے میں تو ایک بات کہتا ہوں کہ بھئی جو ہے اور ادارے والے اگر جو ہے غزہ میں سامان پہنچا رہے ہیں تو اس بارڈر سے اس گیٹ سے داخل ہوتے ہوئے کہ چند لوریز کے فوٹیج دکھا دیں چند لوریز کا یہ ہے تو امہ ویل فیر ٹرسٹ ہے ماشاءاللہ یہاں پر جن کی لوریز گئی ہیں اس کے علاوہ باقی اداروں کا میں کچھ کہہ نہیں سکتا چونکہ ان اداروں نے فراہم نہیں کیا ہے تو الحمدللہ الخیر یہ کہ صرف دعویٰ نہیں کر رہا ہے بلکہ آپ کو دکھا بھی رہا ہے الحمدللہ تو اس وقت ضرورت اس بات کی ہے کہ آپ حضرات بڑھ چڑھ کر کے تعاون کریں اور بڑھ چڑھ کر کے سپورٹ کریں اللہ نے اگر توفیق دی ہے تو پوری ایک لوری کا خرچ آپ اٹھائیں یعنی اگر آٹے کی خالی لوری ہو فلاورز کی تو وہ درمیانی سائز کی لوری جو ہے وہ تقریباً پندرہ ہزار پونڈ میں ہے فوڈ پیک کی لوری جو ہے وہ تقریباً پینتیس ہزار پونڈ میں تھرٹی فائیو تھاؤزن پونڈ میں فوڈ پیک کی لوری اس کے اندر کھانے کی مختلف اشیاء وغیرہ پیکس بنا کر کے فوڈ پیکس بنا کر کے وہ ماشاءاللہ جاتی ہیں اگر آپ جو ہے پیلٹ کے لیے لحاظ سے کرنا چاہتے ہیں تو وہ بھی کر سکتے ہیں ماشاءاللہ تو الحمدللہ اتنا زبردست کام اور اتنا زبردست پروفائل جو ہے بہت ہی کم اداروں کو یہ مواقع نصیب ہوتے ہیں الخیر دنیا میں 
شاید ہی جو ہے اس جیسا کوئی اور ادارہ ہو جس کو اس حد تک رسائی ہو جو ہے نان گورنمنٹ اداروں کی میں بات کر رہا ہوں میں یونائٹڈ نیشن ریڈ کریزنٹ ریڈ کراس وغیرہ ان کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں میں گورنمنٹس کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں کوئیت قطر وغیرہ کی گورنمنٹ کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں اگرچہ بعض گورنمنٹس آپ تعجب کریں گے اس وقت کم از کم تین چار ممالک کی حکومتیں یا ان کی منسٹریز الخیر کے تھرو بھی ڈیلیور کر رہے ہیں وہ اپنے ذریعے سے بھی بھیج رہے ہیں لیکن الخیر کے ذریعے سے بھی بھیج رہے ہیں اور جو آج ماشاءاللہ جو ہے جو نیوز آئی ہے ہمارے پاس کہ بھئی چند دن پہلے ہی ابھی رمضان کی ابتدا میں جو ہے رمضان کی ابتدا میں قطر کے آفیشلز نے ہمیں کافی بڑا کنسائمنٹ دیا کئی لوریز کا کہ یہ لوریز کا جو ہے آٹا اور کھانا وغیرہ آپ نے اندر پہنچانا ہے اس شرط کے ساتھ کہ آپ نے یہ خیموں میں جا کر کے تقسیم کرنا ہے ٹینٹوں میں جا کر کے آپ نے ایک ایک ٹینٹ کو ایک ایک بوری پہنچانی ہے تو اور دوسرا یہ کہ اس کے ساتھ ساتھ مزید یہ کہ بریڈ بنا کر کے وہ بھی جو ہے آپ نے دینی ہے روٹی بنا کر کے تو الحمدللہ ہم اس میں پورے کامیاب ہوئے ہمیں خدشہ تھا ان حالات کے اندر جہاں جیسے وہ فلاور مرسیکل کی خبریں آ رہی ہیں کہ آٹا تقسیم کرتے ہوئے جو لوگوں کی جانے جا رہی ہیں وہاں پر وہ جو خبریں آ رہی ہیں تو ان خبروں کے ہوتے ہوئے ہمیں خدشہ تھا کہ ہم یہ وعدہ فلفل کر بھی پائیں گے کہ نہیں تو پہلے لوریز اندر داخل ہوئی بارڈر کے اندر وہ ایک مرحلہ الحمدللہ مکمل ہوا اس کے بعد غزہ کے اندر وہ لوریز داخل ہوئی الحمدللہ وہ اگلا مرحلہ مکمل ہوا اس کے بعد تیسرے مرحلے کے اوپر ماشاءاللہ جو ہے اللہ نے توفیق دی اور ہماری ٹیم نے جو ہے اس کی تقسیم کی ماشاءاللہ وہ سارا جو ہے وہاں پر تقسیم کیا تو اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی جزائے خیرت آفر میں ہماری ٹیم کو کہ واقعی مطلب یہ نہیں ایک حکومتی یہ کہہ لیجئے آفیشلز کے لیے ڈیلیور کر پانا یہ بہت ہی بڑی بات ہے ہمارے لیے اور یہ اس سے اب آپ اندازہ لگا سکتے ہیں کہ اگر جو ہے ان کا ڈونیشن پہلے چند لاکھوں میں اگر تھا چند لاکھ ڈالر میں تھا تو اب انشاءاللہ ان کا ڈونیشن کتنا بڑا ہوگا اس کا اندازہ آپ لگا لیں ہم خیر پھر بھی بہت بڑے وعدے ہم نہیں کرتے اور ہم مطلب ہی نہیں حکومتوں سے یہ کہتے ہیں کہ جتنا ہم سنبھال سکتے ہیں وہ اتنا ہم لیں گے بعض جو ہے وہ مطلب ہمارے سے بات کر رہے ہیں دس ملین ڈالر کی جو ہے ہم کہتے ہیں آپ آدھا آدھا ملین کر کے جو ہے دیں ہم آہستہ آہستہ جتنا پہنچاتے رہیں گے وہ اتنا ہم ایک ساتھ دس ملین ڈالر لے لیں اور پھر نہ پہنچا پائیں تو وہ تعلقات بھی خراب ہوں گے ریپیٹیشن بھی خراب ہوگی اور یہ وہ سارا تو اس وقت دنیا کے ماشاءاللہ کئی ممالک ہیں اور دنیا کے بے شمار بڑے بڑے ادارے ہیں جن کی طرف سے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن ماشاءاللہ ڈیلیور کر رہا ہے تو اگر دنیا کے اتنے لوگ الخیر کے اوپر اعتماد اور بھروسہ کر رہے ہیں تو آپ کا بھی حق بنتا ہے کہ آپ اس ادارے کے ساتھ مل کر کے کچھ تعاون کریں کچھ کام کریں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی جزائے خیر عطا فرمائے اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی آپ کو توفیق عطا فرمائے ناظرین اکرام جو ہے اس وقت حالات ایسے ہیں کہ ہم ان تک کے صرف یہ کہہ لیجئے کہ اگر ایک پانی کا گلاس بھی پہنچا پائیں اور اس پانی کا گلاس پہنچانے کے اوپر ہماری سو پونڈ بھی کوسٹ آ جائے تو بھی میں مانتا ہوں کہ بہت ہی کار آمد ہے بہت ہی کار آمد ہے دیکھیں قرآن کریم کے اندر ایک آیت ہے اور جو ہے یعنی گنہگاروں کا اور جہنمیوں کا تذکرہ ہو رہا ہے اس میں جہنمیوں کا تذکرہ ہو رہا ہے قرآن is talking about basically those who will be who are going in hell fire اور ان کی نشانیاں بتائی جاتی ہیں ان نشانیوں میں ایک نشانی ہے وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ کہ یہ ضرورت مندوں کو مسکینوں کو غریبوں کو کھلانے کے اوپر اُبھارتے نہیں تھے they they didn't encourage people to feed the poor and needy to feed مساکین they didn't encourage اب جو ہے میں یہ چاہتا ہوں کہ اس آیت کا مصداق کوئی نہ بنے ہر ایک جو ہے اس آیت کے زمرے سے دور رہے وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ 
کہ وہ غریبوں کو کھلانے کے اوپر ابھارتے نہیں تھے تو اب اس کی ایک شکل تو یہی ہے کہ وہ ابھارتے نہیں تھے اور ایک شکل اس سے بھی بری ہے جو اس سے بھی بری ہے اس کی طرف میں بعد میں آتا ہوں لیکن یہ کہ اس سے بچنے کے لیے اس آیت کا مصداق آپ نہ ہو اس کے لیے ایک تو سب سے پہلے اپنے آپ کو ابھارے اپنی فیملی کو ابھارے اپنے متعلقین اور دوسروں کو جہاں تک آپ کی پہنچ ہو سکتی ہے ان کو ابھارے کہ بھائی یہ الخیر فاؤنڈیشن ادارہ یا فلاں ادارہ جو بھی ادارہ جو ہے آپ کو لگتا ہے اچھا کام کر رہا ہے بھائی یہ اچھا کام کر رہے ہیں ان کے ذریعے اس وقت غزہ کے لوگ ضرورت مند ہیں ان تک کہ ہم آٹا تیل چاول جو بھی ہو سکتا ہے وہ پہنچائیں تو اس وقت جو ہے غزہ سے زیادہ بھوک دنیا کے کس خطے میں ہوگی ان سے زیادہ بہتر اور ضرورت مند حقدار کون ہوں گے اس وقت لہذا ان کو جتنا بھی ہم پہنچا سکتے ہیں پہنچائیں اور اس کے اوپر ابھاریں دوسروں کو ابھاریں اور یہی ہم لوگ بھی کر رہے ہیں دوسری اس کی شکل ہے جو کہ اس سے خطرناک ہے اور وہی یہ کہ جو اچھے کام کر رہے ہیں اس میں رکاوٹ ڈالے جو اچھا کام کر رہے ہیں جو غریبوں کو مسکینوں کو کھلا رہے ہیں اس میں رکاوٹ ڈالیں ایک ہے کہ کوئی ادارہ ہے وہ غلط کام کر رہا ہے گڑبڑی کر رہا ہے دھوکے بازی کر رہا ہے کوئی ادارہ گڑبڑی کر رہا ہے تو اس کا جو ہے پھر یس وہ گڑبڑی کو ہائی لائٹ کرنا ضروری ہے لیکن ایک ادارہ ماشاءاللہ اتنا زبردست کام کر رہا ہے اور وہ نظر بھی آ رہا ہے صرف دعویٰ نہیں ہے بلکہ دلیل بھی ساتھ میں ہے صرف دعویٰ نہیں ہے بلکہ ایویڈنس بھی ساتھ میں ہے جو ہے ود ایویڈنس ماشاء اللہ ایک ادارہ ڈیلیور کر رہا ہے اور اس میں جو ہے اس ادارے کے لیے یا اور کسی اداروں کی مخالفت کریں جو اچھے کام کر رہے ہیں تو پھر یہ جو ہے ولائے حض و اللہ تعام المسکین کا بہت ہی خطرناک مصداق ہوگا یہ شخص ہم اگر جو ہے غریبوں کو جو کھانا کھلا رہے ہیں ان تک جو پہنچا رہے ہیں اس کی اگر مخالفت کرتے ہیں تو یہ ہمارے لیے بہت خطرناک ہے اور بہت بڑا ڈر کا مقام ہے میں یہ نہیں میں یہ بات اس لیے نہیں کہہ رہا ہوں کہ جو ہے کوئی مخالفت میرے سامنے آئی ہے الحمدللہ اس سال میرے سامنے کوئی ایسا واقعہ نہیں آیا کسی کا کہ جو ہے انہوں نے مخالفت کی ہو یہ وہ جو ہے سوالات لوگ کرتے ہیں جو ہے سوالات کا جہاں تک ہوتا ہے جس جو ہے اپنے ڈونر ہیں جو اپنے منسل متعلقین ہیں ان کو اور اقرا ٹی وی کے ذریعے جوابات دیتے ہیں لیکن کوئی اگر کہیں سے اٹھ کے کھڑا ہو جائے کہ بھائی مجھے ایویڈنس دو اور یہ وہ آپ ہمارے آفس آئیں ہم آپ کو کیوں بھیجیں ایویڈنس جس کو چاہیے وہ ہمارے آفس آئیں ہاں اگر کسی نے کوئی پروجیکٹ اسپانسر کیا ہے کسی نے کوئی ٹرک یا لوری اسپانسر کی ہے کسی نے کوئی یتیم بچے کو اسپانسر کیا ہے کسی نے کوئی پانی کا کنویں اسپانسر کیا ہے تو ان کا حق بنتا ہے کہ ان کو ایویڈنس دیا جائے کہ بھائی آپ کا پروجیکٹ تو ڈونر کا تو حق بنتا ہے لیکن اور وہ ڈونرز کا بھی حق بنتا ہے جنہوں نے اس پروجیکٹ کے لیے کسی اور پروجیکٹ کے لیے ڈونیٹ کیا ان کا بھی حق بنتا ہے کہ ان کو جو ہے انفارمیشن ملتی رہے لیکن کوئی ہے جو ڈونر بھی نہیں ہے کچھ بھی نہیں اور وہ سوالات کریں تو ہم ان سے یہی کہتے ہیں بھائی آپ ہمارے آفس آئیں آ کر کے جو ہے ہمارے ساتھ بیٹھے ہم آپ کو سارا دکھاتے ہیں ماشاء اللہ تو اس طریقے کا معاملہ ہے کہ اللہ سبحانہ و نے یہ ادارہ عطا فرمایا آپ کو اور ہمیں کہ جس کے ذریعے سے دنیا کے بہترین طریقے سے جو ہے کام ہو رہے ہیں ان کاموں کو سراہنے کی ضرورت ہے اور اس کو اپریشیٹ کرنے کا اس کا اس کی شکر گزاری کا ایک طریقہ سب سے بہترین طریقہ یہ ہے کہ اس کا حصہ بنے ہم آج میں آپ سب کو دعوت دیتا ہوں کہ جتنے بھی لوگ یہ اپیل دیکھ رہے ہیں آپ کا جو ہے بڑے سے بڑے لیول کے اوپر جتنا بھی ہو سکے حصہ اس ادارے کے ساتھ لگنا چاہیے تاکہ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی اس ادارے کے ذریعے آپ کے تعاون سے جو ہے بے شمار لوگوں کو انشاءاللہ بھوک اور پیاس سے مفلسی سے بچائے انشاءاللہ جزاکم اللہ الخیر فی امان اللہ والسلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ In the southern Gaza city of Rafa, volunteers and rescue workers are digging in a crater where homes used to be. Israeli air strikes on three residential buildings in this area resulted in the death of dozens of Palestinians. What was meant to be a place of safety is now a source of death, 
given the magnitude of the destruction. According to the United Nations, more than 60% of Gaza's infrastructure has been destroyed. Many missing people are believed to be trapped under mounds of rubble. Palestinians are wondering where to go next as their safe zone is turned to dust. ਰਸੂਲੁੱਲਾਹਿ <laughs> बच्चे जो हैं जो पढ़ने आते हैं ना सही वो रोड के साथ बैठते हैं बहर तो बच्चों का ख्याल जो है पढ़ाई की तरफ कम रहता है आदमियों की तरफ ज्यादा रहता है क्योंकि उधर से गुजारा होता है ना सही तो बच्चे फिर उसकी तरफ तवज्जो करते हैं तकड़े हुए ना बनवा ना ने बिना विच वो सारा एम एन सरदार मैं के सरदार बनवा दे नु आकर नु कोशिश छी मैंने लागे ने जका नहीं बनी الرحيم محترم سامعين ناظرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته امید کرتا ہوں کہ آپ تمام حضرات بہت ہی عافیت کے ساتھ ہوں گے اللہ تعالی ہمیشہ آپ کو اپنی حفظ و امان میں رکھے اقرا ٹیلی ویژن کی لائیو ٹرانسمیشن افطار ٹرانسمیشن میں اس وقت ہم آپ کے سامنے حاضر ہیں اور آپ کے لیے ان بابرکت لمحات میں دل و جان سے دعا گو ہیں کہ اللہ کریم آپ کے روزوں کو بھی قبول فرمائے اللہ کریم آپ کی عبادات کو بھی قبول فرمائے اللہ پاک آپ کا قرآن پڑھنا اللہ کریم آپ کا قیام رکوع سجود سب اپنی بارگاہ میں قبول فرمائے اور جو ماشاء اللہ ان بابرکت لمحات میں آپ الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کے ساتھ مختلف پروجیکٹس میں تعاون کرتے ہیں ڈونیشن کرتے ہیں ہم انشاءاللہ دعا کرتے ہیں ابھی افطار کے وقت بھی دعا کریں گے کہ اللہ کریم انہیں بھی اپنی بارگاہ میں قبول فرمائے اس وقت ہمارے لیے بہت ہی سعادت کی بات ہے میں سمجھتا ہوں الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کے لیے اور اقتا ٹی وی کے لیے کہ ہمارے پاس مفسر قرآن حضرت مولانا علامہ انیس احمد آزاد بل گرامی صاحب موجود ہیں اور میں یہ بات کہنے میں کوئی آر نہیں سمجھتا کہ ان کا وجود رحمت ہے اللہ کریم ان کا سایہ ہمارے سروں پہ قائم اور دائم رکھے تو اللہ کریم ان کا سایہ ہمارے سروں پہ قائم اور دائم رکھے اور ماشاءاللہ بہت بڑے عالم دین ہیں ہندوستان کے یہاں پہ ہر رمضان میں تشریف لاتے ہیں اور الحمدللہ خلاصہ تراوی خلاصہ قرآن پر بڑی مدلل اور مفصل گفتگو فرماتے ہیں اور اگر میں یوں کہوں تو بے جا نہیں الحمدللہ اللہ پاک نے اتنا نوازا ہے کہ جب گفتگو کرتے ہیں تو گویا کہ گوہر لٹاتے ہیں تو اللہ کریم ہمیں ان کی جو خدمات ہیں یا ان کی جو گفتگو ہے اس پر مکمل طریقے سے عمل کرنے کی توفیقات سے مالا مال فرمائے تو میں حضرت سے درخواست کروں گا کہ وہ انشاءاللہ اللہ 
کچھ ارشاد فرمائیں گے ہمیں پند و نصائح فرمائیں گے حضرت نشاد السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ خیریت سے الحمدللہ دعائیں ہیں اپ کی اللہ کا فضل سے گزر رہے ہیں ماشاءاللہ الحمدللہ بہت اچھا وقت گزر رہا ہے اللہ کی فضل سلامت رکھے تو ہمارے سامعین ماشاءاللہ اپ کی گفتگو کو بڑے شوق اور محبت سے سنتے ہیں تو وہ انتظار میں رہتے ہیں کہ اپ اپ کوئی آئیں گے کچھ مسائل بتائیں گے کچھ فضائل بتلائیں گے تو اج اپ جو دل میں آئے وہ اپ ان سے بات کیجیے اللہ تعالی سلامت رکھے السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سید المرسلین و علی آلہ و اصحاب ہی و ازواج ہی و ذریات ہی و اہل بیت ہی اجمعین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم يا ايها الذين امنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون حضرات الناظرین کرام اللہ تعالی کا کس قدر فضل و کرم ان کا انعام اکرام اور احسان ہے کہ انہوں نے ہمیں اور اپ کو اور پوری امت مسلمہ کو تمام عالم اسلام کو رمضان جیسے مقدس مبارک اور رحمتوں والا مہینہ عطا فرمایا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ اس کی قدردانی کی ہمیں اور آپ کو توفیق عطا فرمائے حضرات ناظرین اکرام رمضان کے مہینے میں اللہ رب العزت والجلال نے اپنے ایمان والے بندوں پر روزے فرض کیے ہیں اور جس آیت میں اللہ تعالیٰ نے روزوں کی فرضیت کو بیان فرمایا ہے وہاں اس بات کی وضاحت اور سراہت فرما دی ہے کہ کما کتب علی الذین من قبلکم یعنی یہ روزوں کی فرضیت تمہارے اوپر کوئی انوکھی بات نہیں ہے تم سے پہلے جو قومیں گزری ہیں ان پر بھی روزے فرض کیے جا چکے ہیں تو گزشتہ قوموں پر روزوں کی فرضیت کا تذکرہ کر کے اللہ تعالی نے اہل ایمان کے سامنے اس حقیقت کو وعدہ کر دیا کہ روزے امت کے لیے انسانوں کے لیے کتنے ضروری ہیں ما قبل کی قوموں پر بھی روزے فرض کیے گئے اور اے اہل ایمان حضرت محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی نبوت و رسالت پر ایمان لانے والوں تم پر بھی روزے فرض کیے گئے ہیں روزوں کی فرضیت کا مقصد کیا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ نے اپنے بندوں کے ذمہ جو روزے فرض کیے ہیں اس کو اللہ تعالیٰ نے ایک جملے میں بیان فرمایا لعلکم تتقون تاکہ تم متقی بن جاؤ یعنی روزے کی فرضیت میں اللہ تعالیٰ نے بنیادی طور پہ تقوا کے حصول کو بیان کیا ہے کہ صاحب ایمان متقی بن کر زندگی گزارے اس کی زندگی متقیانہ زندگی بن جائے اس کے لیے عملی مشق روزوں کی فرضیت کے ساتھ میں بہت آسان ہو جاتی ہے اب میں اس کو مثال کے ذریعے عرض کرتا ہوں تقوا کی حقیقت جاننا بہت ضروری ہے تقوا کی حقیقت یہ ہے کہ جب انسان کے لیے گناہ کے تمام اسباب و وسائل مہیا ہو جائیں گناہ کرنے کے لیے کوئی رکاوٹ باقی نہ رہے ایسے موقع پر انسان صرف اللہ کے خوف اور خشیت الہی کی بنیاد پر اس گناہ سے اپنے آپ کو باز رکھے اس گناہ کو برپا نہ کرے صرف اللہ کے خوف سے کوئی دنیا کا انسان دیکھنے والا نہیں کوئی سی سی ٹی وی کیمرہ نہیں کوئی نگراں نہیں کوئی رکاوٹ نہیں صرف وہ اللہ کے خوف سے اس گناہ سے باز آ جائے یہ ہے حقیقت میں تقوا تو ہم اور آپ دیکھتے ہیں کہ ماہ رمضان میں ہر صاحب ایمان اگرچہ اس کو کتنی ہی شدید پیاس کی انہیں لگی ہو کتنی ہی شدید اسے بھوک کی انہیں لگی ہو اور وہ اپنے کمرے میں بالکل تنہا ہے کوئی دیکھ نہیں رہا ہے کوئی ساتھ میں نہیں ہے کمرہ اندر سے بند ہے اور کوئی سی سی ٹی وی کیمرہ نہیں ہے لیکن پھر بھی روزے دار شدید پیاس کے باوجود نہ تو پانی پیتا ہے شدید بھوک کے باوجود نہ وہ کھانا کھاتا ہے یہ روح اس میں کہاں سے بیدار ہو گئی یہ اس کے اندر جذبہ کیوں پیدا ہو گیا صرف روزے کی بنیاد پہ گنہگار سے گنہگار انسان روزے کی حالت میں نہ کھاتا ہے نہ پیتا ہے نہ اپنی دیگر خواہشات کو پورا کرتا ہے یہ ہے وہ تقوا جو روزہ انسان میں پیدا کرتا ہے روزے دار کے اندر یہ صفت پیدا ہو جاتی ہے اللہ کرے یہ مشق 
اور یہ جو ہم اور آپ پورے رمضان دن میں روزے کی حالت میں اس طرح اپنی زندگی گزارتے ہیں کہ کھانے پینے کے اسباب و وسائل مہیا ہو جانے کے باوجود محض اللہ کے خوف سے روزے کی حالت میں نہ کچھ کھاتے ہیں نہ پیتے ہیں اللہ کرے یہی صفت پوری زندگی میں برپا ہو جائے کیونکہ اللہ ہمارا نگراں ہے اللہ ہمارا محافظ ہے ہمارا ہر عمل اللہ کی نظروں میں ہے ہمارا کوئی کردار اللہ کی نگرانی سے باہر نہیں ہے تو پھر ہمیں اور آپ کو چاہیے کہ پوری زندگی روزوں والی کیفیت جو تقوا کے عنوان سے حاصل ہوئی ہے اس کو عملی طور پہ ہم برپا کریں اور اپنی زندگی میں ہر وقت اس بات کا استحضار رکھیں کہ ہمیں متقی بن کر کے زندگی گزارنی ہے کیونکہ قرآن کے مطالعے سے یہ حقیقت واضح ہو جاتی ہے کہ جنت متقیوں کے لیے ہی تیار کی گئی ہے وہ ساری ہو الا مغفرت من رب کم و جنا ارد حسماوات و الارد او عدت للمتقین یہ جنت اللہ تعالیٰ نے متقیوں کے لیے بنائی ہے متقیوں کے لیے جنت کو تیار کیا گیا ہے تو اس لیے ہماری اور آپ کی پوری کوشش ہونی چاہیے کہ ہم چوبیس گھنٹے کی معمولاتی زندگی تقوا بھری زندگی گزاریں متقیانہ زندگی گزاریں اللہ تعالیٰ ہمیں اور آپ کو تقوا کی صفات سے مالا مال فرمائے اس کے لیے ہمیں رمضان کا مکمل احترام کرنا ہوگا یعنی دن کے روزے اور رات کی تراویح کا خاص اہتمام کرنا پڑے گا کیونکہ صحیح بخاری صحیح مسلم اور حدیث کے دیگر کتابوں میں رسول مکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے دن کے روزے اور رات کے قیام کرنے والوں کو ایمان و احتساب کی کیفیات کے ساتھ یہ خوشخبری سنائی ہے کہ غفر لہما تقدم بن زمبی اس کی سابقہ زندگی کے سارے گناہ معاف ہو جاتے ہیں اللہ ہمیں اور آپ کو عمل کی توفیق عطا فرمائے اور ہمارے اور آپ کے لیے بڑی خوشی اور سعادت مندی کی بات ہے کہ ہمارے ساتھ میں الحمد عالم اسلام کے معروف نات خواں مداح رسول حضرت قاری سید عزیز الرحمان شاہ صاحب تشریف فرما ہیں الحمد للہ عشق مصطفیٰ میں ڈوب کر آپ نات مصطفیٰ پڑھتے ہیں اللہ نے بڑا حسن سوچ سے آپ کو نوازا ہے میں شاہ صاحب سے گزارش کروں گا کہ کچھ کلام نادرین کو ہدیہ کریں جزاکم اللہ شکریہ اللہ کریم جزائے خیر عطا فرمائے حضرت ماشاءاللہ آپ نے بڑی علمی اور ماشاءاللہ بڑی فضائل پر مبنی گفتگو فرمائی روزوں کے حوالے سے بھی اور ماشاءاللہ تقوی کے حوالے سے بھی اور ہمیں بہت کچھ سیکھنے کو ملتا ہے آپ سے اللہ کریم آپ کا سایہ عطفت ہم سب پہ قائم اور دائم رکھے تو میں انشاءاللہ اس بابرکت لمحات میں ایک خوبصورت کلام ناتیا اس کے چند آشار برکت کے لیے پیش کرنا چاہوں گا اللہم صلی علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد و بارک و سلم و صلی علی کھلا ہے سبھی کے لیے باب رحمت کھلا ہے سبھی کے لیے باب رحمت وہاں کوئی رتبے کھلا ہے سبھی کے لیے باب رحمت وہاں کوئی رتبے میں حد نہ نہ آلی مرادوں سے دامن نہیں کوئی خالی مرادوں سے دامن نہیں کوئی خالی قطارے لگائے کھڑے ہیں سوالی میں پہلے پہل جب مدینے گیا تھا تو تھی دل کی حالت تڑپ جانے والی وہ دربار سچ مچ میرے سامنے تھا ابھی تک 
تصور تھا جس کا خیالی کھلا ہے سبھی کے لیے باب رحمت میں ایک ہاتھ سے دل سوالے ہوئے تھا تو تھی دوسرے ہاتھ روزے کی جالی دعا کے لیے ہاتھ اٹھتے تو کیسے دعا کے لیے ہاتھ اٹھتے تو کیسے نہ یہ ہاتھ خالی نہ وہ ہاتھ خالی کھلا ہے سبھی کے لیے باب رحمت جو پوچھا گے تم نے کہ میں نظر کرنے کو کیا لے گیا تھا تو تفصیل سن لو جو پوچھا گے تم نے کہ میں نظر کرنے کو کیا لے گیا تھا تو تفصیل سن لو تھا ناتوں کا ایک ہار عشقوں کے موتی تھا ناتوں کا ایک ہار عشقوں کے موتی درودوں کا گج سلاموں کی ڈالی کھلا ہے سبھی کے لیے باب رحمت وہاں کوئی رتبے میں یدنا نہ آلی سبحان اللہ جزاک اللہ ماشاءاللہ برادر حارون بھی ماشاءاللہ ہمارے ساتھ شامل ہوئے تو آپ بھی ایک دو منٹ گفتگو فرما دے پھر انشاءاللہ دعا کی طرف چلتے ہیں انشاءاللہ انشاءاللہ برادر اور سیسٹر سبحان اللہ میں اپنے 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 special blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because not everyone has these around the world. We have brothers and sisters of ours right now in Gaza, in Yemen, in Lebanon, in Tur Turkey, in Syria, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in so many countries, Kashmir, so many countries around the world where people don't have these basic blessings that we call basic. But for them, these are big, big blessings for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whilst we're going to eat them and we're going to enjoy our food and we're going to open our fast, Remember them in your prayers as well and remember them in your mind and when you uh, want to share your blessings with those people around the world that don't have the same blessings, inshallah, remember them as well, inshallah. And I'm keeping this short and I'm going to hand it over uh, to Allah Masaf for the dua, inshallah. Hazrat Nazirin Ikram, iftar ka waqt qareeb hua chahta hai aur ye wo mubarak waqt hai jis mein maangi jane wali duaen Allah ki bargah mein rad nahi hoti اللہ تعالیٰ بے شک ہمارے اور آپ کے احوال سے بخوبی واقف ہیں اور ہمارے اور آپ کے احوال ہی کیا کائنات کا کوئی ذرہ ان کے علم سے باہر نہیں ہے کائنات کے ہر ذرے کو ان کا علم محیط ہے لیکن چونکہ ان کو یہ ادا پسند ہے کہ اس کے بندے اس کی بارگاہ میں ہاتھ اٹھائیں اور اپنی آجزی ان کی ساری کو پیش کرتے ہوئے اپنی ضروریات اللہ کی بارگاہ میں رکھیں اور اللہ تعالیٰ سے دعا مانگیں اللہ تعالیٰ کو یہ ادا پسند ہے تو انہیں جو پسند ہے ہمیں وہی کام کرنا چاہیے آئیے ہم اور آپ 
اللہ کی بارگاہ میں آہو زاری کرتے ہوئے دعائیں کریں اپنے لیے بھی پوری امت کے لیے بھی امت کے ایک ایک فرد کے لیے بھی عالم اسلام کے لیے بھی اور دنیا کے ہر انسان کے لیے بھی کیونکہ آج کی بلکتی اور سسکتی انسانیت کے لیے اللہ کی طرف سے اگر اس کو سکون مل جائے تو یہ سب سے بڑا تحفہ ہوگا تمام انسانوں کے لیے اور تمام نسل آدم کے لیے الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین وعلى آلہ وآصحابہ اجمعین ربنا آتینا فی الدنیا حسنتا وفی الاخرات حسنتا وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنکونن من الخاسرین ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذین سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذین آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف الرحیم ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاز منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعفو أنا يا كريم يا الله ما رجناهم كم عفر ما تيجي يا الله ما رجملا سيجيات كو حسناس مبدل فر ما تيجي يا الله هم سبك قلوب كو أبنى نور سمنور فر ما تيجي يا الله هم سبك كو أبنى محبوب ومقبول بندو من داخل ورشامل فر ما تيجي يا الله هم سبك نفوس كتزكية ورم سبك روح كتصفية فر ما تيجي يا الله ما هرمزان كي قدرداني كي توفيق تا فر ما تيجي يا الله اس کے روزوں اور رات کے قیام کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ آپ نے یہ عظیم مبارک مہینہ ہمیں عطا کیا ہے یا اللہ اس کی جو بھی ہم سے ناقدری ہو جاتی ہے اس کو معاف فرما دیجئے اس کی تمام تر رحمتوں سے برکتوں سے ہم سب کو مالا مال کر دیجئے یا اللہ ہم سب کو مغفرت کی بھی قطع کر دیجئے ہم سب مغفرت کی بھیکاری ہیں میرے رب کریم ہم سب کو مغفرت عطا کر دیجئے یا اللہ ہم سب کے ساتھ میں رحم کا کرم کا عافیت کا معاملہ فرمائیے یا اللہ اپنے غیظ و غضب سے ہماری حفاظت فرمائیے یا اللہ تمام اہل ایمان کی جتنے مرحومین ہیں دنیا سے جا چکے ہیں یا اللہ ان سب کی مغفرت فرما دیجئے ان سب کی قبروں کو نور سے منور فرما دیجئے ان سب کے درجات کو بلند فرما دیجئے یا اللہ جن احباب نے ہم سے دعاوں کے لیے کہا ہے یا لکھا ہے یا ان کا ہم پر حق ہے یا وہ ہم سے توقع رکھتے ہیں میرے مولا ان کی تمام جائز مرادوں کو غیب سے پورا فرما دیجئے یا اللہ عالم اسلام کا تحفظ فرمائیے تمام اہل ایمان کا تحفظ فرمائیے پریشان حال لوگوں کی پریشانی دور فرما دیجئے یا اللہ جو بیمار ہیں ان کو شفا اور صحت عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ ہم سب کو ایمان پر خاتمہ نصیب فرمائیے یا اللہ اپنے محبوب نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی زیارت اور آپ علیہ السلام کی شفاعت سے ہم سب کو مالا مال کر دیجئے یا الہی اپنے محبوب نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے نورانی ہاتھوں سے ہم سب کو جامع کوسر عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ خاص طور پر غزہ کی مسلمانوں کی مدد فرمائیے یا اللہ جو زخمی ہیں ان کو شفا عطا فرمائیے جو دنیا سے جا چکے ہیں ان کو شہادت کا مقام عطا فرمائیے یا اللہ جو بھوکے ہیں انہیں کھانا کھلا دیجئے جو پیاسے ہیں ان کو پانی کا انتظام کر دیجئے یا اللہ جن کے بدن پر کپڑے نہیں ہیں یا اللہ ان کو لباس مہیا کر دیجئے یا اللہ جو احباب جس لائن سے بھی ایسے مظلوم اور پریشان حال بندوں کی مالی عینت کر رہے ہیں یا اللہ جملہ معاملین کی جان مال عزت عبرو کی حفاظت فرمائیے یا اللہ ہم سب کو اپنے دین کی خدمت کے لیے تا زندگی قبول فرما لیجئے یا اللہ ہم سب کو ایسا پکا سچا ایمان عطا فرمائیے جس میں شرک کا کوئی اختلاط نہ ہو یا اللہ جب دنیا سے جائیں اور رگے جان کٹ رہی ہو تو ہم سب کی زبانوں پر لا الہ الا اللہ محمد الرسول اللہ جاری فرما دیجئے یا اللہ ہم بہت ناتوا ہیں بے قص ہیں یا اللہ ہماری تمام ضروریات غیب سے پوری فرما دیجئے یا اللہ ہماری ان تمام دعاوں کو محض اپنے فضل و کرم سے اپنے محبوب نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے صدق اور تفیل میں قبول و منظور فرما لیجئے وَسَلَّ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ خَيْرِ خَلْقِهِ مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ وَأَزْوَاجِهِ وَذُرِّيَّاتِهِ وَأَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ اجْمَعِينَ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا رَحْمَ الرَّحِمَ 
صمت وبك آمنت وعليك توكلت وعلى رزقك أفطر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اے اللہ اس دعوت کامل اور تا قیامت قائم ہونے والی نماز کے رب تو محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو جنت میں نمایا مقام فضیلت تا فرما اور انہیں اس مقام محمود پر فائز فرما جس کا تو نے ان سے وعدہ فرمایا ہے بے شک تو وعدے کے خلاف نہیں فرماتا مولا دل کا زنگ چھڑا کر دے دل کو آئینا جی 
इसमें चमके ये कलमाला इलाह رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدخل الجنة فطات نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ارشاد فرمایا غیبت کرنے والا جنت میں داخل نہیں ہوگا The back biter will not enter paradise اللهم طهرني فيه من الدنس والأقذار وصبرني فيه على كائنات الأقدار ووفقني فيه للتقى وصحبة الأبرار بعونك يا قرة عين المساكين اے اللہ آج کے دن مجھے تمام گندگیوں اور غلازتوں سے تہارت عطا فرما پستی کے مواقع پر صبر عطا فرما اے نادار و غریب کے محبوب پروردگار مجھے اپنی مدد سے نیکی کی توفیق اور ہمیشہ اچھے لوگوں کی صحبت عطا فرما آمین او اللہ آن دس ڈے پیوریفائی می فرام انکلینزلینس اینڈ ڈرٹ Make me patient over events that are decreed. Grant me the ability to be pious and keep company with the events that are decreed. Grant me the ability to be pious and keep company with the good. By your help, O oh, the beloved of the destitute. <laughs>
ये है साथ साथ एक अच्छा बच्चा है ये पाँच वक्त की नमाज बाद जमात अदा करता है सुन्नतों पर अमल करता है और नेकी की दावत को आम करता है अपने वाले का कहना मानता है बड़ों का अदब करता है मोबाइल में गेम नहीं खेलता अच्छी अच्छी किताबें पढ़ता है स्कूल की छुट्टी नहीं करता अक्सर बावजू रहता है काम के वक्त काम और खेल के वक्त खेल सात वक्त का भी बहुत पाबन बच्चा है ओहो अरे साथ भाई आप ये पत्थर क्यों हटा रहे हैं ये है बाबर साथ के दोस्त ये हर बात पर सवाल जरूर करते हैं बाबर भाई इससे दूसरों को ठोकर लग रही है जी वो तो ठीक है लेकिन हम ही क्यों हटाएं इसलिए कि हमारे प्यारे नबी सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने फरमाया वो इमाद तू कल हजरो वो शव कवल अजमा यानी तरीक का सदा कतुन रास्ते से पत्थर कांटा और हड्डी का हटा देना भी सदका है बाबर भाई बिस्मिल्लाम ये है सादिया साथ की छोटी बहन इनकी कोशिश होती है हर काम सुन्नत के मुताबिक करें ये साथ से सीखती हैं सुन्नतें भी और आदाब भी और फिर कोशिश करती हैं कि ये सुन्नतें और आदाब अपनी सहेलियों को भी बताएं। अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह। आफिया ये है आफिया सादिया की छोटी बहन अगर इनसे कोई गलती हो जाए तो साद और सादिया दोनों ही इन्हें समझाकर इनकी तरबियत करते रहते हैं आफिया आपको केले की जलकर डस्टबिन में डालने चाहिए इस तरह तो गली में गंदगी हो जाएगी और आप तो जानती हैं कि सफाई निस ईमान है ये ये साथ यापी मैं इसको डस्टबिन में डाल देती हूँ माशाल्लाह आफिया आपने बहुत अच्छा काम किया जजा के लो खैरा ये है हमारी न्यू सीरीज और इसके कुछ किरदार जिनसे आपने की एक छोटी सी मुलाकात अगली कहानी लेकर आएगी अपने साथ कुछ और नए किरदार बहुत सारी एक्साइटमेंट काफी सारी तरबियत और ढेर सारी दीनी मालूम तो देखना मत भूलिएगा साथ और सादिया नेकियों की चाहते हैं माह रमजान आ गया हर तरफ ही रौनके हैं माह रमजान आ गया या यादी नामन कुतिबा अली को मुस्याम ईमान वालों हमने तुम पर रोजा फर्ज कर दिया रोजा जो है वो तो एक नेचुरल डिटॉक्स है आपकी जो बॉडी का जो भी डिटॉक्सिफिकेशन होती है वो नेचुरली रोजे से हो जाती है अल्लाह के हबीब को ये फरमान है फरमाया कि जो सेहत की हालत में खूब इबादत करते हैं जी मर्ज में मुबला होकर वो इबादत नहीं कर पा रहे होते तो उन्हें सवाब वही मिल रहा होता है बहुत सारी बातें करनी है जानना है इल्म में इजाफा करना है तो इस पूरे रमजान हम होंगे आपके साथ पैगाम रमजान Assalamualaikum, dear friends, and welcome to the Ikra Kids TV show Ramadan Special. I'm Uzma, and I'm here to take you on a Ramadan journey. And I'm Abdullah. We welcome you to the Ikra Kids TV show Ramadan Special. Ramadan holds a unique significance as it brings families and communities together in worship and celebration. Get ready for an adventure with science of the moon and space education. There's so much to learn about the universe Allah has created, and it's not Ramadan without the joy of breaking fast. Food, Quran, and Hadith explore how our meals can bring us closer to Islamic teachings. Ever wondered about the animals in the Holy Quran? We'll discover their significance together, fostering a love for all of Allah's creation. From prophet stories to Ramadan around the world, we'll embark on a journey. Through time and across continents, celebrating the diversity of our Ummah. Let's inspire each other with daily good deeds. Join us on the Ikra Kids TV show. Let's begin. Let's go. सिर्फ गुजारना ही नहीं समझना भी है
جب آپ کو اپنی توبہ ہی مانگنی ہے جب آپ کو کسی کے سامنے اپنے دل کا حال ہی رکھنا ہے جب آپ کو کسی کے سامنے گڑ گڑانا ہے تو پھر وہ رب کی ذات ہونی چاہیے رمضان کو سمجھنے کے لیے جڑے رہیے تفیم رمضان کے ساتھ علاقے میں کوئی نزدیک کوئی مسجد نہیں ہے جو جمعہ وغیرہ پڑھ سکے یا عید نماز وغیرہ پڑھ سکے ہمارے علاقے والے گاؤں والے یہی بات کہتے ہیں بھائی کاری صاحب کوشش کریں ہمیں جمعہ بھی جاری رکھو جو عید نماز پڑھنا ہے وہی جاری رکھو بالکل دیہات میں ہمارے گھر ہیں اور ہمارے کوئی ایسے کوئی خاص جامع مسجد کوئی نہیں ہے ساڑھے چار جا پانچ کلومیٹر چلنا پڑتا ہے تو وہ کوئی بندہ جیسے سیعت مانگ کے جا سکتا ہے پہنتا لگا جا سکتا ہے نہیں تو پھر اسکرہ بندے ہی دیری رہ جاتے ہیں ان کا وہ جمعہ رہ جاتا ہے پھر چلو مسجد قریب ہو گھر کے قریب ہو چلو انسان مسجد میں بچہ چلا جاتا ہے قرآن پاک پڑھتا ہے تعلیم حاصل کرتا ہے اس کی وجہ سے ہم لوگ پریشان ہیں یہ تو ہر بندے کی خیش ہے غریب بندے کی جو ہمارا بچہ کام سے قرآن پڑھا ہو یا حیثہ پڑھا ہوا ہو تو ہماری آگے کے لیے کوئی قبر روشن ہو جائے بچے پڑھنا چاہتے ہیں لیکن وہ بولتے ہیں کہ ہمیں اتنی دور نہیں جانا مسجد ہماری گھر کے قریب ہو ہم لوگ پڑھیں گے ورنہ ہمارے کو مشکل ہوتی ہے دھو میں ہم لوگ کیسے جائیں یا کوئی ہمیں سواری لاکے دو ہم لوگ جائیں گے ورنہ ہم لوگ نہیں جاتے یہاں پہ بچے پڑھتے ہیں تقریباً الحمدللہ ایک سو تیس پینتی بچے ہوتے ہیں ایک گھنٹہ بھی بارش ہو جاتے ہیں ہمیں دو دن کی چھوٹی کرنے پر نہیں کیونکہ جگہ کچھی ہے بیٹھنے کی جگہ بھی نہیں ہے جاسوکے کی پھر کلاس لاتے ہیں کیونکہ جب سردیاں زور ہو جاتے ہیں پھر بچوں کو چھوٹی کر دیتے ہیں اگر گرمیاں زور ہو جاتے ہیں پھر بچوں کو چھوٹی کرا دیتے ہیں یہ ہمارا چھوٹا مجید ہے کچھا مسجد جیسے ایسے ہمارے بنی ہوتی ہے مسلح کی جگہ بھی مفروض جگہ بھی ہے کوئی چیز آئے جائے نہ تو مٹی کی دیواریں چھوٹی موٹی بنا دی اپنا تو اس میں اپنا نماز پاٹھ لیتے ہیں دل تو بڑا ہے بھی ہمارے پاس مسجد ہونا چاہیے بڑی مگر ہمارے پاس سرمایہ نہیں اطلاع جو ہم لوگ کو کار سکے مضبور لوگ کے اپنے پیٹ پالے میں پورے ہیں اس مسجد میں سارے یہ چھوٹا سا مسلح ہے یہ بڑی مسجد ہے نہیں ہم لوگ دھوپ ہے اس میں دس بارہ آدمی سے زیادہ ہم لوگ مسجد میں نماز نہیں پڑھ سکتے تو یہ کچھی جگہ ہے ساری یہاں بارش ہو جاتی ہے تو پریشانی ہو جاتی ہے ہم لوگوں کو ہم لوگ آ جا نہیں سکتے کیونکہ سارا کیچڑ ہوتا ہے پانچ چھے بندے ہوتے ہیں اسی مسجد میں نماز پڑھتے ہیں جب بندے زیادہ ہو جاتے سے اسی مسجد میں نماز نہیں پڑھ سکتے جو جگہ بار بڑھی ہوئی ہے بچوں کو قرآن پر پڑھانے کے لیے ڈیڑھ سال سے جماعت اسی جگہ سے کر رہے ہیں نماز پڑھا کے درس وغیرہ بھی دیتے ہیں درس دے کے بچوں کو قرآن پاک کی تعلیم بھی دیتے ہیں اور بڑوں کو نماز کا طریقہ بھی سکھاتے ہیں یہ بچہ ذہنی طور سے بھی موضور ہے اور ٹانگو سے بھی جو بازو ہیں ان کے یہ دونوں کمزور ہیں ان کا علاج وغیرہ کیا ہے لیکن ذہنی طور سے یہ سیٹ ہی نہیں رہے لیکن ہم پھر بھی کوشش کرتے رہے الحمدللہ قرآن پاک مکمل پڑھائیں گے اس کو دین کو مکمل جو ذمہ داری ہماری ہے ہم مکمل ذمہ داری میں سنبھالیں گے انشاءاللہ اس کے مجید حمل کو ضرورت ہے ہمیں ہم مسلمان ہیں ہمیں تو چاہیے 
جو ہمیں یہ چیز بنا کے دیں گے دیکھیں ہمارا تک ان کو ثواب ملے گا ہمارے بچے پار گئے تو ہم دعائیں بھی دیں گے جو کام دین کا ہو رہا ہے مسجد کے بننے کے بعد انشاءاللہ یہ کام سارا ڈبل ہو جائے گا مسجد بنوانے والے کو دعائیں دے گے اس کے بچوں کو بھی دعائیں دیں گے انشاءاللہ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, you have seen last night uh, the packaging that was going on here. Alhamdulillah, there are uh, lorries upon lorries here. Uh, big lorries, mashallah, and some of the small trucks have arrived. Uh, mashallah, we're loading the final uh, pallets. Uh, there are uh, only, I would say, three, four pallets remaining, four pallets further. And after that, we are ready to go to the airport, inshallah. So Alhamdulillah, we have managed to fit uh, all the pallets on three lorries. Um, when you see uh, lorries entering into Gaza um, through Rafa crossing, uh, some of the lorries you see with banners and this and that, how the packaging is done, you can see here, inshallah, today. Obviously, um, for the safety of the boxes and safety of the stock, uh, we don't put pallets upon pallets. Um, but certain consignment uh, go in two layers basically uh, but this one because of heavy boxes uh, is single pallet uh, load mashallah so uh, alhamdulillah uh, there is one lorry which will be packed you can say uh, and there are two lorries there which are basically open lorries alhamdulillah so mashallah brothers and sisters alhamdulillah uh, uh, we will be going from here to the airport, uh, loading this uh, stock uh, on the aircraft, inshallah, and um, uh, then hopefully, inshallah, uh, we will take the aircraft uh, from here, from Jordan, to uh, Gaza border, uh, nearest airport is Arish, and um, uh, then f uh, from Karam Abu Salim, uh, uh, area uh, the other lorries will enter from there and uh, this will enter through uh, mashallah um, uh, karam abu salim and so on so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone uh, because um, these three four lorries are going by air cargo and there is more stock inside uh, that is going inshallah uh, by the road and so on so jazakumullah khair may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, we are trying our best to deliver in uh, Gaza on daily basis. Subhanallah, you know, uh, I cannot express um, my appreciation and my frustration, both. Uh, appreciation uh, for your generosity and kindness. Uh, Alhamdulillah, well over five million dollars have been transferred from UK to the supplier companies um, to purchase the stock uh, to the supplier companies. This is from the UK. Uh, other transfers from other our international offices, that is additional uh, payments uh, uh, to our international offices or suppliers directly by our partner organizations, that is separate. Um, more than uh, this, basically, more than the uh, contribution of UK uh, is the contribution of international partners possibly uh, two or three times more so mashallah our delivery into Gaza um, has crossed already uh, maybe 12 13 million dollars possibly 15 million dollars uh, I haven't calculated on that side but from UK uh, because I am responsible uh, mashallah for UK contribution directly not responsible responsible for a uh, all donations, but uh, keeping calculation of uh, UK transfers from UK, over five million dollars have been transferred, mashallah. So, Jazakumullah uh, al-Khair, mashallah. This is the uh, last two pallets going in now. Before, I have seen one lorry going, or basically uh, part of the lorry going at a time, and so on. But uh, this one is full consignment going, uh, mashallah, from the warehouse um, altogether. So, subhanAllah, uh, there have been other convoys before, 
uh, from our Cairo warehouse in which uh, 10, 15 lorries went in. But I personally was not present over there. I have seen large convoys, uh, personally myself, inside Syria, uh, where basically huge convoys were distributed. But for Gaza during this war, subhanAllah, uh, we have taken whole aircraft uh, from Jordan to, uh, to uh, closer to Gaza airport, mashallah. Uh, so, subhanAllah is amazing, mashallah. This is everything uh, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of our donors, mashallah, uh, the, the way they have contributed. Taking it by aircraft in this manner means uh, quickest uh, delivery and shortest waiting time. Uh, because the stock which is arriving at the airport uh, tend to enter quickly. Now, because these lorries have, you can say, exactly uh, what goes on the list. Uh, so, inshallah, there are very less chances of any delays because all the stock is same in all the lorries and so on. There is not mixture of, you can say, food supplies and medical supplies and household items or other items and so on. So there isn't that mashallah. So this is the last pallet gone mashallah. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward and bless everyone. Jazakumullah khair. I just request everyone mashallah try to donate uh, as best as you can. Um, you know subhanallah there are uh, about uh, 35 to 40 boxes um, uh, on uh, each pallet mashallah. Uh, so subhanallah, um, I wish that uh, somebody uh, can donate whole pallet inshallah. So total 36 boxes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the efforts inshallah. So now we are getting ready to move in inshallah. ايش يعني احنا لسه صغار احنا زلمه يعني نيجي على المدارس هيك مرمط ولا مي ولا للشرب ولا لاي شيء ولا اكل ولا فراش ولا اي شيء وبننام بالسقعه وعلى الارض يعني على البلاط احنا كنا خايفين كثير احنا ما عرفناش ايش نسوي حتى لما جينا هنا لسه احنا مش مطمنين وحتى احنا هنا كمان ماشي عندنا ميه ولا شرب ولا اكل حتى الحمامات ماشي فيهم مي كيف احنا بدنا نروح نغسل احنا ما نمناش طول الليل Bless and be blessed with something extraordinary this Ramadan. Within these donation packs lies a story of hope. Within our care, we carefully pack essential food items donated by you. The generosity that binds communities together is contained within us. With every donation, we are prepared, packed and delivered. And as we find our way through mountains and villages, we bring more than just sustenance. We bring joy, smiles, and the promise that a brighter future is ahead. Your zakat helps to turn hunger into hope. Last year, over one million individuals benefited worldwide from the food packs that we delivered. And this Ramadan, it's your turn to make a difference. So remember, bless and be blessed with something extraordinary every time you donate. Donate with confidence. Donate without care. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اليوم هو الثامن والخمسون بعد المئة من العدوان والغارات الجوية على قطاع غزة والثالث من شهر رمضان المبارك عام 1445 هجري يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من فطر صائما كان له مثل أجره ويقول أيضا في حديث آخر أيما مسلم أطعم مسلما على جوع 
أطعمه الله من ثمار الجنة الداعمين والمتبرعين من أهل الشام من ثمار الجنة وأن يجعل هذا العمل الطيب في ميزان حسناتهم في يوم لا ينفع فيه مال ولا بنون بفضل الله ومنته وبإهداء وبدعم كريم من أهل الشام إلى أهلهم في قطاع غزة نقوم اليوم في هذا اليوم المبارك بتجهيز ألاف الوجبات الساخنة الرمضانية ليتم توزيعها على مراكز الإيواء وفي الخيام وفي المخيمات صالح الأسر المتضررة والنازحة الذين يعيشون أوضاعا إنسانية صعبة جراء هذا العدوان المتواصل على قطاع غزة حيث أن هناك أكثر من مليون تسعمائة ألف فلسطيني نزحوا من بيوتهم المضمرة إلى مراكز الإيواء التي تفتقد إلى أبسط المقومات اللازمة للعيش يفتقدون إلى الماء والدواء والغذاء وهم بمس الحاجة إلى الدعم والمساندة والمؤازرة فكان لزاما علينا أن نقف إلى جانبهم في محنتهم خفف عنهم آلامهم وأحزانهم وبالنيابة عن المتضررين والنازحين في فلسطين وخاصة في قطاع غزة أتوجه بالشكر والامتنان إلى أهل الشام لجهودهم العظيمة من أجل مساندة ودعم صمود أهلنا النازحين في قطاع غزة أصل الله عز وجل أن يبارك في أموالكم وأبنائكم أن يكتب لكم أجر المرابطين هنا في قطاع غزة جزاكم الله عنا وعن المسلمين خير الجزاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بہت زیادہ پاسماندہ علاقہ ہے یہاں پہ جو ہے نا کوئی مساجد نہیں ہے بہت دودھ درازے ہیں مساجد تو میرا جیسا بندہ تو چل سکتا ہے لیکن جو بوڑے حضرات ہیں وہ مساجد میں نہیں جا سکتے بہت دشواری ہے جماعت کے ساتھ نماز نہیں ہو رہی بچے کہیں کدھر پڑھ رہے ہیں کہیں کدھر پڑھ رہے ہیں مسجد ہم نماز کیلئے نہیں جا سکتے ہیں ہم نے کئی دفعہ یہ باس کی کہ بھئی چندہ کریں لیکن یہاں میں سائل لوگوں کے پاس نہیں ہے کہ وہ چندہ کٹھا کریں اور پھر ہم مسجد بنائیں بدا من طانعاته والليل بچے ہمارا دینی تعلیم سے محروم ہیں وہ قرآن نہیں پڑھ سکتے ہیں مسجد بنیں گی تو قرآن پڑھیں گے با جماعت مسجد میں آکے نماز پڑھیں گے دین کے ساتھ ایک تعلق ہوگا ان کو پتا چلے گا کہ ہم جو ہے نا مسلمانوں کی بستی مسلمانوں کے گھروں میں پیدا ہوئے ہیں یہ شہور ان کو تب ملے گا مسجد سے ملے گا فمحمدنا مسجد کی بہت ضرورت ہے کم سے کم ہم پینتیس چالیس گھر ہمارا جو جہاں پہ ہے اور تمام نماز سے محروم ہیں نماز مسجد میں نہیں چٹائی وغیرہ ڈھار کے سب ملے والے پڑھتے ہیں لیکن وہ بھی جب موسم اچھا ہوتے ہیں تو ہم وہاں پر نماز ادا کرتے ہیں یہاں تو اکثر بارشیں بہت ہوتی ہیں یہاں پر تو بارشوں کی وجہ سے پھر ہمیں تو گھروں میں نماز پڑھنی پڑتی ہے کیوں مسجد نہیں ہے جب چھت نہیں ہوگی تو ہم نماز کیسے ادا کریں گے تو ابھی تو ہم سمجھو کھولے اسمان کے تلے بیٹھ کر نماز ادا کرتے ہیں اور اس تھنڈی سردی کے اندر تو نماز پڑھنا انتہائی جو ہے مشکل ہو جاتے قبلستان کے آگے جو جگہ ہے وہ بھی ایک بندے نے دی ہے ہمیں کہ آپ یہاں مسجد بنائیں تو ہم موسم ٹھیک ہوتا ہے تو ہم وہ چٹائیاں ڈال کے اپنی نماز ادا کر دیتے ہیں باجماعت نہیں تو موسم خراب ہوتے ہیں ہم گھروں میں کرتے ہیں ہمارے بچوں کی جو دینی تعلیم ہیں اس کے لئے بنیادی مسجد کا ہونا ضروری ہے اور مسجد ہمارے پاس ہے نہیں تو ہم بچوں کو گھروں میں تعلیم دینے پر مجبور ہیں اس طرح کی صورتحال بن جائے ہمارے جہاں پہ کوئی مسجد جلد از جلد بن جائے لوگ جو ہے نا باجمات ماز ادا کر سکیں تو بہت ہی زیادہ مشکور ہوں گے ہم لوگ
نماز پڑھنے ہیں گھر پڑھنے ہیں کدے کٹھ ہے کدے کٹھ ہے بارش ہوتی ہے برف ہوتی ہے اس میں نہیں جو لگتے ہیں مسجد دور ہے ان کو مسجد تو ہے جہاں بیٹھے ہوئے روزہ بے قرآن کی تلاوت کرے نماز پڑھے آپ نے تراویاں پڑھے وہ شے نہیں بچوں کی تو یہ صورتحال ہے کہ گھروں کے اندر ماں پڑی ہوئی ہے تو وہ بتاتی ہے اگر بھائی پڑا ہوا تو وہ بتاتے ہیں مسجدیں دور ہیں یہ برفانی علاقہ ہے برف ہو جاتی ہے راستوں میں کتے بھی ہیں تو بچے چھوٹے چھوٹے جاتے نہیں ہیں جا بھی نہیں سکتے ہیں ہم سب علاقوں والوں کی ان سے اپیر ہے کہ اللہ تعالیٰ الخیر فنڈیشن والوں کی دنیا آخرت اشی فرمائی ہے ہمیں مسجد بنا کے دے دیں ہمارے یہ پانی کا مسئلہ یہ حل کروا دیں اور ہماری خواہش یہ ہے کہ ہماری مسجد جو ہے رمضان تک تعمیر ہو جائے وہ جو ہے مکمل ہو جائے ہم رمضان کے مہینے کے اندر اپنی تراوی پڑھ سکیں یہاں پر اپنی قرآن کی تلاوت کر سکیں جو بھی ہماری مسجد بنا کے دے گا تو ہم اس بندے کے لیے انشاءاللہ کے دل کھل کے ہمارے چھوٹے سے لے کر بڑوں تک بزرگوں تک سب دعا کریں گے کافی اوپر ہو گیا جی ایسے یہ آخریں یادہ تو سب مسجد دیکھ رہے ہیں تیرے خزانے میں کوئی کم کی نہیں اور مرنا ہی ہے مرنے کے پتہ دس یا رہے ہیں بیٹ یا رہے ہیں ایک چاہے ہیں اے ارمان رہے ہیں اللہ پاک اتنا نہ مارے جی مسجد سے کوئی نماز پڑھ کرنے دو پھر بات اجل خیر والے اے دے اللہ شاہد جب میں کو امید ہے مسجد بنسی جی کی نہ بنسی The situation in Gaza has become increasingly dangerous for the al qaeda Foundation. With the continuous bombardment of airstrikes, the safety and security of the response teams is at risk. This has had a devastating impact on the population of Gaza, as al qaeda is one of the few sources of aid available. It is a difficult situation, and the people of Gaza need your support now more than ever. To the brothers and sisters, we are now here inside Al Ma'madani hospitals in Gaza City, where this place uh, witnessed the largest attack. Alhamdulillah, Al Khair Foundation on the ground providing emergency response to help their brothers and sisters in this difficult and tough time. I don't have any word to describe what is happening here, but all of you they have shown the footage of the children and women in this area. And we need your help and your support. We need your air junk relief to help your brothers and sisters in Gaza. Alhamdulillah, al Khair Foundation trying to provide life-saving supplies, medical disposables, medicine, food for the hospitals, trying to provide the emergency response to help their brothers and sisters in Gaza. This is an appeal to all the donors to continue their funding and their support for their brothers and sisters who are living under the siege and under poverty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and Jazakumullah khair.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله رب العالمين لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك فلك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله عاجله وعاجله في الدنيا والآخرة وصل الله على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين خاصة على سيد الرسل وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear respected brothers and sisters and welcome to another segment of tonight's live appeal my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the blessing of Iman. Allah has given us the ni'mah, the blessing that we can't thank Him enough for. And that is, uh, you know, first and foremost, the blessing of Iman. B the, having the blessing of being in the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And being amongst that group of people, my brothers and sisters, who can call their leader Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we know and we subhanAllah are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the people of truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this t nation upon these people and, and the nation of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has placed a responsibility on our shoulders we are here in this world for a very limited time and after this time has finished we will go on to the next world to the hereafter we, before we are we, before is decided of what will happen with us where we will end up, a hisab will take place, an accountability will take place, and we are accountable to the, 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 the most highest, subhanAllah, the Lord of all the worlds, of all of our deeds. We will have to answer for every action that we have done, we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every penny that we have spent, we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every word we have spoken. And this is the reality, whether we like it, or whether we don't like it. And right now, as we speak, this nation is under attack. The nation of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is under attack. And if you ask me where, then I could say everywhere. From the, from the lands of Yemen in Arabia to the lands of Sham, the entire region of Sham subhanAllah is under attack. From subhanAllah, look at Kashmir, you look at subhanAllah, all the different places around the world, you see Muslims are being persecuted everywhere. Muslims are being attacked everywhere. Muslims are suffering everywhere. People are going through hunger everywhere. everywhere. And right now when we speak about suffering, we speak about pain, we speak about you know, attacking Muslims who are being attacked because they believe in Allah and, his last, and the last day, they believe in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they understand the importance and the significance of Al-Aqsa, then we remember the name of Gaza. We remember the name of Palestine. And this land, and this, 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 these people, and this land, is not a land unknown to us. It isn't because of the war that we are now away of a place called Gaza, a place called Palestine. In fact, when we speak about Kashmir, we speak about other places. You know, we, we might, many people might not even have heard of these places if it wasn't for, subhanAllah, all the atrocities that are taking place, for all the zulm that is taking place in those lands. But when it comes to Palestine, when it comes to Gaza, these places are known to us because these are connected with our Iman. They are connected with our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if there was no war going on, even if there's no persecution happening, we would have all known about the land of Palestine, about Al Ard al Muqaddas, about Baytul Muqaddis, about Subhanallah Gaza, about these areas in Palestine. Because these are attached to our Iman, not just Subhanallah identity, not just the country we live in, or the flag that we you know, hold above, high above our hands and heads. My brothers and sisters, we all know, and, and, and subhanAllah, you know, I don't have to go every time into detail what's happening in Gaza because we are all aware of what's happening in Gaza. But sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it is good to be reminded because the life we are living, the, t the time, how we are spending it, the the work, the businesses, the family, the so many different things are happening around us that our mind is not always fixated on Gaza and we can all understand. But just because our mind is not fixated on Gaza all the time does not mean the people of Gaza are not suffering all the time. 
The people of Gaza are suffering day in, day out, whether we remember or whether we don't remember. Whether we feel sad or we don't feel sad. Whether we help them or we don't help them, they are suffering. They are in pain and they need our help. These people who are living on a small strip in the Middle East, who have no access to the internet, who have no electricity which has been cut off, the telecommunications has been cut off, the borders have been closed and very limited amount of aid is allowed to go in. These people, subhanAllah, whilst being in this dunya, it is as if, subhanAllah, they've got nothing, you know, they're going for them. No food, no water, no communications, nothing. But despite all those blockings, you know, they have found a way to the internet to upload some stuff. When we upload something to the internet, when we go on the internet, on Facebook, on in, sorry, Instagram, when we go on, 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 on TikTok or whatever else, you know, other platform we are on, when we go on these platforms, why do we go on there, my brothers and sisters? We go on there because we want to keep, we stay up to date with what's happening around the world. You want to look at what the latest trends are. You want to see what the celebrities are wearing. We want to share our pictures so you know, we can show the world that look, this is how I'm living my life. Even despite our lives being completely opposite to what we are showing on social media. My brothers and sisters, this is what we do when we upload to social media. We want some likes, we want some shares, we want to comment on other people and all, all of this happens you know, on our social medias. But when the people of Gaza are using their social media in the middle of this genocide, they are not doing this to enjoy themselves a little. They are not going on social media and uploading videos to share, subhanAllah, just how great their life is. But when the people of Gaza upload to social media, it is a cry for help. It's a plea for help. It is them trying to tell us, look, this is what's happening to us. Look how our life is compared to yours. Look at how our people are being killed and murdered. Look at the hunger we are facing. Look at all of these things that is happening to us. Will you help us or will you ignore us? And this is why they upload to social media. Subhan, look at the contrast. Look at the difference. We upload pictures of our food that we had in the restaurant. And they upload pictures of the empty plates. We upload pictures with our new clothes on. And they upload pictures with those same clothes they've been wearing for the past three, four months. Which have God knows how many stitches in there. Are dirty, not clean enough, subhanAllah. But that's the only thing they have to wear. We go on holiday. And we take pictures. To show how much we're enjoying. And they show pictures and videos to show how much they're in pain. They are going right, subhanAllah, opposite. Uh, they're experiencing right the opposite things of what we are experiencing, subhanAllah. So I understand, my brothers and sisters, and I'm not going to say it is not understandable. I understand when we sometimes forget oh, what's happening in Gaza, or when our mind is occupied somewhere else, that we don't pay attention to Gaza. And sometimes days go by, sometimes weeks go by. Until we remember again, oh no, this is what's happening in Gaza. My brothers and sisters, I want to share some videos with you. And in these videos, these people of Gaza are trying to tell, give us a message. And I want all of us to watch these videos together. So for a moment we are reminded again. Because we all forget. So we are all reminded again that this is actually what the people of Gaza are going through. So let's go to the first video. And inshallah, when you come back, we'll discuss it further. وانت يعني لو كانت عندك بنات زي هيك انا كنت بالليل هيك اسيبهم يبردوا يضلهم مع الجوع طول الليل يعيطوا لما يجوعوا ايش يعملوا يحطوا الحرام عليهم عشان امهم ما توجعش عشانهم يعني انا بالليل بكون جوعانه بالليل ايش عشان ما يطلعش صوت الجوع عند بطني بطني بضل يكركس بالليل بحط الحرام على امي عشان ماما ما تسمعش اني جوعانه عشان ماما ما تتوجعش علي بس برضه الحمد لله في غيرنا مش حاسس بهذه النعمة اللي احنا حاسين فيها
كان احنا اذا بدنا هيك يصير في ناس تشوف اطفال العالم الثاني كيف في تركيا في اليابان وفي الصين وفي امريكا وفي اوروبا كيف عايشين عايشين احسن من عيشتنا على الاقل يا ابوهم امهم جنبيهم اخواتهم جنبيهم اغراضهم جنبيهم كتبهم مدرستهم شدتهم كل شيء جنبيهم كل شيء يعني ما بقولوش يعني بلاقوا الاشي قبل ما يقولوا بدهم اياه احنا هنا يعني بنقول مئة مرة بدنا هذا الاشي محدش بحقق لنا اياه سبحان الله ما brothers and sisters for a moment we might have forgotten سبحان الله you know after all the blessings we had after all the food that we had now our stomachs and 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 subhanallah are full khana khaliya amne you know we prayed our salah our maghrib and now we are sitting for a few moments to relax we might have forgotten for a moment in all in the midst of all of these blessings that what the children of gaza are going through what the people of gaza are going through and this is why you know, we are sharing these videos. It's not to, you know, make anyone feel bad, but to remind each other that this is what the people of Gaza are going through. This is how they are feeling. And I know you care. And I know you, subhanAllah, might have seen many videos on social media, but there is such a large group of people who has no access to these videos, whose feeds, subhanAllah, is, are not showing these videos. So it's important we all watch these videos together so we are reminded of the pain. Look at what she was saying. Look at what she was saying. She gets so hungry at night that her stomach makes noises. You know, like, subhanAllah, you know, sometimes you've been hungry for a while and, you know, your, your, your stomach is making noises. And that's of someone like us that, you know, has food readily available. Imagine someone in Gaza who hasn't had food for a while, who hasn't had a proper meal in, in, in weeks. Whatever they had was, was just bits and pieces here and there. Some bread here, something to dip it in, you know, maybe something here and there, you know, something, a few, little, little, but not a proper meal. Surviving, just hanging on, hanging by. Imagine the noises their stomach must be making. The fact that she says that he makes so much noise that I have to cover my mouth. I have to cover myself so my mother doesn't hear. And this is a child. This is a kid. She should be enjoying her life. She should be playing in the play field. She should be going out with her friends. She should be eating healthy and growing up to be you know, a strong, healthy young woman. But look instead what's happening with her. Look how she's living her life. Look at the hunger she is facing. I'm going to go to the next video because in the next video, you know, we see another uh, perspective of someone in Gaza because all of these videos have been filmed by someone, right? Someone in Gaza has filmed this. So all of these videos are perspectives of people. And imagine whatever you are seeing, you didn't see sitting from in inside your living room, but you saw whilst you were there yourself. So imagine whatever you are seeing in that, in that screen, is not seeing in on screen, but imagine you were seeing that with your own eyes in Gaza. How would you respond? How would we respond? Let's go to the next video and we'll come back. <laughs> بنتي مش عارفه اطلعها الى 25 يوم تحت الانقاض، هذه بنتي تتجاوز السبع شهور. سبع شهور لتتجاوز وقاعد بشتغل بايدي باظافري عشان اطلع بنتي اللي لها 25 يوم تحت الانقاض. انا بطلع فيها قاعد تحت في الانقاض بعد 25 يوم العالم وين؟ الامم المتحده وين؟ الدوليين والعالم وال... انا هو بنك اهداف بتدفن هو بنك اهداف في طفلي 25 يوم ابوه بيشتغل بقدم خدمه مش عارف يطلعها بعد 25 يوم بحاول يطلع بنته اشلاء مقطعه الراس لحال والايد لحال 25 يوم من اصل قديش 28 جثه في هذا المكان 28 جثه كفي سبحان الله Whilst we are living our lives and being busy with things, whatever we have to do, this is what they are busy with. This is what they are busy with. They are the father. Imagine 25 days. 
25 days, almost a month. He's been trying to dig his daughter out of the rubble, but he can't find her. He can't get her out because of the, 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 the rubble is it, it's, it's too big. He can't move it with his hands, but he's still trying. He wants to, you know, if our family has a photo from our family, what do we do? We study his grave, then we take him to the grave, then we keep him in the grave, then we keep him in the grave, then we keep him in the grave. You know, we, we lay them to rest. We do the janaza, we, we pray for them. We get closure. We put sand, sand over them. And this is also a way to get closure as a human being. And this is why the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of burying the dead. You, you put the sand over them yourself. You, you hand them over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you can, you know, move on. Especially as a parent. How many fathers are watching this right now? How many mothers are watching this right now? We all have family members that we love. Imagine we, subhanAllah, a loved one that is someone we love daily. Maybe it's not you know, someone very you know, directly related, but someone maybe also you love generally. Right? A, fr a very good friend of yours, a cousin of yours, who are you know, related but not straight away, you know, very close related. You know, all, all of these people, we are beloved to us. Right? And imagine we leave them one day and they are attacked and they are under the rubble. Wouldn't we want to get their bodies out? Give, you know, put them in a coffin, make dua for them, lower them into a grave and hand them over to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Would you like our loved ones to be rotting away inside subhanAllah large pieces of rubble of a house? No. And this is a father, it's a bapa, a father. And only a father will be able to explain to you the pain a father goes through when he has to, subhanAllah, deal with the death of his children. Ask a father who has lost children what it feels like to lose children. And then ask a father who hasn't lost any of his children. And he, he will tell you how much he hurts him as much as the one that lost one. Because just the thought of losing a child is too painful to handle. And here we are seeing these men, our brothers, digging through the rubble, trying to find a body of a daughter. In the next video, you know, these are all families, these are all people. In the next video, you're going to see, subhanAllah, a grandmother. A grandmother with a message for all of us. Because... The victims in Gaza are not just children, are not just women, are not just men, they're everyone. One's a grandfather, another was a grandmother, one was a grandchild, one was an auntie, another was an uncle, one was a father, one was the daughter, one was a mother, one was the son. You know, these are all relationships that these people have. These people love in, uh, live in a community. So they are connected with many, many people that they love and they are loved by them. And subhanAllah, you know, the, the, father, the, the, the pain of a parent is different than the pain of a sibling. The pain of losing a sibling is different from losing a grandparent. The pain of the grandparent of losing a grandchild is different to the one of, of the parent. You know, all of these are different relationships and they have their own pain. They have their own relationships. They have their own memories. Let's go to the next video and see what this grandmother, this grandma has to tell us about her situation. هذا ابن ابني ولد في المدرسة هنا واستشهد أبوه بعد أسبوع الحين أبوه ما طنعه تحت الرد ما جه السنة فيه شو هو ما تبوه لا شو ما تبوه أيوة حليب حليب ما يس ولا بنبت ولا حليب ولا معي عاد حليب أولاد ثلاثة راهم ما ليس حدا راهين من وين بديه
subhanallah, look at what these people are facing, my brothers and sisters. You know, a situation that we don't think or don't come to our attention. But this is why these people make these videos. Not just to, you know, show some, some, some lifestyle. They are trying to show you their pain, what they are going through. So we wake up, we, you, that the people around the world, their brothers, their sisters, the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, does not just watch on that we do something about it. This grandmother who, is the, who has got a grandson, subhanAllah, in her arms, a baby, a baby. Her son has passed away, all of her sons have passed away. Now she has to look after the son. She has to look after, subhanAllah, her son's children. An old lady. Where is she going to get the money from? Where is she going to get the food from? Where is she going to get everything she needs to look after the baby? You know, those who had babies understand, you know, what it's needed to look after the baby. You know, you need nappies, you need this, you need that, you need milk, you need food, you need, you know, all, all of these items. You know, where is she going to get it from? How is she going to get hands on those in a place where there's a genocide taking place? Forget any shops open to go and shop uh, for, in a local, for groceries. There is no bread and flour available. Forget subhanAllah, you know, baby items. And this is subhanAllah, the suffering of everyone. Grandmothers, grandfathers and, and everyone in subhanAllah, their family, everyone is suffering, everyone is in pain. Every video that we see, subhanAllah, people are in pain. People are just trying to convey how much they're suffering. So we see these videos, my brothers and sisters, and we wake up. You wake up. We all wake up. We have a responsibility on our shoulders again towards these people. We cannot ignore them. By changing the channel, by changing our, you know, the mind, by, by moving on and, and going to a different room, yes, maybe for a few minutes we will, you'll be relieved of that burden on you. And you will say, you know what, I, I, I don't really want to watch this. You know, Change the channel. But today you can change the channel, but tomorrow when Allah is asking us, and this will happen, when Allah is asking us, will you be able to change channel? Will you be able to start thinking about something else? Will you be able to walk away and, 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 and try and, and start ourselves doing something else so our mind goes off it? No, we will have to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are seeing little, little children being separated from their parents. Young, young children, subhanAllah, who, you know, uh, subhanAllah, in fact, let's go watch the next video and then we'll come back. Let me show you the video first. <laughs> ليش خايفة؟ يا أخي مسكين لأي حدا ما تقلقيش هينا أنا ليش خايفة يا عمي يا حبيبي؟ أنا كنت أنا كنت أنا كنت بس أنا حتى أتخلص عشان أمي مسافرة وأتمنى إنها تيجي إن شاء الله بتخلص الحرب وبتشوفي أمك تعيطيش شاطرة شوف like I said my brothers and sisters Little, little children walking around Gaza, wishing they were together with their mom. Maybe, you know, the mom is, is a different part of Gaza. Maybe she's a doctor in the hospital. You know, I don't know where her mother is. But look at, subhanAllah, the pain these little children are going through. I believe you have a call. To send money to Gaza. Assalamu alaikum. So, wa alaikum assalam. What's your name and where are you calling from, sister? Uh, I'm, I'm London, from Masha. London, uh, Kamar Kabir. Yes, I like to know, clarify the, yes. um, in, uh, the uh, things we are sending or money they're uh, reaching there or? Yes, yes, uh, it is. So we are, we've got a warehouse in Egypt and we have a, a warehouse in, uh, uh, well, operation in Jordan where we are sending it by plane from two different borders. So okay. we've got the Rafa border and we've got a border in Israel from, which, uh, from where we are sending the aid in. And who, who, who's, taking, who's, who's taking all this? Uh, Al-Khair Foundation. Personally? Yes, ourselves. 
is uh, operation. Because my, some of my sister and brother in uh, you, you, different places, you, you, you can they see, asked yeah, me, yeah. I said, yeah, definitely yeah, going. If you, if you see on TV right now, if you see on TV right now, Behind yeah. me is a report from Al Jazeera. They were showing it. We, you know, we don't call them or so. They're just showing themselves, and okay. and, and this, was, this was reported live. So you could see the Al Khair trucks entering. This is, this is in Gaza. Okay. So okay. you know, Alhamdulillah, our trucks are entering Gaza. Okay. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Yeah. No Jazakallah problem. Khair. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. Khair. Jazakallah. Alaikum. So yeah, Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I will come to our delivery in a moment, and I'll go into detail about our delivery in Gaza. But I want to, you know, show these videos. You know, look at that girl. We just saw. She's got a small backpack, she had, I think she had a blanket or something in the other hand. And that's all she's, she, she must have had, subhanAllah, and has, you know, right now. Moving from one place to another place, she said, they had to, someone shouted, they had to evacuate, so they evacuated. And then, subhanAllah, since then she's saying, you know, she's, she's been, she, she, she's been, subhanAllah, in pain, she's scared. She goes, I'm scared. She's scared, look at subhanAllah. You know, young children, innocent, they, subhanAllah, they, 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 they didn't do anything. But they are the ones that have to suffer. They are the ones that have to go through hunger. They are the ones who are displaced, who have no home. Their homes have been destroyed. All our toys are gone. You know, that's what children care about. All my books are gone. My bedroom is gone. Right? But subhanAllah, look what she's asking for. She wants to be reunited with her mother. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunited with the mother. Ameen, ameen. But these are the stories that the Palestinians themselves are uploading so we can see. Some, you know, it's, it's still bearable to watch. Some, it becomes unbearable. Some, sometimes it becomes difficult to watch these videos. But this is reality on the ground in Gaza. This is what they are going through. This is what they are feeling every day. The, mess, the, the chance she got to come in front of a camera, whether it was a phone, whether it was whatever they were recording it with, the message she gives out is what? She could have said a lot of things, but she goes, I'm scared. And so many children in Gaza are scared. And what we are saying here, my brothers and sisters, is maybe we cannot stop the bombs. We can't. We can't. I, well, I at least can't, can't stop the bombs. But what we can do, my brothers and sisters, is to provide some comfort to these children. Let them know that they're not alone in all of this. That they don't have to suffer alone. That, yes, you know, you, you, you're going through a difficult time, but you will have someone to feed you, you have someone to be there for you. Someone to give you a tent, someone to give you a, a pillow and a mattress to sleep on. Someone to give you food for the entire month. Someone to give you, subhanAllah, hygiene kit so you can clean yourself. You can wash your face, you can wash your hands. You can wash your hair, you can, you know, do all the basics. Right, we go to the next video. And this is, my brothers and sisters, you know, this is, what you're going to see now, what you're going to see now is reality as well. And, what, and, and this is something the Palestinians and the Gazans are facing every day. Something, these are the scenes that are very, become very normal to them. This has become everyday life. So let's go to the next video. Subhanallah. This is what they are going through. This is Gaza. This is Gaza unscripted, unscripted. This is Gaza uncensored. This is Gaza as it is being shown to you. A little child is holding the dead body of his younger brother. Little brother who subhanallah thought still maybe a baby. Now this child, subhanAllah, you know, how is he going to live his life with that, with, that, with that, subhanAllah, memory and that image in his mind of his dead brother and he's holding his body to the streets of Gaza? Look at, subhanAllah, look, look at, subhanAllah, how they have to live their life. And look at our children. What's missing from the lives of our children? Nothing. They've got everything. Maybe they don't realize. Maybe they don't realize that what they have 
is, is everything and, and they might be complaining about subhanallah this is a little thing but look at subhanallah the children of Gaza look at how they are living their lives and if there are any children watching look at the children of Gaza look how they are, have, to, have to live their life not everyone in the world has a life that we have in the UK, in Europe, in the West we have everything available to them, but them, they don't even have the The fact that he has to walk the streets of Gaza with his dead body's arm, and subhanAllah, it looks like, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, my brothers and sisters, he's walking down the streets, and when he stands still, people gather around. When he's walking around, not many people are stopping by, because they are, look, you know, behind, look behind them. Look around them. People are looking at him, but you know, they're just carrying on with their daily life. Because this has become such a regular occurrence in Gaza for people to be walking the streets with the dead bodies wrapped in a shroud, subhanAllah, of the children, of the babies, of the toddlers, of the teenagers. And here you have a little child walking around with the body of his little brother. This is reality in Gaza, my brothers and sisters. This is how it is. And this is again unscripted. This is what they are experiencing every day. And then I want to reflect back upon us again. Are our experiences the same as this? Is our reality the same as this? Are our blessings the same as this? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Let's move to the next video. And in this video, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's, a, it's a girl. And she's scared again. You know, let's watch the video in fact. Subhanallah, this is a doctor. He's saving lives. He's saving lives, but he gets the news that his house was bombed. Again, a glimpse. This is, these are just glimpses. A few seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds from the lives of these people. And their lives are not 40 seconds long, my brothers and sisters. They have been around since October 7. And until now, the amount of suffering these people had to face every day is unbearable for any one of us. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not testing us with this means that we would not be able to bear whatever they are bearing. We would not be dealing with it in this manner. Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul beyond it can be. And the fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving these people these tests means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them the strength for it as well. To bear some of that pain emotionally, psychologically. We would go crazy. Forget experiencing losing family members. Forget anything. Imagine if, they took, if, if, if someone took us right now and I took you from your living room and I picked you up and put you into Gaza you've got no family there you've got no friends there, you've got nothing there you just being there, I'm just, me just being there we're gonna go crazy we're gonna think how are these people living like this how are these people surviving like this how are they bearing the hunger and the constant sound of bombs how are they hearing the drones that are constantly buzzing? How are they bearing to, to burying their dead ones one after the other after the other? How are they bearing, subhanAllah, losing the homes they were living in and now having to live in a makeshift camp? How are they bearing going to the toilet that they have to share with four, five hundred different people? How can these people bear drinking dirty water to survive and then getting kidney diseases? How can these people do it? We would go crazy. But the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put us there means that they, this is not our test. 
of the bombing and the losing of life. Our test is a different one. It's a different one. And what's our test, my brothers and sisters? Our test is how are we, the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa those people that say, we say, Amanna billahi wa rasooli, that we believe in, and we believe in Allah and His Messenger, that we say we believe in the hereafter, we say we believe in the Book of Allah, we say we believe in the angels, we say we believe in all of these things. We say we believe in Jannah and Jahannam. On Yawm al-Qiyamah, we say we believe all these things, we say it. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a test on us like this. And He puts these images in front of us. And, and people like um, uh, Am Khalid, our Uncle Khalid that you just saw with the orange imama. They, subhanAllah, you know, we see their pictures and we see their videos and how they are consoling others. How they are being, uh, subhanAllah, are suffering. How they are in pain but they are, they are facing with iman. They are facing it with yaqeen. They are facing it with trust and tawakkul on Allah. They've got the dead people in their arms, the shuhada, and they're saying, Hasbun Allah wa name al wakil. They're saying, La inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. They're saying, Ya Rabb, be pleased with us. Ya Rabb, this is for you, Ya Rabb. Our test is of our Iman here. Our test is here of our trust in Allah. Our, our Iman is how much we have tawakkul on Allah as well, just like the Palestinians, just like the people of Gaza. The same questions apply to the test, but the test itself is different. Their test is losing their children. children. Their test is losing their loved ones. Their test is losing their homes. Their test is living in poverty. Their test is living in hunger and thirst and subhanAllah being in pain because of the wounds and, and their legs being chopped off. Their test is zulm. What's our test? What's our test? Our test. Our test, my brothers and sisters, is our comforts. Our test is the water that Allah has taken away from them, but Allah has given us. Our test is the food that Allah has taken away from them, but Allah has given us. Our test is our homes that Allah has taken away from them, but has given us. Allah is testing us through our wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away from them, but He has put us through that test. He has given it to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has a message for all of humanity, for you and I. Anfiku, anfiku, anfiku. Spend, spend, spend in the path of Allah. Give to Allah. Man qardan hasana. Who is going to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan? You know, wa tujahidu bi anfusikum wa amwalikum. It is to strive in the path, in the, in, in, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with yourselves and your wealth. Giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that one way to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are truly you know, uh, uh, gr grateful for the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Because that's the conditions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put of, of, of showing gratefulness. You cannot and we cannot, my brothers and sisters, say I'm grateful for Allah has given us. Wallahi, I'm sajde bhi kar Allah ko, sajde kar ya Rabb, tera shukar, tera shukar, tu ne itna mujhe paisa diya. Tera shukar mujhe aise gaadi diya aur itna ghar, itse ghar diya. Tere shukar me karta hoon aur aisa itna bada shukar karta hoon aur mein sajde mein gir raha hoon. Magar ek bhi paisa Allah ke raaste mein mara kharch nahi ho raha. Ye shukar nahi hota. This is not shukar. We don't have to pay lip service to Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Wal asr. Allah takes a qasam and an oath by time. That indeed man is in loss. Man, all of us are losing. Every minute, every, every minute and second of the day we are losing. That's the standard rule. We are always losing. Except. 
So by standard definition, everyone is losing. Then Allah says, except the one. Amanu. Illa alladhina amanu. Except those who believe. But is believing enough? Is believing enough? No. Allah says, Illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. And they do pious deeds. They do good actions, good deeds. That's how important it is. Allah has not separated these two. That's it. Just believe and that will be enough. No. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ So, who is everyone's losing except those people who are believing in Allah. And then these believing people are doing good actions. And the good actions, subhanAllah, وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ And they call towards the truth and they call towards patience. So brothers and sisters doing shukr does not mean just to believe and just pay, say empty slogans here. We have to show physically by giving our wealth, by showing that Allah, the wealth that you have given me, I'm not, I'm not going to get so attached to this money that I will forget the duty that's put, that you have put on me. That, yeah, Allah, this money and this house and this cause that you have given me, this is not going to divert me from the remembrance of, your, of you, Ya Rabb. That the, the luxuries and the comforts that you have provided for me, Ya Rabb, is not going to take me away from my duty towards my brothers and sisters. This is the test. Exactly, this is the test. And you might be asking, you know, you brother Harun, you said, tawakkul and, uh, you know, relying on Allah and believing in Allah, they, the questions are the same for us and them. But the actions are different. The conditions and the situations are different. Because when these people lose someone, what did they do? They tawakkul on Allah. They are pleased with Allah. They are content with Allah. They have no complaint against Allah. That why have you taken my son? They'll say Alhamdulillah. Yes, they will cry. They will feel sad like any of us. But in the end, they will, they will be happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be happy with all of this, my brothers and sisters. We are also in a situation. And we have the choice of either keeping the money in our pockets and not trusting Allah because that's what we're doing when we, when we don't want to donate we are saying, Ya Allah, I don't trust you enough with my wealth Ya Allah, I would love to give it but I don't trust you because, you know what I mean, I've got the money right here and if I give it away, I don't know if you're going to give me money back or not you know, that's what we are doing basically and the trust comes into play, the tawakkul, the reliance on Allah comes into place exactly this time that when you are parting with your money, you are doing it knowing in your heart that the money that I'm going to give away, the money that I'm going to spend on the people of Gaza, on the people of Yemen, the people of Syria, is not going to be wasted. Is not, I'm not going to lose this money. Rather, Ya Rabb, I'm spending my money in your path because you gave it to me and you provided it to me in the first place. And I know because you said in the Quran, your Nabi said in many, many hadiths, that sadaqa does not decrease your wealth. That you said that you give me one pound and I will multiply this money for you, Allah says in the Quran. Allah says, Man qardan hasana. Who is going to give Allah a goodly loan so he can multiply it for you many folds? That's the ayah. For you da'ifu ad'afin kathira. So he can multiply it for you many times. Kathira, ad'afin kathira, many times. Ya Allah, you say this, so I, you've said it and that's enough for me. I don't need to be reminded 25, 26 different ways of how Allah is going to help me. Because you've said it once to me, that's enough for me. That's my reliance. Here's my money. So, my brothers and sisters, do you see now? Do you see and can we see how the questions are the same? The test is the same, but the situation is difficult. And there is it's loss of wealth and loss of homes and loss of lives and loss of business and loss of crops and loss of everything and ours is the opposite here we are getting and giving and getting and getting and getting and they are pleased with Allah with what they have lost and we have to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has given us and what we are giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my dear brothers and sisters we again have a responsibility that we have to fulfill when I was in Egypt 
and I was in the warehouse and I was seeing the food packs being prepared and I seen the trucks being loaded and they are leaving from the warehouse and I can see different organizations, partner organizations coming and they are subhanAllah doing their bit subhanAllah through Al Khair Foundation and they are doing all of these things my brothers and sisters you know he, he gave me a, a level of sukoon in my heart thinking about the fact that this is what happens when everyone fulfills their personal and individual responsibility because one may, you know, if every single person, if or this entire pallet that you can see behind me, if every single person on that pallet thought, what's my 50 pound going to make a difference? You know, mera so pound, do so pound, so pound, kya difference banayega? Kuch zara to hoega nahi. Yaar kya fayda hai? Better hai mein ye, is basically ye kar loon, wo kareed loon. Baad mein de dunga mein. If everyone on that, 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 that moving pallet that you can see thought like this, there would be no pallet there. There would be no all these boxes lying out. But it is because all of you at home individually are fulfilling your responsibility and you are feeling to yourself that, you know what, I should be giving something. I should be helping the people of Palestine and Gaza and I should be sending my aid. That this, what you see behind me, is made possible. Al Khair Foundation is getting aid into Gaza. And let me make it clear for all our brothers and sisters who are watching right now. You may ask, brother, they are not letting aid into Gaza. So how are you getting your aid into Gaza? First of all, they are letting aid in. They are claiming, to, you know, they, they, they made a claim that we would allow 500 trucks every day into Gaza. They did not, uh, subhanAllah, fulfill that promise. Then some news agencies said about 150 trucks are entering a day. That is also not true. About every day, about 90 trucks they are allowing in. That's the latest report I've, I've, I've read, subhanAllah, from the United Nations. They are allowing about 90 trucks in a day. And Alhamdulillah, Al Khair Foundation is one from those organizations that is, that is being allowed to take their aid inside. And you may ask, why Al Khair Foundation? Why not someone else? Why is it that there are thousands of trucks waiting at the Rafah border? That's because, my brothers and sisters, we are not an organization that started our operation on October 7. We have been sending aid into Gaza since 2018. If not a daily basis, then at least three, four times a week have our trucks been going into Gaza. So you can imagine the border forces know Al Khair Foundation very well. And let me tell you something else. You know when October 7th happened and people were still in shock, people were still trying to take in, a lot of charities were trying to find partners who could deliver on their behalf. Al Khair Foundation was not in a position where they had to look for a partner, they had to find a way how can we get aid in. Because let me tell you, on October 7, our trucks, an entire convoy went in. On October 8, our convoys went in. And convoy, not a truck, convoys went in of Al Khair Foundation. And let me tell you something else, on October 6, when the world did not even know something was about to happen in Gaza, on October 6, our trucks were going in. So since then, when they closed the borders, and then after a while when they opened them again, they are not going to, of course, they're not going to choose an organization or, 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 or people they've never seen before. They are going to allow those trucks and those organizations to go in first of, of that they know already. And because we've got the experience of so many years that we know how to pack the items. We know how to place them on the trucks because everything matters. We know how to prepare the list. We know how to deal with the people on the border. We know about everything, subhanAllah. We have got experience in this. And let me tell you something else. It is not that we are only delivering this on behalf of our donors. We are delivering more aid on behalf of our international partners than we are for our own donors. You know that? You know our latest addition of, of a partner that wants to deliver in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. You know who that is? It's the Qatari government. And we just delivered a couple of days ago, we delivered their first delivery in Gaza. And their first delivery. It was just, uh, uh, subhanAllah, you know, the, the first test, you could say. It was the initial test. They wanted, maybe they were testing us, but the first delivery was already over 250,000 pounds just for that organization. We have other organizations who are much, much bigger than Al Khair Foundation that are delivering through Al Khair Foundation in Gaza because they don't have the access to Gaza. Even if they are bigger than us, when they arrive at the border, they'll look at them and they'll say, okay, don't worry, wait. But when they see Al Khair Foundation, they, they know Al Khair Foundation for many, many years. Our entire hospital, 
was imported. All the materials for our hospitals were imported, everything. So, you know, you can imagine the experience that we have with importing food and medicines and all the rest into Gaza. When the health ministry ran out of medicines in Gaza, they came to Al Khair Foundation and Al Khair Foundation delivered. And you could see, subhanAllah, the Al Jazeera footages that we showed at the time, where Al Jazeera is showing, subhanAllah, our aid supplies entering Gaza. So, your, you know, be rest assured. Our aid that I'm donating, that you are donating, is reaching Gaza. You know, this is the footage I was talking about. This is Al Jazeera. You know, you could see the health ministry, 15 of Gaza's 35 hospitals forced to close down and, they, and this was a time where they needed a lot of medicines they said there is no medicines left so it was Al Khair Foundation that they give the assignment to bring in medicines and you can see the Al Khair Foundation logo you can see this is not this was in November December I believe right is there a date on here somewhere you know I don't know if you right in front of me but this is subhanAllah inside Gaza this is in Khan Yunus this is our truck arriving at a hospital full of medicines through your donations. So again, we are not, uh, subhanAllah, new in the game when it comes to Gaza. We are very well established. We are very well established. My brothers and sisters, without delaying any further, you have the power to deliver your aid to the people of Gaza by providing a food pack, by giving an entire pallet of food, food packs, by giving an entire air cargo pallet of food packs that will enter Gaza by providing medicines, by providing shelter, by providing flour. The prices are all displayed on the screen. You can see the prices, but we need you to respond and we need you to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to go on a break, my brothers and sisters, and in this break, I don't want you to relax. I don't want you to hold back, but my brothers and sisters, we need to respond and give as much as you can. Before you're going to leave for Tarawih, or before you're about to pray your tarawih, you know, first give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an open, a happy and a sound heart. And then when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, watch how that salah will change. Look how that connection with Allah will change. We'll see you after break. Stay with us. See you soon. Asalaamu Alaikum. <laughs> شكرا يا ربي شكرا هديت قلبي شكرا نورت دربي شكرا شكرا يا رب يا منزل القرآن يا خالق الإنسان يا رب يا رحمن شكرا يا رب شكرا يا رب يا منزل القرآن يا خالق الإنسان يا رب يا رحمن شكرا يا شكرا يا ربي شكرا هديت قلبي شكرا نورت دربي شكرا شكرا يا رب أتمنى كثير أن أطير المدينة اللي بقيت عايش فيها لدارنا أرجع أنا اسمي محمد أحمد شمعة نازح من الشمال وعمره 12 سنة أنا نزحت من دوار التوام من الشمال رحنا على مدارس في الشاطئ ما بلاقيها إلا الدبابة واصلة عند البوابة المدرسة والأشلاء مرمية على الباب نمنا يوم في كل في مدرسة اسمها كل مدرسة كلية غزة لقيناها هناك قعدنا فيها يوم ربطنا غراضنا وطلعنا على الجنوب أول ما جينا على المنطقة قعدنا في خيمة ولم لم نايلون من الشارع من الجبال اللي هان واشترينا عدان الشوي اشترينا بك بكرات خضان أول مرة طيرتنا في المنطقة صار الكل يجي طير ويسوي عندهم أيوة أيوة طار 
فرحة بتيجي لما هو يطير مش لما نعمله لما يلاعل ويكون عالي مش شيء نلعب فيها والجوالات لازم ينشحنين وصل جوال وجوال وجوال أبويا الضايع يجون صاروا يحكوا لتبيع تبيع صرت أبيع قبل هيك صاروا أولاد يغاروا مني ويشتروا عدان ويعملوا علام فلسطين من بعد ما أنا طيرت يعني أول مرة بحكي لهم جيبوا جيبوا من عندكم كياس ودان شو بعمل لهم جسر الطبق جسر العدان والخطار هم بجلتلون قد زمان عملهم ملونات والوان وبقى كل شيء موفر عني من بعد الحرب نفسي يكون عندي دار زي الدار اللي بقيت اسكن فيها العب فيها ما لقيت فيش دارنا راحت شقه راحت الشقه تبعتنا بتمنى انه الحرب تخلص ونرجع على دورنا ان شاء الله نلاقي دارنا واقفه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة 
وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته انك لا تخلف الميعاد اي الله اس دعوت کامل اور تا قیامت قائم ہونے والی نماز کے رب تو محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو جنت میں نمایاں مقام فضیلت عطا فرما اور انہیں اس مقام محمود پر فائز فرما جس کا تو نے ان سے وعدہ فرمایا ہے بے شک تو وعدے کے خلاف نہیں فرماتا مولا یا In the face of adversity, hope finds a way. Despite challenges at the border, we have a strong resolve that we will be getting our aid through to Gaza. And here I am to show you. Where there is no food available in Gaza, people are starving, people are dying in Gaza as we speak. And your donations are saving their lives. So far, over 250 trucks have entered Gaza. Over a million meals in Gaza have been distributed. This is because of your commitment and your dedication and your donations that we are able to do this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya, Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry, and uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now, and then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then, uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, uh, uh, it's a fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap. But uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a uh, very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So 
any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week mostly, or maximum within a week uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border. Uh, but here it will be a matter of, you can say, uh, hours or days at the max, inshallah. So I'm hopeful that inshallah um, within the first 10 days of Ramadan, uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on daily basis from Rafa crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, uh, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is the level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the you know, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft. And then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile. And inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Uh, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft. Uh, and inshallah, uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport, which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today, inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya, Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry. And uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now. And then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself 
going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So, any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week, mostly, or maximum within a week, uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border. Uh, but here, it will be matter of you can say uh, hours or days at the max, inshallah. So, I'm hopeful that inshallah, um, within first ten days of Ramadan. Uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on daily basis from Rafah crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, uh, is amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the uh, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft. And then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile. And inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Uh, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft. Uh, and inshallah, uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport, which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today, inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Khayatul Hashmiya Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, 
and third lorry there. Mashallah, we are starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry and uh, inshallah it will be offloaded on the road right now and then inshallah it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane and then uh, subhanallah uh, this is happening you can say uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully, inshallah, uh, everything goes well. Uh, I'm grateful to, mashallah, King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a uh, little bit of uh, expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it's a fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week, mostly, or maximum within a week, uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border. Uh, but here it will be a matter of, you can say, uh, hours or days at the max, inshallah. So I'm hopeful that inshallah, um, within the first 10 days of Ramadan, uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on a daily basis from Rafah crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies and mashallah, um, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the uh, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization I should say uh, mashallah so amazing alhamdulillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you brothers and sisters inshallah we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft and then uh, after that we have to say goodbye to the cameraman but I will have my mobile and inshallah with that we will do coverage uh, and inshallah we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft uh, and inshallah uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah al khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization. Uh, 
in partnership, mashallah. So Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry, and uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now, and then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then, uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, uh, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a uh, very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week mostly or maximum within a week uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border uh, but here it will be a matter of you can say uh, hours or days at the max inshallah so I'm hopeful that inshallah um, within first 10 days of Ramadan uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on daily basis from Rafa crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, uh, is amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the you know, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft. And then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile. And inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Uh, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft. Uh, and inshallah, uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport, which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today, inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an uh, exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry, and uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now, and then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then, uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap. But uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a uh, very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week mostly or maximum within a week uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border uh, but here it will be matter of you can say uh, hours or days at the max inshallah so i'm hopeful that inshallah um, within first 10 days of ramadan uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on daily basis from Rafah crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, uh, is amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the you know, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft. And then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile. And inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Uh, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft. Uh, and inshallah, uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport, which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today, inshallah. So it's amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. 
uh, it will go down in the history inshallah um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale but this is much larger and much bigger scale mashallah jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry, and uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now, and then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then, uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a uh, very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week mostly or maximum within a week uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border uh, but here it will be matter of you can say uh, hours or days at the max inshallah so I'm hopeful that inshallah uh, within first 10 days of Ramadan uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on daily basis from Rafah crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, uh, is amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the uh, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage 
uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft and then uh, after that we have to say goodbye to the cameraman but I will have my mobile and inshallah with that we will do coverage uh, and inshallah we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft uh, and inshallah uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport which is not passenger airport um, so there is no you can say issuing of visa facility on the other side so we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today inshallah so it's amazing day for myself and for al khair foundation uh, it will go down in the history inshallah um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale but this is much larger and much bigger scale mashallah جزاكم الله الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Khayatul Hashmiya, Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah, uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours, and uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So, alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry, and uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now, and then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then, uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a uh, very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week mostly or maximum within a week uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border uh, but here it will be matter of you can say uh, hours or days at the max inshallah so I'm hopeful that inshallah um, within first 10 days of Ramadan uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on daily basis from Rafah crossing, 
this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, um, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the uh, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft. And then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile. And inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Um, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft. Uh, and inshallah, uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport, which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today, inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya, Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry, and uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now, and then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then, uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully inshallah uh, everything goes well uh, I'm grateful to mashallah King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a um, very nominal cost. 
but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week mostly, or maximum within a week uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border. Uh, but here it will be a matter of, you can say, uh, hours or days at the max, inshallah. So I'm hopeful that inshallah um, within the first 10 days of Ramadan, uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on a daily basis from Rafah crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies. And mashallah, uh, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the you know, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So amazing, alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft. And then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile. And inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Uh, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft. Uh, and inshallah, uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport, which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today, inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Khayatul Hashmiya Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. And uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, they're facilitating this. And mashallah, they're providing us this aircraft. You can see the stock here, mashallah, on one lorry here, another lorry behind me, and third lorry there. Mashallah, we're starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry. And uh, inshallah, it will be offloaded on the road right now. And then inshallah, it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane. And then uh, subhanallah, uh, this is happening, you can say, uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah 
Uh, hopefully, inshallah, uh, everything goes well. Uh, I'm grateful to, mashallah, King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it's a fraction of the cost. So, you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week, mostly, or maximum within a week, uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border. Uh, but here, it will be a matter of, you can say, uh, hours or days at the max, inshallah. So, I'm hopeful that, inshallah, um, within the first 10 days of Ramadan, uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into Gaza on a daily basis from Rafah crossing, this will uh, also uh, enable them, mashallah, uh, to receive uh, aid supplies and, mashallah, um, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the you know, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization, I should say, uh, mashallah. So, amazing, alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft, and then uh, after that, we have to say goodbye to the cameraman. But I will have my mobile, and inshallah, with that, we will do coverage. Uh, and inshallah, we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft uh, and inshallah uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today inshallah. So it's an amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah Al Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Army Airport in Jordan, mashallah, in Amman. Uh, this is an exclusive airport for Army, mashallah. Uh, we are working uh, with the King of Jordan's organization uh, in partnership, mashallah. Uh, so, Al Khair Foundation and uh, Al Hayatul Hashmiya Al Khairiya, mashallah, joined together. Uh, to deliver aid into Gaza, mashallah. Uh, and inshallah, we will be distributing on their behalf inside Gaza also. Um, and mashallah, the purchase of the stock is from uh, mostly ours. 
and uh, packaging and the warehousing logistics is basically uh, their support mashallah so alhamdulillah they facilitating this and mashallah they providing us this aircraft you can see the stock here mashallah on one lorry here another lorry behind me and third lorry there mashallah we starting to offload um, the uh, pallets from the lorry and uh, inshallah it will be offloaded on the road right now and then inshallah it will be loaded uh, on this aeroplane and then uh, subhanallah uh, this is happening you can say uh, first time uh, for sake of Gaza where I personally myself and my team member um, will be going on this aircraft mashallah uh, hopefully, inshallah, uh, everything goes well. Uh, I'm grateful to, mashallah, King of Jordan's organization and their team member to facilitate uh, all the logistics uh, of myself uh, going into this aircraft, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and bless, bless them. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward every one of you, subhanallah. Uh, so you have donated amazingly, mashallah. Um, I know this is a, a bit, a little bit of a expensive exercise, uh, but to be honest, um, uh, it at fraction of the cost. So you know, taking a cargo aeroplane is not cheap, but uh, for us, mashallah, and for charity organizations uh, that are working here, mashallah, uh, is a very nominal cost. Uh, but the advantage is uh, swiftest uh, delivery inside Gaza. So any cargo going through this route reaches Gaza in shortest possible time. Uh, although, mashallah, all Al Khair deliveries entered into Gaza from within less than a week, mostly, or maximum within a week, uh, from the warehouse uh, into basically across the border. Uh, but here it will be a matter of you can say uh, hours or days at the max inshallah so i'm hopeful that inshallah uh, within first 10 days of ramadan uh, in addition to our uh, other lorries that are entering into gaza on daily basis from rafa crossing this will uh, also uh, enable them mashallah uh, to receive uh, aid supplies and mashallah um, it's amazing, alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you, brothers and sisters. Uh, this success is your success. Um, this is the level of your generosity, mashallah. This is level of your trust and confidence. And this is the level of trust and confidence of authorities in Al Khair Foundation working together with one of the you know, leading uh, humanitarian uh, organization or governmental organization I should say uh, mashallah so amazing alhamdulillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you brothers and sisters inshallah we will be showing you the footage uh, of uh, uh, loading the aircraft and then uh, after that we have to say goodbye to the cameraman but I will have my mobile and inshallah with that we will do coverage uh, and inshallah we will show you the landing and then uh, offloading the aircraft uh, and inshallah uh, loading from there on the lorries and off it goes. We have to come back with this aircraft um, because it's going at the special airport which is not passenger airport. Um, so there is no, you can say, issuing of visa facility on the other side. So we will go with this aircraft and come back with this aircraft today inshallah. So it's amazing day for myself and for Al Khair Foundation. Uh, it will go down in the history, inshallah. Um, we have done similar activity in past on a smaller scale, but this is much larger and much bigger scale, mashallah. Jazakumullah Al Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Gaza, destruction everywhere, where once used to stand someone's home, is now filled with debris from the disaster caused by constant bombing on innocent lives. Fatality everywhere. It's hard to know where step foot, because every inch is covered by dead bodies. Spots of blood speak stories of horror seen or heard ever before. The atmosphere is heavy, with screams of people bereaving from losing their loved ones. The ones who live have their lives changed because the emptiness will drown them in never-lasting sorrows. <laughs> Some footages are so sensitive we are unable to show our viewers the depth of this nightmare, but we must deliver the message across. Our donors have supported in these desperate times, and the people of Gaza will always remember your contribution. Yet, we have a long way to go, more to do, much to achieve for the people Gaza. May Allah protect the people of Gaza and ease their pain. May Allah accept their prayer and your support in Shala. So save Gaza innocence. Oh
Had similar experiences. There is no uh, any medical support, no any uh, thing uh, given to the mother. Uh, the mother stay that uh, she cannot uh, breastfeed the child uh, since the birth. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, this case is not uh, the only one uh, in Al Aqsa Hospital. Atiya, whose name means a gift in Arabic starts her life surrounded by death. And with the worsening conditions in hundreds of makeshift camps across the Gaza Strip, the catastrophic threat for thousands of newborns is intensifying. Families, no matter how willing, fall short in providing for their children. I'm Andy Ferguson, I'm a GP and public health specialist and with that work I've been a regular traveller to both Gaza and the West Bank for the past 14 years. I have never experienced anything like I experienced in Gaza over Christmas and New Year and I hope that I never do ever again. Final load up, fingers crossed everybody. Access to Gaza is now really very difficult. I flew out to Cairo on Christmas Eve. We were part of a UN convoy going from Cairo to the Rafa crossing on the border between Egypt and Gaza on Christmas Day. At that moment in time, the fighting was becoming more and more intense in the middle areas of, uh, of Gaza uh, and towards Khan Yunis. We were originally due to be deployed to a different hospital, but because of the security situation, that was changed and we, uh, and we were diverted to the European. When we finally made it to the hospital, our, our immediate impression was, wow, it was so completely different to whatever we'd seen before. I mean, complete chaos reigns. There are about 22,000 people currently living in makeshift tents on the grounds of the hospital or actually on the floors in hospital corridors themselves. You've also got some of the remaining staff living within the hospital, some of them with their families as well. The situation within the emergency department particularly it was chaotic. There were hundreds and hundreds of patients in here in there at any moment. Many of them, because the primary healthcare system has broken down, looking for the ongoing management of their diabetes, the high blood pressure, heart failure, kidney failure, cancer. And then on top of that, then you get groups of 10, 20, 30 newly injured patients, often with a number of dead bodies arriving within that chaos. By far the greatest number of injuries are those affecting the limbs. Um, you can't imagine really the horror of some of those, those injuries. 
people who've had traumatic amputations from the blast itself of arms, legs, the most horrible, complex, uh, devastating uh, fractures you know, affecting, uh, affecting their limbs as well. Ahmed was uh, one of the patients that we met quite early on. So he was in the shelter with the rest of his close family when it was shelled. Absolutely tragically, the rest of his, uh, his family died in that, uh, in that attack. <laughs> He was resuscitated and then transferred through to the European hospital where our team found him. He saw hope for himself in the, uh, in the future, both for him as a person and for Gaza itself, which really was very humbling and incredibly inspiring for us as a, as a team to hear. The situation now is, it is completely unprecedented. The level of devastation, the complete dismantling of the health system from the hospitals down to the primary healthcare centres to the vaccination programme and public health initiatives, none of it is functioning. So if you ask me what the hospital system within there within Gaza needs right now, the only real answer is an immediate ceasefire. It's an end to the killing, it's an end to those people being injured. But it's also to allow the necessary volume of aid to get into Gaza itself. Uh, and until we get to that situation, there's going to be no beginnings to a, a recovery. I have never experienced anything like I experienced in Gaza over Christmas and New Year. Um, and I hope that I never do ever again. Bless and be blessed with something extraordinary this Ramadan. Within these donation packs lies a story of hope. Within our care, we carefully pack essential food items donated by you. The generosity that binds communities together is contained within us. With every donation, we are prepared, packed and delivered. And as we find our way through mountains and villages, we bring more than just sustenance. We bring joy, smiles, and the promise that a brighter future is ahead. Your zakat helps to turn hunger into hope. Last year, over one million individuals benefited worldwide from the food packs that we delivered. And this Ramadan, it's your turn to make a difference. So remember, bless and be blessed with something extraordinary every time you donate. Donate with confidence. Donate without care. हॉर्न ऑफ अफ्रीका कई दहाइयों से भूख गुर्बत और कैदसाली का शिकार है जहां जिंदगी नेमत से ज्यादा आजमाइश है इंसानों समेत हर जीरू जिसमो जहां का रिश्ता बरकरार रखने की मुसलसल तगोदों में है मशरकी अफ्रीका के इन्हीं ममालिक में से एक सोमाली लैंड भी है जहां नाउमीदी के सहरा में उम्मीद के फूल खिले हैं गुर्बत के अंधेरों में रोशन राहों का रास्ता दिखाने वाली एक किरण है 
इंसानों की जिंदगियों में आसानियां बांटने का एक अमल है जो कई सालों से जारी है सोमाली लैंड में इंसानियत की खिदमत व फलाह का ये अलम थामा है अलखैर फाउंडेशन ने सोमाली लैंड में अलखैर फाउंडेशन के कई मंसूबों में से एक कैमल कुर्बानी प्रोजेक्ट है अलखैर फाउंडेशन के जेर इंतजाम सोमाली लैंड में ऊंट कुर्बानी प्रोजेक्ट के तहत कैमल फार्म बनाया गया है जो कई किलोमीटर तक फैला हुआ है जहां सैकड़ों की तादाद में ऊंट रखे गए हैं अलखैर फाउंडेशन के रजाकार इन ऊंटों की देखभाल पर मामूर है कैमल फार्म में ऊंट दिन भर खुली फिजा में दरख्तों और झाड़ियों से खुराक लेते हैं और घूमते फिरते नजर आते हैं ऊंटों की शनाख्त और हिफाजत के लिए हर ऊंट पर अलखैर फाउंडेशन का लोगो कंधा किया गया है सोमाली लैंड में अलखैर फाउंडेशन के ऊंट कुर्बानी प्रोजेक्ट के तहत कैमल फार्म का मकसद खिते में कहत साली और पानी की कमी को मद्देनजर रख कर किया गया है क्योंकि ऊंट पानी पिए बगैर अपनी कोहान में जखीरा शुदा पानी और खुराक के जरिए कई हफ्तों तक जिंदा रहने का हुनर जानते हैं सहराई इलाकों में ऊंट से बढ़कर सख्त जान और कारामद कोई और जानवर नहीं इसीलिए अलखैर फाउंडेशन की जानब से सोमाली लैंड में कुर्बानी प्रोजेक्ट के तहत ऊंट का इंतखब किया गया हर साल इलाके भर से कम उम्र और सेहतमंद ऊंटों को खरीद कर अलखैर फाउंडेशन के कैमल फार्म पर रखा जाता है और इनकी देखभाल की जाती है फिर इन्हीं ऊंटों में से कुर्बानी के ऊंटों का इंतखब किया जाता है अलखैर ऊंट कुर्बानी प्रोजेक्ट के तहत सुन्नत इब्राहिमी की अदायगी के लिए हर साल ईद कुर्बा पर दर्जनों ऊंटों की कुर्बानी की जाती है और कुर्बानी का गोश्त इलाके के गुराबाओ मसाकिन में तकसीम किया जाता है अलखैर फाउंडेशन के रजाकार कुर्बानी का गोश्त गाड़ियों पर रखकर दूर दराज के इलाकों में जरूरतमंद खानदानों तक उनके घरों की दहलीस पर पहुंचाते हैं ऊंटों की कुर्बानी अल्लाह की राह में अतिया करने वालों के नामों से की जाती है और जहां जहां तक खैर बरकत का हामिल कुर्बानी का ये गोश्त पहुंचता है वहां वहां हर मुस्तक के हाथ अतिया करने वाले मर्द व खातन की खैर आफियत के लिए उठते हैं अलखैर फाउंडेशन उन सब बंदगान खुदा की ममनून है जिनकी मदद ताउन से सहरा में फूल खिले हैं और मुस्तक खानदानों को खुशियों के लम्हे मैसर आते हैं अलखैर फाउंडेशन को उम्मीद है कि सुमारी लैंड जैसे गरीब व पसमानदा खत्े में खुशियाँ और उम्मीदें बांटने का ये सफर इसी तरह कामयाबियों और कामरानियों की मंजिलें तय करता रहेगा
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The scenes that you just saw right now in front of you, these were just glimpses from Gaza. These were just small, little, few second clips from the lives of the people inside Gaza. This is the reality of Gaza. My brothers and sisters, the Khair Foundation is on the ground in Gaza, and we are there and have been there since many, many years. We have been working in Gaza for well over a decade now. October 7 was not when we suddenly decided to go and work into Gaza. In fact, we have been there for many, many years. When it comes to aid delivery in, in Gaza, we have been sending trucks into Gaza on a weekly basis, if not daily, subhanAllah, since 2018. So you can understand the scale of our operations inside Gaza since many, many years. And well before that, we were already working there, uh, subhanAllah, in terms of delivering aid, putting water wells, filtration plants, orphans, building, subhanAllah, and supporting hospitals through medicines, and then to the extent where we finally decided to build a hospital in Gaza. My brothers and sisters, an organization doesn't randomly build a hospital in a random place. They will only build a hospital in a place, in the scale of the hospital, the size of the hospital, with the amount of, 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 of uh, procedures that are able to be done from the hospital. You know, it's only built in a place where, you know, they are themselves present, where they know about the situation. You know, we are not going to build a hospital in a random place, subhanAllah, where we have no access to. We can only build a hospital in a place where we have access. Every... Every brick from the hospital was imported into Gaza. So you can imagine how long ago we were, we, we were importing stuff into Gaza. And when October 7 happened, when the rest of the world was trying to figure out a way to get the aid to Gaza, on 7th of October, Al Khair Foundation trucks entered Gaza. On the 8th of October, Al Khair Foundation trucks entered Gaza. In fact, let me tell you something else. On the 6th of October, Al Khair Foundation trucks were entering Gaza. So, alhamdulillah, we have a long, long uh, you know, experience uh, in this field when it comes to delivery in Gaza. We know how to do it, we know what, what are the rules, you know, the regulations, we know the way to, to, to subhanAllah, put the trucks uh, together, the way we have to uh, put uh, subhanAllah, uh, the boxes, in which way we put it out, how we have to sort it out, where we put the food, where we put the medicines, if they are going in the same lorry what to put on the banners and what not to put on the banners. You know, all of these small things many organizations are not aware of. But because of that, maybe they didn't put the right banner on. Maybe they didn't place the food bags in a certain way. They didn't prepare the list in a certain way. Right, they are finding difficulties to enter Gaza. But Al Khair Foundation, because we have a long relationship with the border, where we have been sending them and the, and the, and the border force has been seeing Al Khair Foundation trucks on subhanAllah a, a daily basis. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, this is uh, when it comes to our aid delivery. So we can assure you, rest assured, your aid is reaching Gaza. The donations that we are asking here, we would not be asking if we could not deliver in Gaza, I'm telling you. And even if, if someone else, I would not be standing here at least, right? And I'm sure the organization itself would not be standing here either, asking for donations if we were not able to deliver in Gaza. But the fact that we are, and the fact that many organizations in the UK, the, you know, other charities that other people donate to thinking that that charity is delivering in Gaza are in fact delivering in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. Many organizations internationally, the, 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 the Awqaf in Turkey, the Ministry of All the Masajid is delivering in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. The, one of the largest charity, you know, half a million, half, uh, uh, not half a million, 500 million pound charities are delivering in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. And subhanAllah, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Maldives, there's only two main organizations in the Maldives that are operating and the government supports. One is the Red Crescent and the second one is another organization which is a partner organization. And they are sending millions into Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. The Qatar government, the Qatar government, my brothers, the Qatari government, they are sending aid, into, even though they have a Qatar Red Crescent, right? The Red Crescent, they have a Qatar Red Crescent, but they are still have chosen Al Khair Foundation. And recently we've, we've fulfilled the uh, delivery. 
And subhanAllah, it's all on film, it's all on video because we had to prove short to them, you know, we had to show to them as well that we were delivering. So we got all the videos, we got all the proof, we got all the details of all the trucks that have entered. So, you know, no one can say you're lying, no one can say you're making it up because if you really, really uh, want to see, subhanAllah, and you're a donor and you're a supporter and you want to see if you are, you know, come to the office, come to the HQ, inshallah, the team will show you. My brothers and sisters, we are, we are very confident that we can deliver your aid in Gaza. And what are we delivering in Gaza? You know, one may ask. We have, alhamdulillah, many different kinds of projects in Gaza. But right now, because there is a war happening in Gaza, we uh, focus on a few main things. And first of all is food. It's food packs. Because they need food. We are sending in flour, pallets full of flour. And for example, for a food pack, it costs 50 pounds. If you want to provide bread, Subhanallah, you know, baked bread ready so they don't have to, you know, find the ingredients, have, need yeast and, and all the different ingredients to make bread. They, we, we make bread ourselves in our bakery and we distribute that. So you can give bread. And how much does bread cost? You can provide bread to 20 families for 100 pounds. That's not a big amount, my brothers and sisters. But look at the amount of families you'll be feeding. Each family, imagine if they have, you know, they have more families right now. But even if you add it, you know, for a minimum of five, Five times, uh, subhanAllah, uh, five times uh, 20 is 100 pounds. So 100 pounds you are paying to feed, subhanAllah, four twenty families. Ramadan kitchen. So we have a Ramadan kitchen in Gaza. In this kitchen, we are every day preparing meals. Chawal, rice, soup, all kinds of different things we are preparing in that kitchen. And that food is being distributed. And let me tell you something amazing. The amazing thing, my brothers and sisters, is the fact that this kitchen is also in the north of Gaza. In the north of Gaza where, there's a, where, where the signs of famine have, have become very, very clear. Al Khair Foundation is running a kitchen where you can feed hot meals to the people of Gaza. People who are starving to death. In that area you can feed people hot meals through Al Khair Foundation for 120 pounds for 40 people. So you donate 120 pounds, you are feeding 40 people in Gaza. Subhanallah. And the meal that we provide, my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, you know, that could last them and give them energy for quite some time. Because the small, small meals that, we, that they're having, and then suddenly they get rice and chicken in front of them. Subhanallah. Or they meet because we are slaughtering animals. You know, you might, you might be thinking, where are you getting your meat from? We've got, the, we've got our own, we had our own farm, remember? So we've got access to animals, we've been purchasing animals, livestock from people that have been selling them because they need the money to buy other stuff. So we've got the animals that have been slaughtering and doing qurbani and, and, and zabiha of those animals and cooking meat and, and food with that meat and subhanAllah distributing that to the people. So for 40 people, 120 pounds. Then my brothers and sisters, we've got the 100 meals pack. You can provide 100 meals for 400 pounds. Then my brothers and sisters, you can send on a truck food supplies uh, and you can donate towards this pallet 1,300 pounds. So towards a pallet, uh, you know, subhanAllah, depending on what the food is, it will cost about 1,300 pounds. Uh, medical supplies, Gaza per pallet. So every pallet full of medical supplies is 2,000 pounds. If you want to send an entire truck, so on a truck there's about 40 to 42 pallets on there and each pallet is about a ton, more than a ton. So a medi uh, uh, subhanAllah, where is it gone? All right, the truck of uh, flour supplies is 15,000 pounds. 15,000 pounds, my brothers and sisters, you can send an entire truck and you might say for, to yourself, uh, you know, 50,000 pounds is a bit of, of a stretch for, for us. You know, it's not of a stretch if you really wanted to give it. And the reason I'm saying this is because when we come together and we start doing the efforts to try to get to that number. You know, Ramadan is very easy, let me tell you, because I've been fundraising for many years. Ramadan is the easiest time to go to up to someone and say, look, I'm raising fun, funds to send a truck full of, of, of flour to Gaza for 15,000 pounds and I've, I've got, you know, a few thousand pounds already. People are going to give. Trust me. Trust me, it is, this is not just my responsibility, Mulana Huzaifa's responsibility or Imam Qasim's responsibility to stand here and ask for donations. Everyone can include themselves in this work. You can go to your family members and you can go to your friends and your colleagues at work and you can go to the schools and the maktabs and the masjids that you go to and they collect all of this money. One Friday, go to your local masjid and say to the Imam, we need 15,000 pounds to send one truck 
of flour to Gaza or 50,000 pounds for a full truck of subhanallah no 30,000 pounds for a uh, truck full of food supplies to Gaza a truck full of food supplies 30,000 pounds a truck full of flour 15,000 pounds go to your local masjid speak to the committee say look I want to raise some money and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling maybe because I don't have the, the right amount of people around me that have that money so can I do a collection at your masjid can after each salah can I make an announcement and can I say you know I'm collecting money for subhanallah send a, a truck full of flour my brothers and sisters look without you having the money you have raised enough money you know I remember when I was younger 15 16 17 you know these these ages I used to go door to door I used to go buy 100 samosas for 20 quid because I know this very well I used to go in Birmingham in so on Soho Road right those people from Birmingham that know yeah I used to go to Soho Road I used to buy vegetable samosas 20 pounds I used to give me 100 samosas I used to grab my friend with me yeah because we wanted to raise money for charity we used to go to Comrade Road we used to go to Ladypool Road we used to go to Stratford Road we used to go to all, all the main shops we used to go in the shop the shopkeeper you know they've got uh, subhanallah money in front of them so you know it's very difficult for them to say no <laughs> so we used to go into the shops and we used to say uh, we are raising money for Gaza for Yemen or whatever the, it was most like for Syria at the time we were raising money for Syria you know people need a help they knew the situation you know these are samosas and you know whatever you can donate and people instead of donating and we used to ask a pound for a samosa I think it was uh, but subhanallah they, they used to give five pounds for a samosa they used to give ten pounds they used to give more so we used to end up, in, at the end of the day, instead of you know, raising you know, uh, 100 pounds, we used to raise 500 pounds, 400 pounds, 300 pounds. And that was just a little bit of effort on our behalf. Right? Or we used to come together with three, four different people and we used to say, okay, let's hold a charity car wash. See, so it's, it's, it, if you want to do it, you will do it. And if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. That's the reality. Right? But be honest with yourself. And the fact that we can do it, and, we, and when we do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, you know, in this field of work, you know, working with salaka, helping the needy, and trying our best, whatever we can do, I've seen miracles in my life. And I'm not lying to you. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, sell this to you. I've seen miracles in my life. I've seen how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened certain doors for me. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken care of certain problems for me. And I just think to myself, oh, how am I going to get out of this situation? And suddenly, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door and, and, and you are in shock sometimes. Think, whoa, I didn't even know that you know, this was possible and I could get out of the situation this way. Right, because Allah is there for you. If you are in the assistance of your brothers, Allah is in your assistance. That's what he means that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing the obstacles from your path. And if you go the other way around, then obstacles are start coming. You know, I heard something uh, uh, yesterday on a video. They said, log paise jodte hain mushkil waqt ke liye, phir mushkil waqt aa, jabi, aa bhi jata hai. Agar aap paise jod rahe hain mushkil waqt ke liye, to woh mushkil waqt to aayega, kyunki aap uske liye tiyari kar rahe hain. <laughs> Agar aap aakhirat ke liye tiyari karenge, Allah ke raaste mein khach karenge, to woh mushkil time nahi aayega, kyunki Allah woh mushkil waqt aapke zindagi se nikal dega. Magar hum mushkil waqt ke liye tiyari kar rahe hote hain, phir Allah woh mushkil waqt bejta bhi hai saath. Ki ye lo, aap tiyari kar rahe the, abhi enjoy karo. So, you know, brothers and sisters, this is reality. So, you know, these are the prices. If you want to send a tent, a shelter towards Gaza, subhanAllah, people who have no homes left, they are living in, you know, they're, they're taking plastic sheets and they're trying to build tents from it. They, they take wood and they, and, and they, subhanAllah, place it over the wood and they try to make a tent, but it's not waterproof. It's still raining in there. And because the ground is just soil, it's just, it's zameena, it's, it's not, uh, you know, asphalt or anything like that. It becomes muddy. People have no toilets to subhanAllah go to to clean themselves and, and, and relieve themselves because they're so dirty. Women who have subhanAllah, uh, you know, periods that they need to care, take care of. You know, they need uh, hygiene uh, packs. So we can provide this to them. So all of these items are available. But we can just put it in front of you. We can just say, my brothers and sisters, these are the items that we are doing. Please donate generously. And then we have to wait. And I mean, 100 people come, we'll deliver 100 people worth of aid. If 1,000 people come, we will we'll deliver 1,000 people's aid. If 10,000 people come, then we'll deliver 10,000 people's aid. That's how it works. We are just the middle, the delivery partner. We take your sadaqah and we deliver it in Gaza. We can't deliver something that we don't have, right? So we need 
to take your donations and then deliver it in Gaza. And that's the reality. So my brothers and sisters, 03,000-999-786. Alhamdulillah, Mulana Huzaifa is at the Rafa border uh, in front of a truck. So let's go to the Rafa border. <laughs> yes, yes, Jazakallah. I wish I was at Rafa border and sending your aid in. Uh, but you know what? To get to Rafa border, it's a, it's a mission and a half. It's not easy because I have been to Rafa border. I have been inside Rafa border. I have been through Rafa border. I have been into Gaza, alhamdulillah. Not now, not in this war, uh, but, you know, a few years ago. And it was a challenge. You know, the, the, the journey of a couple of hundred kilometers from Cairo to Rafa border, which is, you know, 250 kilometers approximately, takes, you know, three, four days. And that's how much it takes. You have to sleep in the car. You know, there's, you know, you can't eat too much because there's no toilets or uh, readily available on the way. You know, there's no services or motorways and like we have here, you know. So it's, it's a very difficult journey to get to Rafa border. But you know what? Our aid, alhamdulillah, is reaching Rafa border. I, our aid is going through Rafa border. And alhamdulillah, we've had trucks upon trucks, mashallah. You know, what Imam Saab has said, you know, at least 250 odd trucks have gone into Rafa border. You know, 150 of them from the UK donors, mashallah. You know, from you guys, you have, mashallah, sent trucks upon trucks into Gaza. And like Harun just said, you know, he shared with you the, uh, the numbers. Even on 6th of October, when this war, before this war started, 7th of October, 8th of October, our trucks have been going in in those days. You know, Imam Saab the other day was sharing exact dates you know, when trucks had been going in on the day of the war, before the war. And, you know, we've had the hospital in Gaza, which we built in 2016, 17, 18. And every few days would have a truck of, you know, all the material for the hospital itself going in from Egypt for the hospital. So, you know, we have that record of sending trucks into Rafa border, into Gaza, through the Rafa border, you know, for, for the people of Gaza. And when this war started, like I've just said, and Imam Saab said, you know, even one day before our trucks had entered. Obviously for other reason, for food packs and other things, uh, you know, it's after then, you know, when, you know, they, they stopped aid and all of that, that people, you know, got, uh, people got to know that aid is not going in and, you know, all of that. But before that, alhamdulillah, trucks were going in and aid was going in. We have been sending, you know, other uh, you know, medical equipment like medical beds and all the equipment for the hospital had been going into Gaza previous to this September, October the 7th. So we've got that record, alhamdulillah. And even right now, during the war, you know, these uh, you know, 250 trucks that have gone in, over 250 trucks, 150 of them from you guys, from UK donors. This has all gone in during the war, whilst the war was going on, whilst the war is going on right now. And even if it's, go it's going in right now, Imam Saab just, you know, several days ago, he was in Jordan. You know, uh, he took a plane full of, you know, aid into Arish airport. And from Arish Airport, because they don't have facility to stock the st uh, stuff, all of those were loaded onto, the, the pallets were loaded onto a truck, and immediately they made their way to the border, not the Rafa border, the other border which is through Israel into Gaza. And they let that, they're letting that through, alhamdulillah, for whatever reason, their political reason, they wanted to show something, but, you know, they, they let that through, alhamdulillah, and it's gone into Gaza. And it's gone in faster than it would go in through the Rafa border. So there, alhamdulillah, our trucks and your aid, your food packs are going in. And we're not going to stop, my brothers and sisters, just because Ramadan, you know, it's uh, middle of Ramadan, coming to middle of Ramadan now. And even when Ramadan comes to an end, Ramadan, agar pura bhi ho jata hai, after two weeks, doesn't mean that our aid will stop going in, like many charities might do, because everyone is just hyped up in the month of Ramadan. You know, we have been sending aid in from the beginning of this war, before the war. And Alhamdulillah, we will continue sending the aid. Because the people of Gaza, the Gaza families, their situation is not going to change after Ramadan. They will be, still be hungry. In fact, according to the survey that have been shared to you by Harun, you know, recently, according to that survey and that poll and that uh, report, you know, they predict that after Ramadan, in a month's time, which is after Ramadan, after Eid, if the situation remains the same, 
i.e. the war keeps going on and aid is not going in that frequently and there's not many people who will send their aid in and the situation remains the same as it is right now then you will see people dying in hundreds because of starvation because of famine this is the report that they have predict this is their prediction of course what Allah knows everything Allah knows you know what's going to happen but the the prediction and the report has been done on the on the basis of the current situation on the current you know circumstances what is happening right now and based on that they can see that if that continues the same situation continues from the thousand trucks that are supposed to get in into Gaza only you know a hundred are going in or 50 are going in a daily is if the situation remains the same then the situation the the time will come in few weeks time in Gaza people will die because of starvation and because of famine that's subhanallah that's the you know unfortunate that's the unfortunate reality that's going to happen but you know what my brothers and sisters you know how many people are there in gaza 2.3 million people 2.3 million people individuals how many families are there that's about half a million 600,000 families you know the whole of uk we cannot feed 700,000 800,000 families of course we can we can inshallah you know every month we need to feed because these people just not one month of Ramadan remember this this effort is not for the month of Ramadan if it was just for the month of Ramadan why is our aid entering on the 7th of October 8th of October immediately after the war has started even before October so the 7th so this aid needs to continue and if it doesn't continue there will be mass death mass amount of people will die because of lack of food it comes down to this now brothers and sisters it comes down to food and water the bare the basic we're not looking at mansions we're not looking at villas we're not looking at houses forget about mansions only we're not looking at houses we're not looking at development at the moment this is about saving the lives of the people of palestine saving the lives of the people of gaza these food packs subhanallah will last them a month what's going to happen after a month they need another food pack well then what's going to happen after one more month they need another food pack they this needs to continue the food packs needs to keep on going day in day out every single day one day if it's a thousand food packs that's going to be a thousand families what about the others what about the others there's you know hundreds of thousands of families in gaza so we need to continue inshallah reaching out to as many people if they get a food pack for a month that's alhamdulillah them sorted at least for a month that's them out of danger out of starvation out of that famine that the, the phase the phase five which we talked about and bring them down into in a lower category that is to give them a little bit more time then off you know we need another food pack to them it needs to continue so don't think this appeal is for month of ramadan only this we are doing this in the month of ramadan we need to continue inshallah even after the month of Ramadan in fact majority of the time it's afterwards that people are in more in need because Ramadan may people are always generous alhamdulillah they give it but after Ramadan keep continuing inshallah keep donating mashallah uh, the numbers on the screen 03000 786 that's the number you need to call give food packs in 5 10 15 because people of Gaza need your support they need your food packs they need to be helped inshallah in this dire need of their time my brother sisters come forward inshallah we're going to go towards a very very short break inshallah after the break we will continue with the appeal during the break look at the documentaries as well some of these documentaries they give a lot of information about what is happening what are we are doing as well so watch them inshallah we'll see you after the break assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ਮਾਰਾ ਨਾ ਰਜ਼ੀਆ ਬੀਬੀ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਜਾਨੂ 
ਘਰ ਵੀ ਖਾਣਾ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਪ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਘਰ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਕੇ ਆਪਣਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਗੁਜ਼ਾਰਦੀ ਹਾਂ ਦੂਤਰ ਹਜ਼ਾਰ ਰੁਪਇਆ ਮੈਂ ਖੁਦ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਮੜੇ ਕਰ ਦਾ ਖਰਚਾ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੁਰਦਾ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਖੁਸ਼ ਨਹੀਂ ਰਹੀ ਬਾਈ ਸਾਰੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਸਾਥੀ ਦੀ ਗੁਜ਼ਾਰੀ ਦਾ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਘਰ ਕਾਬੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਕਪੜੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਿੱਟੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਹਨ ਪਾਂਡੇ ਵੀ ਤੋਤਨ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਘਰਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਝਾੜੂ ਵੀ ਮਾਰਨ ਹਰੀਬ ਜਨਾਨੀ ਹਮ ਕੋਈ ਮੜੇ ਸਰਾ ਤਾਂ ਛਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਛਤਰੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਆਸਰਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੜਾ ਕੋਈ ਮਾਮਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਤਤਰੀਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਔਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮੈਂ ਕਸਤ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਕਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਮਕੂ ਮਤ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਸਾਰਾ ਮਿਲੇ ਸਾਰਾ ਮਿਲਣਾ ਲਾ ਮੜਾ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੋਈ ਆ ਬੰਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਕੋ ਸਾਰਾ ਦੇਵੇ ਨਾ हम बहुत गरीब हैं हमारा कोई सहारा नहीं है मेरे अब्बू की डेथ हो गई है वो कई सालों से लापता थे हमने बचपन भी उनके बगैर गुजारा है और हमें पता है किन हालात में गुजारे और कैसे मुश्किलात का सामना किया है मेरी छोटी बहन बहुत बीमार है हमारे पास इतने पैसे नहीं है कि हम उनका इलाज करवाएं जिस तरह बाहर बारिश होती है उसी तरह हमारे घर के अंदर भी बारिश होती है और ये हमें पता है कि हम किस तरह वो रात गुजारते हैं जाग के गुजारते हैं रोते हैं अल्लाह से फरियाद करते हैं ताकि अल्लाह ताला हमारी मदद करे मैं आज नहीं आए तो कुर्सी पर के दिला ठू के अल्लाह आगे सब्र कर के बैठो हम के करन केड़े पास जुल सो हसो गला कर दे मैं शर्म आ जा जी ऐसे आते हैं रल के लोग आ गए अपने हाल बयान करा कोई इतनी नाल मदद नहीं करता कोई नहीं करता कैसा गया खाने के लिए एक वक्त की रोटी नहीं है हमने कई रातें भूखी गुजारी हैं फाके में गुजारी हैं ਅਲਾ ਇਹ ਅਲ ਖੈਰ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੀ ਤਰਫ ਸੇ ਰਮਜ਼ਾਨ ਦਾ ਪੈਕੇਜ ਆਪ ਕੇ ਲਈ ਹੈ ਇੱਜ਼ਤ ਦੇਵੇ ਭਾਈ ਅੱਲਾ ਦੀ ਜ਼ਾਤ ਤੇ ਸੰਗ ਇੱਜ਼ਤ ਦੇਵੇ ਅੱਲਾ ਤੇ ਸੰਗ ਰਜ਼ਾਤ ਅੱਲਾ ਰੰਗੇ ਰੱਖੀ ਜਾ ਮੁਹਤਰਮ ਹਵਤੀਨੋ ਹਜ਼ਰਤ ਇਹ ਅੱਜ ਹਮ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਹੈਂ ਰਜ਼ੀਆ ਬੀਬੀ ਕੇ ਪਾਸ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਬੇਵਾ ਖਾਤੂਨ ਹੈ ਜ਼ਿਲ੍ਹਾ ਮਾਨਸਰਾ ਮੇਂ ਇਹ ਰਹਤੀ ਹੈਂ ਨਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਮਾਨੇ ਵਾਲਾ ਹੈ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਆਮਦਨ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਜ਼ਰੀਆ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਇੰਤਹਾਈ ਗੁਰਬਤ ਦੀ ਹਾਲਤ ਮੇਂ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਗੁਜ਼ਾਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈਂ ਬੇਟੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਜੀ ਕਸਾ ਦੇ ਕਦੇ ਮਾਉ ਪੀ ਕੋ ਦਸਤੀਨ ਕੋਈ ਤੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਰਾਤ ਹੈ ਕਸਾ ਦਾ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਤਿੰਨ ਕਾ ਸ਼ਸਤਾਜ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਆਪ ਜਾ ਗਿਆ ਹਾਂ ਜਸਤੇ ਸਰ ਤਾਂ ਵੀ ਯਾਦ ਰਹਾ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਪੀ ਕੋ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੀ ਚੀਜ਼ ਕੇ ਨਾ ਗਿਆ ਪੈਸੇ ਕੇ ਨਾ ਗਿਆ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਇਹ ਸਵਾਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਸਜਾ ਕਾ ਸਜਾ ਕਰਾਂ ਅਸਤ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਇਸੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਾਥੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਲਰਜ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਸੀਬਤਾਂ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਗੁਜ਼ਰੀਆਂ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਜੋਂਪੀ ਨਮਾ ਘਰ ਹੈ ਇਨਕਾ ਅਲ ਖੈਰ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਇਲਾਕੇ ਦਾ ਸਰਵੇ ਕੀਤਾ ਥਾ ਜਹਾਂ ਪਰ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕੀ ਜੋ ਹੈ ਬਿਹਤਰ ਖਾਨਦਾਨ ਜੋ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਰਜਿਸਟਰ ਕੀਤੇ ਥੇ ਉਨ ਮੇ ਸੇ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਹੈ ਘਰ ਤੋਂ ਹਮਨੇ ਕਬੀ ਹਵਾਬੋਂ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇਖਾ ਥਾ ਕਿ ਹਮੇ ਬਣਾ ਕੇ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਜਬ ਅਲਹੇਰ ਵਾਲੇ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਘਰ ਆਏ ਥੇ ਤੋ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬੋਲਾ ਥਾ ਕਿ ਹਮ ਆਪਕੋ ਘਰ ਬਣਾ ਕੇ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਹਮੇ ਯਕੀਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਆ ਰਹਾ ਥਾ ਕਿ ਹਮਾਰਾ ਵੀ ਇਤਨਾ ਖੂਬਸੂਰਤ ਘਰ ਹੋ ਗਾ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਹਮੇ ਬਣਾ ਕੇ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਦਿਨੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਕੰਮ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਔਰ ਹਮਾਰਾ ਘਰ 10 ਦਿਨੋਂ ਮੇ ਬਨ ਗਿਆ ਔਰ ਰਮਜ਼ਾਨ ਮੇ ਬਨ ਗਿਆ ਈਦ ਆਪਣੇ ਨਏ ਘਰ ਮੇ ਕਰੇ ਔਰ ਖੁਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਕੇ ਸਾਥ ਮਨਾਏ ਆਪਣੀ ਹਮੇ ਖੁਦ ਯਕੀਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕਿ 10 ਦਿਨ ਮੇ ਹਮਨੇ ਇਹ ਇਤਨਾ ਖੂਬਸੂਰਤ ਘਰ ਕੈਸੇ ਬਣਾ ਲਿ
यकीन जानिए ये रजिया बीबी की दुआएं हैं और आप लोगों का अखलास है इस तरह लगता है यकीन मानो मुको इस तरह लगता है ए सीलन या दीवार या कमरे या ए खिड़कियां से मुकद्दर भी आसियां आसियां सही भरे वाला पाग सो इस टाइम में भी आन गए दीतियां और तो सम पैगाम पर आवां वास्ता जरिए बढ़ा गए दीती महल के अंदर मैं इमाम हूँ मस्जिद नहीं है हमारे पास खुले आसमान के नीचे एक जगह है जहाँ पे हम नमाज पढ़ते हैं मौसम के लिहाज से या सर्दी हो या गर्मी हो बारिश हो या बर्फ़ वगैरह हो तो फिर हमारे पास नमाज पढ़ने के लिए जगह नहीं होती मिल के सोच की थी कि यार असी थोड़ी जी मस्जिद क्यों ना तमीर करिए कि सारे असी मिल के पाँच वक्त जी नमाज मस्जिद तरीके ना अदा कर सकन तो जिस पे असन के बच्चे भी जो हैं तो वह भी तालीम भी कर तकरीबन पाँच छः साल हो गए जिसकी वजह तो ये काम तुरद है लेकिन रुक गया वसैल ना होने की वजह तो सबसे बड़ा मसाइल यहाँ रोड का है रोड हमारे से बहुत दूर है और वहाँ पर अगर हमने मटेरियल लाया तो उसको वहाँ बिछाते हैं फिर हम उधर को गदा गाड़ी या या घोड़ा वालों को एक चक्कर का हिसाब देते हैं 700, 500, 600 रुपया वो वहाँ से ला कर इस मस्जिद में वो पहुँचाते हैं तो इसके लिए हमें काफ़ी मुश्किल हैं हम लोगों को जमात से महरूम मस्जिद से महरूम बच्चों की भी वो तरबीत मस्जिद होगी तो तरबीत होगी मस्जिद होगी कोई जुमात आएगी कोई अल्लाह वाला आएगा कोई अच्छे लोग आएंगे बच्चों की तरबीत भी बनेंगे हमारे अनकम नहीं है हमारे गरीब लोग हैं यहाँ के लोग गरीब हैं इसके लिए हम मस्जिद को नहीं बना सकें क्योंकि इसका जो ये फरश बनाया हुआ है इसको बने हुए भी तकरीबन छः सात साल हो गए हैं इस्तात नहीं है किसी बंदे की ऐसी कि वो इतना ताउन कर सके कि हमारी मस्जिद बन जाए जब मौसम ख़राब हो जाता है तो फिर तो बच्चों की भी छुट्टी हो जाती है तो बूढ़े लोग भी जो हैं वो अपने घर के अंदर नमाज पढ़ते हैं अगर मौसम ठीक है तो फिर ऊपर टाट बिछाई तो हम पढ़ लेते हैं अगर मौसम में तरह भी गड़बड़ हुआ तो उस दिन हमारी न तराबी होती है न जमात होती है अल्लाह रब्बुल रबुल जिससे भी मस्जिद का काम ले ले हमारा अर्ज ये है कि मस्जिद हो जाए जितनी जल्द हो जाए हम रमज़ान शरीफ के अंदर भी नमाज तरावी अदा कर सकें नमाज तरावी के भी इस तरह के अहतमाम हम करते हैं कि खुले आसमान के नीचे किसी की छत देख ली या मतलब है कि कोई और सी जगह देख ली वहाँ पे चटाई वगैरह बिछा ली तो अपने नमाज तरावी अदा करते हैं इतकाफ़ करने के लिए भी हमें मसाइल का सामना करना पड़ता है क्योंकि हमारे पास बैठने की जगह नहीं तो हम छत नहीं है इतकाफ कैसे कर सकते हैं तो फिर जाम मस्जिद जो है वो बहुत दूर है बारिश आंधी तूफान आने जाने का मसाइल होते हैं उसमें जाकर ना हमें कोई अफ्तारी देने वाला होता है
ان الله بس بيقول يا رب In the face of adversity hope finds a way Despite challenges at the border we have a strong resolve that we will be getting our aid through to Gaza and here I am to show you Where there is no food available in Gaza people are starving people are dying in Gaza as we speak and your donations are saving their lives So far over 250 trucks have entered Gaza over a million meals in Gaza have been distributed this is because of your commitment and your dedication and your donations that we are able to do this Gaza, destruction everywhere. Where once used to stand someone's home, is now filled with debris from the disaster caused by constant bombing on innocent lives. with fatality everywhere. It's hard to know where step foot because every inch is covered by dead bodies. Spots of blood speak stories of horror seen or heard ever before. The atmosphere is heavy, with screams of people bereaving from losing their loved ones. The ones who live have their lives changed. because the emptiness will drown them in never lasting sorrows <laughs> 
Some footages are so sensitive we are unable to show our viewers the depth of this nightmare. But we must deliver the message across. Our donors have supported in these desperate times, and the people of Gaza will always remember your contribution. Yet, we have a long way to go, more to do, much to achieve for the people Gaza. May Allah protect the people of Gaza and ease their pain. May Allah accept their prayer and your support in Shadda. So save Gaza innocence. This next truck is full of uh, food packs and mashallah, you know, it only cost 50 pounds for one of these food packs. 50 pounds, my, my brothers and sisters, only. And this one full pallet has approximately, you know, 20 or 30 food packs, alhamdulillah. And this is now full to the brim, inshallah, and it will go into Gaza. The month of Ramadan starts, the people of Gaza will have, you know, suhoor and iftar to eat. Their month of Ramadan will start with the donation that you give. You know, their first suhoor will start with the donation and the food pack that you have given, alhamdulillah. This is such a great relief for the people of Gaza, inshallah. And remember, 250 trucks have already gone in to Gaza in the past couple of months, in the past few months. And now we are sending more trucks. So inshallah, keep donating 03000 786 and send as many food packs into Gaza the month of Ramadan. In a world full of darkness, where hope was so scarce, you emerged as a beacon, shining through despair. With hearts full of compassion, you made a choice to lend a helping hand. You donated, we delivered, in Ramadan's embrace. Together we've made a difference, spreading love and grace. Through your selflessness, we've touched lives anew. In this holy month, the power of kindness grew. For their doer is now your duty, a symphony of light, inspirational souls shining through the night. With every act of giving, we are changing the world, uniting hearts together like a flag unfurled. From the depths of your heart, you gave so generously, providing for the needy with humility. In the joy of breaking fast and the warmth of a prayer, we remember the blessings 
we are meant to share. For you, my dear friends, are the spark that ignites a world filled with hope where love takes flight. For their doer, a sacred plea is now your duty to fulfill all that can possibly be. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Respected viewers, brothers, sisters, welcome back to our appeal. Alhamdulillah for Gaza. You know, Alhamdulillah, we're going to continue, and uh, inshallah, we're going to continue throughout the month of Ramadan because Gaza is some something we cannot forget about. The people of Gaza are someone we cannot forget about. This is my brothers and sisters. This is going to be our target. This is going to be our focus. This is what we're going to be talking about, inshallah. Not only in Ramadan, even after Ramadan. Because this war has been going on for 169 days now. It's been going on. And people, the situation of people and the Gaza situation has gone from bad to worse. And after Ramadan, it is predicted that if the situation remains the same and nothing changes in terms of more aid going in and, and the war stops and people get some uh, you know get back to some kind of normality you know upon if that doesn't happen in this month in this month of ramadan in the next couple of weeks few weeks then the situation will get from worse to worse even worse because then people will start dying because of lack of food because of starvation you know the the organization the government organization had already predicted you know famine there it's already sort of, they're already, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are already in the same category, in that category, the highest level in the phase five. They phased it out into one, two, three, four, five. And five is the worst. And five is the criteria for a famine. And that's where, you know, half of the population of Gaza are right now. And if situation don't change, that's those hundreds of thousands of people which are nearly a million people in fact more than a million are going to be affected by this so famine in in gaza which means that people will start dying in big numbers my brothers and sisters we can you know put our small our small effort collective effort together and maybe if we can you know reach out to a thousand people two thousand people five thousand people or families, that's a drop in the ocean, my brothers and sisters. It may be, but at least we're reaching out. We're not, we're not just sitting there and thinking, subhanAllah, this is too much big of a problem. It's for government to um, you know, decide and to take care. We're not going to do it. We're, at least we're not saying that. And we're trying everything to get as much aid into Gaza as possible. Imam Saab is again on his uh, journey, and he's already you know, looking at diff other, uh, you know, another plane, for example, to get into Gaza, another avenue, another truck to get into Gaza, you know, because that's our effort, that's what we're going to do. And we're focusing on that, inshallah. You know, alhamdulillah, we have already sent millions and millions pound worth of aid into Gaza already, and we're going to continue, we, d we are determined to continue, inshallah, with our effort. You know, if you look at this small documentary I'm going to show you now, this is with regards to the situation, with regards to the food situation of the people of Gaza. Look at this documentary, inshallah, and then we'll come back. <laughs> يعني لما بس أنا بس ما صوت سواريخ كتير شديدة وقوية وبس ما سعفات ريحات جيات 
وبسمع ناس كتير بتصيحون بروح بطلع هيك بلاقي ناس صغيرة بيتا متقطعينه وناس عايشينه أنا عايشة مع ماما وبابا وإخواتي ويرسيد إحنا بنعيش في خيمة كتير صغير وما فيش فيها وسع حبيت وحدات من هادي كتير استشهدوا من صاحبك في ناس ما استشهدوا من هذا كل هذا مين بجاز النار؟ كل الوضع يا ستي صعب اليوم يا عالم ممكن تموت ويمكن تعيش ان شاء الله وباذن الله Ya Allah, my brother and sister, this is the, you know, the situation. This is just one family. And uh, this is how they're cooking and they're eating. Have you seen how simple look at the, sim the setup, the setup of the fire, the stove, the cooking, simple setup. And that's what they, this is all they need. They need food at the moment. Even if it's simple food, you know, they could, they're not asking for lavish parties simple food for them to get by every day you know the, the child is saying we don't know whether we're going to live or die which means that they don't know whether they're going to survive this or not you know imagine a child saying that imagine children you know confronting and just you know facing death and talking about dying subhanallah you know when our kids even say something Near enough that we stop them. Esibat Matkaro, don't say a thing like that. No, we stop them saying anything about you know getting hurt or dying or killing or things like that. You know, we keep them away from that. But these people on a daily basis they face, you know, this the child is saying, you know, my all my friends are dead. What does that what does that what effect does that have on a person, on a child? Seven year old girl, her friends are dead. Subhanallah, just that thought. So my brother and sister, subhanallah, we don't want more and more people to die. Those people who are dying from the attacks and the, you know, from the, from the injuries, all of that, maybe we cannot stop them. We cannot stop that because that's happening. We're not there. But there are people who are dying because of starvation. There are di people who are dying because of lack of food. And even if they're not dying, there are people who are hungry, who are thirsty. We can at least support them, my brothers and sisters. We can at least help them. At least we can go to their aid and we can say, you know, we are with you, we will support you, we will give you food, your food packs. Not just Ramadan, even after Ramadan. Make their life a little bit easier. At least relieve them from this one trouble, one difficulty of their life. Make it easy for them, my brothers and sisters. Dial the number 03000 That's the number to call, inshallah. I'll go over to Harun, inshallah. I was uh, just doing a calculation, and I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I'm shocked myself looking at the calculation I just made. Subhanallah. The calculation is that when we looked at the chart, and he said right now there's about 850 or so thousand people who are in category five yeah. catastrophe, which is also the same conditions for famine. But the only way famine will be declared is if out of every 10,000 people, two adults or four children are dying daily. Right? So I just made that calculation. 
You know what the daily number is for the minimum amount for, for, for subhanAllah, every day in Gaza they have to die for famine to be declared is for adults is 220 adults a day. And that's just from the 1 million because they are projecting every in the next month 1.1 million people and that's not even calculating the entire 2.3 million people. We are talking just yeah. about the 1.1 that are in that bracket. Yeah, yeah. If we just calculate 1.1 million, my brothers and sisters, we are going to have a family in Gaza. They are saying the conditions are met. The conditions are met. Maybe in a month's time, maybe in a month and a half. We are right now, the, right, the reason why they haven't categorized the category 5 as famine, but they have just they have written catastrophe instead, it was we are now in that period bet before a famine. And if the famine kicks in, that means not 220 people and 440 children, because either two adults or four children. That could mean either 220 adults are dying a day or 440 children a day are dying because of hunger. This is not, the famine when it's declared, is not that it's going to happen. That means it's already happening. You know, and then when I think back to Yemen, when I think back to uh, Iraq, you know how many people died in Iraq because of hunger? Because of starvation, malnutrition? 500,000 people. Allahu Akbar. In Iraq, 500,000 people died because of starvation and malnutrition. And a severe wasting. If, and now today when I think and look at this calculation, it makes sense. If every day 220 to 440 children are going to die every day, an Iraq war lasted how many years? It makes sense, my brothers and sisters, that subhanAllah, you know, these numbers don't lie. Allahu Akbar. This is what they have put in the definitions. If this is many people are dying every day, and the last time this was declared was in the south of Sudan in 2017. Since then, a famine has not been declared. But now the United Nations, UNRWA, and all these large organizations who have been doing these reports are saying to us that if we don't help and flood Gaza with aid right now, and the famine kicks in. The famine means that every day 220 adults are going to die Allah. or 440 children every day will be dying. Allah, Allah. That is shocking. That is, you know, it just shocking, subhanAllah. baffling. It just, subhanAllah, look at the amount. This is when we, why we are saying, my brothers and sisters, please donate now. Don't wait till tomorrow. We cannot wait till tomorrow. Allah. We have to wake up. And we don't have to, we have to maximize our efforts. You know, you can see next to Mulan Huzaifa, subhanAllah, a pallet, uh, an entire pallet. Yeah, there you are. You can send an entire pallet of food to Gaza on a plane for 5,000 pounds. And if you want to send it on a truck, it's cheaper. See, we have, we have, if we've given both possibilities. But the truck one is going to take a bit longer than the plane. The plane is going to be faster, that's why it costs more. So the food that we're taking on planes to Gaza, that food aid will, will get into Gaza well before the aid that will go by trucks. This is subhanAllah the situation on the ground, this is reality. We can only, you know, I wish I could say that no, both trucks and the planes go in at the same time, but I'm not going to lie to you. What I'm telling you is that the reason why Imam Saab and the team decided to go with the plane, even though it's more expensive, is because we are sure that we can get this aid in quicker. That's why we are ready to, set, to spend more money on each food pack. That's why, because we can see uh, on the ground the situation, we can see the hunger, and we don't want to save money here, we want to save lives. We're not here at al Khair Foundation saving money, we are here saving lives. And if we can save more lives by, by spending a little bit more per food pack, Alhamdulillah, we're going to do it because we know we have support from our donors. We know we have such donors available and ready to send subhanAllah pallets full of food. You know, I have in front of me, hey subhanAllah, I have, you know, subhanAllah, we, we talk about uh, a, a pallet. We had Fakra Kayyum, subhanAllah, who today at uh, 8 o'clock donated a truck, full of food, a truck full of food supplies to Gaza. A truck full of food supplies to Gaza. And this, my brothers and sisters, 
is what we have to do. We have to come together. And Alhamdulillah, so many of you are giving. We had Sultana Khan, she gave towards the Gaza Palestine appeal. We had Parveen Asghar, who gave towards the appeal. We have Suraya Chogli, who was given towards the Gaza appeal. We have, subhanAllah, Nahid Hussain, who's given towards the emergency appeal. SR Zuhri, Shamim Akhtar Rahi, Jigna Khan, Sirfraz Khan, Qurat Ul Ain Rana, Maryam Jaibur Khan was given. And we also had Zaheer Safi who was given. And now, right, subhanAllah, not long ago, 8, 10, 15, we had Najmeen Akhtar who was given. Zaheer Shafi has given. All of these people are people who are saying, let beg to the people of Al-Aqsa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bless you. And every penny that you have spent so far, my brothers and sisters, that is going to save lives. And you are, yes, you, you're transferring into the accounts of Al-Qaeda Foundation. Yes, you are giving it to al Qaeda Foundation, but my brothers and sisters, really, you have handed this money over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah in the Quran says, hasana. Who is going to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan? Kathira. So he can multiply it for him many, many folds. Look how important it is. Every day, 220 adults to 440 children have to die for a famine to be declared. And the head of the UN humanitarian Division, he was in Brussels, he made a statement, he said, famine is imminent in Gaza. You know what imminent means? Imminent doesn't mean it's, 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 it's you know, far away. Imminent means it's here, it's on don't doorstep. You know when, when you are going boarding a plane, right? He says boarding imminent. Because you're about to board it, you're there, on the, you're already in the, you've already checked in. You've already shown your passport. You are sitting, waiting for them to enter you into the plane, to board you onto the plane. That's why it says boarding imminent. When we are saying famine imminent, that means it's not because it's going to happen in, in subhanAllah five, six months time. It means it's at a doorstep. The fact that 440 children a day or 220 adults a day minimum will die each day is unacceptable to us. So you, my brothers and sisters, I know this is un, as unacceptable to you as it to us. But I, I, I can only say this because we are your delivery partner. Unfortunately, we don't have a money tree that we can pull up the money off and use that money to send aid. Because if we could, we would. But this is the reality that we have to ask you. We have to fundraise. We have to sit here and we have to appeal from your generous selves. That you can come forward and you give in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you spend on, on in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the least that we can do. You know, we don't have to look too far in the Quran to see where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. In fact, I invite you, just open the Quran and turn the first saf. On one side of the Quran, you're going to see Surah Fatiha, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 you know, is, is speaking about you know, Surah Fatiha and the translation, you can read it yourself. And then on the other side, my brothers and sisters, we have Surah Baqarah. And what's Surah Baqarah? The first few ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, Allah Akbar. Allah did not wait five, six chapters to mention this. In the first few verses of Surah Baqarah, and by the way, yes, I know Surah Baqarah was not the first verse revealed, the first surah revealed, but the order of the Quran is precise as well. The order of the Quran is, is according to the guidance. The reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the messenger has, has, has put this together in this manner is because it's the manner of guidance. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide us in this specific order. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is placing surah, surah Baqarah straight after surah Fatiha, the opening surah, then the second surah, on the first page, the first few verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, This book in which there is no doubt, a guidance for the muttaqeen. And then Allah just explains straight away, who are the muttaqeen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the, mut, the muttaqi is the one, alladheena yu'minuna billahi, alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. Those who believe in the unseen, yani Allah is unseen, isn't it? We can't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we believe in Him. So Allah, we, we believe in the unseen. وَأَقِيمُ salata And they establish their prayer. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ the third when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the third quality of the ta'rif and the ta'aruf of a muttaqi person is they spend from that which we, yani Allah provided. 
So we don't have to go far into the Quran trying to find ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to spend. Allah in the very very few verses of Surah Baqarah has made it very clear that if you want to be from those the muttaqoon and the muttaqeen, then be from those people who spend in his path from that which Allah provides them. And Allah in his verse, you know they say two stones, one, one stone, two birds, right? That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does in this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always also talks about spending but also speaks about where this money has come from. Where this money has come from, my brothers and sisters, and it has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is telling us the money that I've given to you, if you spend that money in the path of Allah, you become part of those people who are the muttaqeen, those who are God conscious and God fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, right now, if we believe in this ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you believe in the promises of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we can feel the pain of our brothers and sisters, donate towards food packs. And if you can't, and if you can give more than food packs, go for an entire pallet. And if you can go more than a pallet, go for an entire truck. Because people in front of me here, I have people who are giving entire trucks. Subhanallah. subhanallah. I have people who are giving entire pallets. We have people who are giving entire iftar meals and the cooked meals. We have people who are giving towards subhanallah, all kinds of projects inside Gaza and outside of Gaza. MashaAllah. So let's come together and let's continue. Alhamdulillah, we have Mulana Huzaifa Saab here as well. We have, you know, Shah Saab also on the stage. And inshallah soon we will also come to Shah Saab because we want to, you know, after last, uh, the last kalam, we woke up. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, after, you know, an hour, it's gone uh, back to, uh, we're going back to sleep. So we need to wake up again as well, inshallah. And I think now the, the men have returned. Uh, the, um, the, now that men have returned back from the um, from Taraweeh as well, we need to inshallah um, get the entire family together. Tomorrow is the weekend, and you know we're not going to be sleeping very soon anyway. Uh, you know, in a couple of hours' time is going to be iftar time. Uh, it's going to be suhari time. Sorry. Um, so. Uh, yes, mashallah, my brothers and sisters, we can get together as a family in your home and discuss because you know what we were talking about before the break. If you didn't um, listen, subhanallah, if you didn't, uh, if you forgot, is that subhanallah, if you know, looking at the circumstances, what the situation is happening um, in Gaza, if Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to come here and ask and you were able to speak to him, what would what, 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 what discussion? Or what would you say to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is what we, we were discussing. And you know what? I, I don't think so we would have much to say. Except for the fact that we have failed him and we have failed his ummah. Because the situation of Gaza, the situation in Gaza is such, we cannot face anyone. We cannot face the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahu Akbar. You know, it's, it's really bad that, you know, there's three million people here in the UK there's two million people in uh, Palestine and we are not able to feed them. Allah. We're not able to, you know, and they have to die because of starvation. They have to die because of lack of food. They, we, you know, they have to die and live in condition like you just saw in the video, live in those conditions, subhanAllah. So, you know, think about what I just said. Think about that. Ask yourself the question. We're not asking for answers. I'm just saying, Ask yourself the question and think, what would you say? You know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked you about Gaza, what would you say? What's the comment that you would have? Truly, honestly speaking, what is it that you could say to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if you were asked right now by him, what have you done for Gaza? Subhanallah. So, my brothers and sisters, it's, uh, you know, it's really a bad situation. And I hope that you know, you're here with your, uh, you know, everyone is here in the UK. Um, they are now you know, back from Taraweeh and everything. Discuss with your families, discuss with your children. What can we do for Gaza, inshallah? And we're gonna go over to Shaji, inshallah, um, listen to him. And maybe whilst that time, you can think about what I just uh, spoke to you about. Ji. بہت شکریہ شیخ حضرفہ صاحب اللہ پاک سلامت رکھے آپ ماشاءاللہ کافی دیر سے لوگوں کو اس طرف متوجہ کر رہے ہیں اور یقیناً اس پہ بھی اللہ کا بہت بڑا عجر ہے 
لوگوں کو ترغیب دینا لوگوں کو نیکی کی طرف لوگوں کو صدقات کی طرف لوگوں کو عطیات کی طرف لوگوں کو لوگوں کے ساتھ بھلائی کی طرف آمادہ کرنا ابھارنا تیار کرنا یہ بھی میں سمجھتا ہوں بہت بڑا کار خیر ہے اللہ کریم ہماری زبان میں اثر پیدا فرما دے آپ کی زبان میں اثر پیدا فرما دے اور اللہ پاک اثر کیوں نہیں فرمائیں گے پیدا کیونکہ ہم اپنی ذات کے لیے تو نہیں ہم ان دکھی انسانیت کے لیے ان مظلوم بچوں کے لیے جن کی ڈاکومنٹری آپ نے دیکھی یقین کریں جب یہ مناظر دیکھتے ہیں تو دل پھٹنے کو آتا ہے یعنی کیفیات عجیب ہو جاتی ہیں جذباتی ہو جاتا ہے انسان لیکن ہم اللہ کے حضور دعا کرتے ہیں آپ عبادات کر کے آئے ہیں ابھی تراوی کی نماز سے آپ فارغ ہوئے ہیں تو ماشاء اللہ کتنا عظیم اور نیکی والا کام آپ نے کیا ہے یقیناً آپ ان کے لیے دعائیں کرتے ہوں گے رو رو کے ہماری مائیں بہنیں بزرگ ہاتھ اٹھاتے ہوں گے ان کے لیے دعا کے لیے تو دعا کے ساتھ ساتھ ان کے لیے دوا بھی کرنی ہم ان اور دوا کیسے ہوگی کہ ہم ان کے لیے ڈونیشن کریں فوڈ پیک کی صورت میں ان تک تعاون جتنا ممکن ہو سکے زیادہ سے زیادہ پہنچے آئیے ایک خوبصورت نعت مظفر وارسی کے لکھے ہوئے اشعار میرے دل میں آ رہے تھے برکت کے لیے پڑھتا ہوں اور اس نیت کے ساتھ پڑھتا ہوں کہ ہمارے آقا نبی اکرم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم جو پورے عالمین پورے جہانوں کے لیے اللہ نے رحمت بنا کے بھیجے اور شاعر کا انداز بھی دیکھیے اور آپ بھی سنیے اور اللہ کرے ہمارے دل اور نرم ہو آقا کی نعت پاک کو سن کر اور ہم اور زیادہ دینے والے بن جائیں ان شاء اللہ اللہم صلی علی سیدنا مولانا محمد مبارک وسلم صلی علی اپنی رحمت کے سمندر میں اتر جانے دے اپنی رحمت کے سمندر میں اتر جانے دے میرے طیبا والے اپنی رحمت کے سمندر میں اتر جانے دے بے ٹھیکانا بے ٹھیکانہ ہو ازل سے بے ٹھیکانہ ہو ازل سے مجھے گھر جانے دے اپنی رحمت کے سمندر میں اتر جانے دے میرے طیبا والے اپنی رحمت کے سمندر میں اتر جانے دے موت پر میری شہیدوں کو بھی رش کائے گا موت پر میری موت پر میری شہیدوں کو بھی رش کائے گا اپنے قدموں پیارے قدموں سونے قدموں سے لپٹ کر مجھے مر جانے دے اپنے قدموں پیارے قدموں سے لپٹ کر مجھے مر جانے دے بے ٹھیکانہ بے ٹھیکانہ ہو ازل سے بے ٹھیکانہ ہو ازل سے مجھے گھر جانے دے اپنی رحمت کے سمندر میں اتر جانے دے خواہش ذات بہت ساتھ دیا ہے شیزات خواہش ذات 
साथ बहुत साथ दिया है तेरा अब जिधर मेरे मुहम्मद है उधर जाने दे अब जिधर मेरे मुहम्मद है उधर जाने दे बेटी काना बे ठिकाना हो अजल से मुझे घर जाने दे अपनी राह के समर में उतर जाने दे मेरे तैबा वाले अपनी राह के समर में उतर जाने दे जाती है हवाए बतगा बतगा लिए जाती है हवाए तैबा बुए दुनिया बुए दुनिया मुझे गुम रा ना कर जाने दे बुए दुनिया बुए दुनिया मुझे गुम रा ना कर जाने दे बे ठिकाना बे ठिकाना जल से मुझे घर जाने दे अपनी राह के समर में उतर जाने दे रो के रिजवा ना मुजफर को डरे जन पर रोक रिजवा ना मुजफर को दरे जन्नत पर रोक रिजवा रोक रिजवा ना मुजफर को दरे जन्नत पर मोहम्मद का है मंजूर रे नजर जाने दे ये मोहम्मद ये मोहम्मद का है मंजूर रे नजर जाने दे बे ठिकाना बे ठिकाना हो अजल से मुझे घर जाने दे अपनी राह के समर में उतर जाने दे ताज मंगा न मैं मंगदा मैनू जर मिल जाए बस अपनी राह के समर में उतर जाने दे बे ठिकाना बे ठिकाना हो अजल से मुझे घर जाने दे बस अपनी राह के समर में उतर जाने दे
What a beautiful, what a beautiful, mashallah. Ah. Great words, subhanallah. Let us drown in the mercy, subhanallah. In the ocean of your mercy, Allah. You know, this is what my brother said, the, the month of Ramadan. You know, Allah, this is the Allah. time when we need to drown in the mercy of Allah subhanahu yes, wa ta'ala. Yes. You know, what a beautiful, mashallah. And I hope that you all loved it and that you all appreciate, you know, the beautiful words here sung by Shahji, mashallah. My brothers and sisters, mashallah, you've heard that and I hope you are awake and ready, inshallah. Because what we are here is we need to shower the mercy upon the people of Palestine, upon the people of Gaza. Absolutely. You know, and yes. subhanallah, you know, when you come mercy, this is about having mercy. Having mercy upon what the, the on, upon the people of Gaza. You know, what what are they are going through? And before the the naat, before the uh, what uh, Shahji said, the kalam, you know, I, I, I asked you a question, subhanallah. You know, if you were to you were asked by Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what have you done for the people of Gaza? What would be your what would be your answer? What would be your thoughts? What would you say? Have you done something? Have you done enough? Have you done more than enough? Or have you, will you be just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we couldn't do anything. You know, we couldn't do anything for the people of Gaza. There were babies dying. There were, you know, toddlers dying. There were infants dying. There were children dying. In hundreds, thousands. In hundreds, thousands, subhanallah, children dying. But we could not do anything, Ya Rasulullah. What is going to be our answer? My brothers and sisters, think about this. I'm not asking for a question. This is for you to ask yourself and answer for yourself. And if you think you've done enough, alhamdulillah. Look at what the Sahaba Ikram did. They sacrificed their lives, their homes, their gardens, their wealth, their entire wealth. At Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, at the time of Ghazwa Tabuk, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was doing appeal. Bring what you can for the battle. Everyone is coming, bringing whatever they could. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala bring, brought half of his wealth. Everything that he had, he left half. Sorry, he brought everything. At Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he brought half of his wealth. Allah. Half of his wealth. And he presented to Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, what have you brought, Ya Umar? Ibn Khattab, he said, I bought, ha I bought half of my wealth. You know, whatever I had, I have half for Fi Sabilillah, and I have half left for my family. He asked Abu Bakr, what have you brought? He said, I brought everything that I had. Allah, Allah. I brought everything that I had. Subhanallah. So what have you left for your family? He said, Taraktullah wa Rasulah. Subhanallah. I have left only Allah and His Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. These are the you know, the Qurbaniya and the sacrifices that Sahaba Kiram gave. And this is, subhanAllah, for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for this deen, for this ummah. My brothers and sisters, we ask ourselves what we have done for this ummah. For the ummah which is dying at the moment, what have we done? We'll go over to... SubhanAllah, and even in that story, beautiful, powerful story, it was, you know, Umar radiallahu anhu, because at the time there was a bit of a famine in Medina, I believe, and, and yeah. they were finding it difficult with, 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 with money-wise. And Umar thought to himself, this time I'm going to beat Abu Bakr. Yeah. And he, came, he went with that intention, that today I'm going to Abu Bakr. And he brought half of his wealth in the, in the, in the presence of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But when he saw Abu Bakr with all of his wealth, he thought, I can never beat Abu Bakr, oh, Siddiq. Yes, I can never surpass this man. Because, you know, these people, they understood the purpose in this world. And that was... The Akhirah. That was Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was, that was their life. And uh, subhanAllah, today my brothers and sisters, Nare to bot lagate hum, right? Baate to bot karte hum. Bagar amal us pe kitna hota hai, ye sawaal hai. You know, how much do we act upon those things that we say? We say we love Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than our mothers and fathers. We say, we say this, but when the time will come to prove it, will we be able to prove it? And when I say when the time will come, this is the time to prove it. The people of Gaza are dying every day. And there's a fear, my brothers and sisters, that a famine will kick in Gaza in the, over the next month or two. They say before June 15, if the, if, if the course carries on, the famine will already have started. If not sooner, next month, they are fearing in April, May, 
mid of May, they are fearing the famine will start. And when the famine starts, my brothers and sisters, every day, for, the, for them to use the official word famine, out of every 10,000 people, two adults or four children need to be dying daily. And if you calculate it, not from the two million, that would be, subhanAllah, much larger numbers. I'm just calculating from 1.1 million people who would be in a bracket of famine. So they've classified the amount of people in Gaza into different brackets. And in the bracket of catastrophe, which is the same bracket as famine, but they haven't you named it famine yet, because for famine, again, you need to, every day, two adults or four children out of every 10,000 people need to be dying. And if you calculate that, two adults out of every 10,000 means just for a million, that's 220 adults a day. That's 440 children a day. A day. 440 times in 10 days, that's 4,400. In 20 days, it's 8,800. In 100 days, it's 10,000. Subhanallah, subhanallah. In 100 days, uh, subhanallah, in, 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 in 10 days, this is subhanAllah reality on the ground, my brothers and sisters. We all have to wake up and we have to start giving like we've never given before. We all have to respond in a way like we've never responded before. Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are subhanAllah aware about the situation in Gaza. They are aware because those shuhada, those shuhada, do you know they're going to the barzakh? Do you know they become shuhada and they are like birds? And who are they flying with? Which shuhada are they flying with? Subhanallah, you know, they say a shaheed becomes a bird in Jannah. You know, you know, these birds, you know, they are flying in Jannah. You know, subhanallah, you know, who are, the, who are they flying with? Some of these are, subhanallah, the, 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 the people, the sahaba, radiallahu anhu, who became ah, birds. Allah Akbar. You know, imagine that. They are flying with the sahaba. They are flying with the shuhada of Badr, the shuhada of, uh, of, of, of Uhud, the shuhada of Khandaq, the shuhada of all of these great battles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people, the subhanallah, birds they are flying with. These are the people they are resting with. These are the people they are chilling with. So they are in a place much better than ours, my brothers and sisters. But those people who are left behind, and if, if, if famine will start to happen, my brothers and sisters, these people will go from this world. Or Barzak may in the Akhirah, they're going to be talking to the people of the Akhirah. What are they going to say? When, when they're going to ask, what, you know, what happened? How did you give up your life in, in the path of Allah? And they're going to say, uh, they, they say, they're going to say, which battle was it? They're going to say, you know, where did you fight? And they say, we didn't fight anyone. We starved to death. They're going to say, we starved to death because we had no food available. And then maybe they will ask, is there no food available in the world anymore? They're going to say, no, there's plenty of food available. Mm -hmm. But just the piece of land that we were, we were in. And they're going to say, which piece of land were you from? They're going to say, we were from Ardul Muqaddasa. We are from Majid Al-Aqsa. We are the people of Al-Aqsa. Imagine what the Sahaba are going to think. Imagine what the people of the hereafter are going to think about us. That this is how they are Muslims. Our Muslims are dying and dying on the land of Al-Aqsa. भूख से मर रहे हैं चलो बम से जो मर रहे हैं वो तो समझ आ रही है कि इज़राइल मार रहा है उनको जो भूख से मर रहे हैं और हमारे पास बैंक अकाउंट में हजार हजार पौन पड़े हैं और अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह लोग आ रहे हैं यू नो वी जस्ट हैड मोहम्मद रशीद हु हैज गिवन 1000 पाउंड्स टुवर्स द गाज़ा अपील सुभानअल्लाह वी हैव सुभानअल्लाह मोइन अख्तर हु हैज गिवन 100 पाउंड्स टुवर्स द अपील we have Najmeen Akhtar who has given also subhanAllah hundreds of pounds towards the appeal. We have Zaheer Shafi again who has given towards you know, all of these people. Wallahi, you are people of Allah. You are people who are, who are believing in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has taken your money and He is going to look after that money. Because yes, the physical is with us and we're going to buy food and distribute it. But the, but the actual, you know, subhanAllah, the, the spiritual part of it is going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is going to keep increasing this for you. So my brothers and sisters, 03000-999-786 is the number. Straight away, pick up those phones. Go on the website and donate. If you have cash, if you have cash that you want to donate and you can't go on the website, you can't call, no worries. We have branch, branches up down the country. If you are in London, we've got a branch in East London by the East London Masjid. In, in Croydon, we have a head office. 
subhanallah and then on pit lake and then when you go towards birmingham on ladypool road we have an office you go towards leicester and evington valley road we have a, a subhanallah a, a, a branch you go to bolton right opposite majid, majid uh, zakaria we have a branch you go towards bolton uh, sorry bradford on the big round uh, roundabout when you just come up the motorway we have a uh, subhanallah our branch there go towards glasgow i believe it's manchester road i've got the name exactly we have a branch in glasgow <coughs> alhamdulillah brothers and sisters we have these branches for you so you can go to them and you can visit them and you can donate to them and if you are elderly and you can't for example go to the branch yourself you know call the branch you'll find the numbers on on our website call them they'll come to your house they'll pick up the sadaqa from you you haven't got it easier you can't get it easier than this the only easier way would be you know subhanallah that us we come to your house and we pick up the money for you and we walk out but that's impossible <laughs> you know if you start doing that uh, you know we're going to be here next year and subhanallah you know we only have collected about five food packs so it's going to take a very long time that's why we need your support in this we need you to give in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah in the quran actually says you know, Allah actually says in the Quran, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً Take from their wealth sadaqah. You know, if we wanted to act upon the ayah, we'd have to come to your house and take your sadaqah. But we can't do that. So we are relying and we are hoping in your generosity. Mulan sahab, you know, we're going to go on a break, you know, final rem remarks. Yes, absolutely. Keep donating. That's why I say yes, you know, and all the avenues are available to you. Uh, but the most uh, uh, easiest one is to dial the number on the screen, 03000 and say you want to donate how many food packs and make a donation there, inshallah. We're going to go towards the break, inshallah, and after the break, we'll continue. Stay with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> In the holy month of Ramadan's grace, a call echoes through time and space. For compassionate souls, gather round. Let's build a haven where blessings abound. A mosque, a sanctuary we seek to raise. A place of solace, a beacon ablaze. A haven for hearts, seeking divine peace. Where weary souls find solace and release. In this sacred month, Let's heed the call, extend our hands, together stand tall, for every brick, a symbol of devotion, a testament to faith and pure emotion. Let your generosity flow like a gentle stream, illuminate lives, make dreams gleam. In this season of reflection and prayer, unite as one, humanity's burdens we share. For in giving, we find blessings untold, a journey of kindness, a story yet unfold. For the mosque we build, a sanctuary shall rise, a place of worship where spirits arise, where hearts find solace, souls intertwine, in the embrace of faith, a love so divine. Let compassion guide us, illuminate the way. Together, we'll build a mosque, come what may. Let's donate and help build this sacred space where unity and love find their rightful place. May our hearts be filled with gratitude and awe as we aid in fulfilling God's holy law. In this blessed month, let's strive to be the change we wish in this world to see. For in giving, we receive blessings untold. Let's build a mosque and watch it unfold. of Palestine, where hope is thin, we reach out our hands, let the giving begin. With the Alcare Foundation, you donated with kindness, you showed your care, now let us assure you, we'll deliver it there. So trust in us, trust in Alcare Foundation, with every pack donated, with every prayer, we'll bring a little light, a little love, in Palestine we share.
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ناصرین اکرا نیوز میں آپ کا خیر مقدم ہے میں ہوں علی ہارون شامل کریں گے سب سے پہلے نیوز ہیڈ لائنز full of gratitude we conquer our fears a time of reflection of faith and devotion we seek his mercy his eternal compassion amidst the fasting and the whispers of prayer a thought arises a concern we all share for there are those in this world so vast who struggle each day their hardships unsurpassed with a thoughtful tone Let us come together to spread love and kindness to make life better. A simple act to touch a soul in need, to provide them with nourishment, a humble deed. In every corner where difficulty resides, lies an opportunity where hope coincides. With open hearts, let us prepare a food pack to uplift those souls, to bring smiles back. In this blessed month, let's extend our hand to share our blessings, to understand that a small gesture, a meal to savor, can bring joy to someone's life, a moment forever. With grains of rice and pulses so pure, we fill the packs with love and care secure. Dates, a symbol of our fast break, to nourish the body, a sweetness to party as we distribute these packs with hearts at low into humble homes where hardships flow ramadan's true essence lies not just in fasting but in how we nourish souls everlasting so let our thoughtful tones echo through each day as we donate food packs lighting the way Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, you have seen last night uh, the packaging that was going on here. Alhamdulillah, there are uh, lorries upon lorries here. Uh, big lorries, mashallah, and some of the small trucks have arrived. Uh, mashallah, we're loading the final uh, pallets. Uh, there are uh, only, I would say, three, four pallets remaining, four pallets further. And after that, we are ready to go to the airport, inshallah. So Alhamdulillah, we have managed to fit uh, all the pallets on three lorries. Um, when you see uh, lorries entering into Gaza um, through Rafa crossing, uh, some of the lorries you see with banners and this and that, how the packaging is done, you can see here, inshallah, today. Obviously, um, for the safety of the boxes and safety of the stock, uh, we don't put pallets upon pallets. Um, but certain consignment uh, go in two layers basically uh, but this one because of heavy boxes uh, is single pallet uh, load mashallah so uh, alhamdulillah uh, there is one lorry which will be packed you can say uh, and there are two lorries there which are basically open lorries alhamdulillah so mashallah brothers and sisters alhamdulillah uh, Uh, we will be going from here to the airport, uh, loading this uh, stock uh, on the aircraft, inshallah, and um, uh, then hopefully, inshallah, uh, we will take the aircraft uh, from here, from Jordan, to uh, Gaza border. Uh, nearest airport is Arish, and um, uh, then f uh, from Karam Abu Salim uh, uh, area. Uh, Other lorries will enter from there, and uh, this will enter through, uh, mashallah, um, uh, Karam Abu Salim, and so on. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone uh, because um, these three, four lorries are going by air cargo and there is more stock inside uh, that is going inshallah uh, by the road so on. So Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you. Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we are trying our best to deliver in uh, Gaza on daily basis. Subhanallah, you know, uh, I cannot express um, my appreciation and my frustration, both. Uh, appreciation uh, for your generosity and kindness. Uh, Alhamdulillah, well over five million dollars have been transferred from UK to the supplier companies um, to purchase the stock. Uh, to the supplier companies. This is from the UK. Uh, other transfers from other our international offices, that is additional uh, payments uh, uh, to our international offices or suppliers directly by our partner organizations, that is separate. Um, more than uh, this, basically, more than the uh, contribution of UK uh, is the contribution of international partners, possibly uh, two or three times more. So, mashallah, our delivery into Gaza um, has crossed already uh, maybe 12, 13 million dollars, possibly 15 million dollars. Uh, I haven't calculated on that side, but from UK, uh, because I am responsible, uh, mashallah, for UK contribution directly, not responsi responsible for uh, all donations, but uh, keeping calculation of uh, UK transfers, from UK over 5 million dollars have been transferred, mashallah. So, Jazakumullah al-Khair, uh, mashallah, this is the uh, last two pallets going in now. Before, I have seen one lorry going or basically uh, part of the lorry going at a time and so on. But uh, this one is full consignment going, uh, mashallah, from the warehouse um, altogether. So, subhanallah, uh, there have been other conveys before. Uh, from our Cairo warehouse in which 10-15 uh, lorries went in but I personally was not present over there. I have seen large conveys, uh, personally myself, inside Syria uh, where basically huge conveys were distributed. But for Gaza during this war, subhanAllah, uh, we have taken whole aircraft uh, from Jordan to, uh, to uh, closer to Gaza airport, mashallah. Uh, so, subhanallah is amazing, mashallah. This is everything uh, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of our donors, mashallah, uh, the, the way they have contributed. Taking it by aircraft in this manner means uh, quickest uh, delivery and shortest waiting time uh, because the stock which is arriving at the airport. Uh, tend to enter quickly. Now, because these lorries have, you can say, exactly uh, what goes on the list. Uh, so, inshallah, there are very less chances of any delays because all the stock is same in all the lorries and so on. There is not mixture of, you can say, food supplies and medical supplies and household items or other items and so on. So, there isn't that much of so this is the last pallet goal, mashallah. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward and bless everyone. Jazakumullah khair. I just request everyone, mashallah, try to donate uh, as best as you can. Um, you know, subhanallah, there are uh, about uh, 35 to 40 boxes um, uh, on uh, each pallet, mashallah. Uh, so subhanallah, um, I wish that uh, somebody uh, can donate whole pallet, inshallah. So total 36 boxes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the efforts, inshallah. So now we are getting ready to move in, inshallah. Allah 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, you have seen last night uh, the packaging that was going on here. Alhamdulillah, there are uh, lorries upon lorries here. Uh, big lorries, mashallah, and some of the small trucks have arrived. Uh, mashallah, we're loading the final uh, pallets. Uh, there are uh, only, I would say, three, four pallets remaining, four pallets further. And after that, we are ready to go to the airport, inshallah. So, alhamdulillah, we have managed to fit uh, all the pallets on three lorries. Um, when you see uh, lorries entering into Gaza um, through Rafa crossing, uh, some of the lorries you see with banners and this and that, how the packaging is done, you can see here, inshallah, today. Obviously, um, for the safety of the boxes and safety of the stock, uh, we don't put pallets upon pallets. Um, but certain consignment uh, go in two layers basically uh, but this one because of heavy boxes uh, is single pallet uh, load mashallah so uh, alhamdulillah uh, there is one lorry which will be packed you can say uh, and there are two lorries there which are basically open lorries alhamdulillah so mashallah brothers and sisters alhamdulillah uh, uh, we will be going from here to the airport, uh, loading this uh, stock uh, on the aircraft, inshallah, and um, uh, then hopefully, inshallah, uh, we will take the aircraft uh, from here, from Jordan, to uh, Gaza border. Uh, nearest airport is Arish, and um, uh, then uh, from Karam Abu Salim uh, uh, area, uh, other lorries will enter from there, and uh, this will enter through, uh, mashallah, um, uh, Karam Abu Salim and so on. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless everyone, uh, because um, these three, four lorries are going by air cargo, and there is more stock inside uh, that is going, inshallah, uh, by the road, and so on. So Jazakumullah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you. Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we are trying our best to deliver in uh, Gaza on daily basis. Subhanallah, you know, uh, I cannot express um, my appreciation and my frustration, both. Uh, appreciation uh, for your generosity and kindness. Uh, alhamdulillah, well over five million dollars have been transferred from UK to the supplier companies um, to purchase the stock uh, to the supplier companies. This is from the UK. Uh, other transfers from other our international offices, that is additional uh, payments uh, uh, to our international offices or suppliers directly by our partner organizations, that is separate. Um, more than uh, this, basically, more than the uh, contribution of UK uh, is the contribution of international partners, possibly uh, two or three times more. So, mashallah, our delivery into Gaza um, has crossed already uh, maybe 12, 13 million dollars, possibly 15 million dollars. Uh, I haven't calculated on that side, but from UK, uh, because I am responsible, uh, mashallah, for UK contribution directly, not responsi responsible for uh, all donations, but uh, keeping calculation of uh, UK transfers, from UK over 5 million dollars have been transferred, mashallah. So, Jazakumullah al-Khair, uh, mashallah. This is the last two pallets going in now. Before, I have seen one lorry going, or basically uh, part of the lorry going at a time, and so on. But uh, this one is full consignment going, uh, mashallah, from the warehouse um, altogether. So, subhanallah, uh, there have been other convoys before uh, from our Cairo warehouse in which uh, 10, 15 lorries went in. But I personally was not present over there. I have seen large convoys, uh, personally myself, inside Syria, uh, where basically huge convoys were distributed. But for Gaza during this war, subhanAllah, uh, we have taken whole aircraft uh, from Jordan to, uh, to uh, closer to Gaza airport, mashallah. Uh, so subhanallah is amazing mashallah this is everything uh, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala
and because of our donors, mashallah, uh, the, the way they have contributed, taking it by aircraft in this manner means uh, quickest uh, delivery and shortest waiting time. Uh, because the stock which is arriving at the airport uh, tend to enter quickly. Now, because these lorries have, you can say, exactly uh, what goes on the list. Uh, so, inshallah, there are very less chances of any delays because all the stock is same in all the lorries and so on. There is not mixture of, you can say, food supplies and medical supplies and household items or other items and so on. So there isn't that mashallah. So this is the last pallet goal, mashallah. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward and bless everyone. Jazakumullah khair. I just request everyone, mashallah, try to donate uh, as best as you can. Um, you know, subhanallah, there are uh, about uh, 35 to 40 boxes um, uh, on uh, each pallet, mashallah. Uh, so subhanallah, um, I wish that uh, somebody uh, can donate whole pallet inshallah. So total 36 boxes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and bless you. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the efforts inshallah. So now we are getting ready to move in inshallah. أشرقت نفسي بنور من فؤادي حينما رددت يا رب العباد وانتشت روحي وصار الدمع يجري يا إلهي خذ بقلبي للرشاد الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا شريك له ولا نظير له ولا مثال له ولا مثيل له ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا وحبيبنا وحبيب ربنا وطبيبنا وطبيب قلوبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
സ്വദക്കൊല്ലാഹുമ ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين محترم ناظرين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الخير فاونديشن کی طرف سے رمضان المبارک کے عظیم اور مقدس مہینے میں جاری اس ایمرجنسی خصوصی اہم ترین اپیل میں میں محمد عبد المنتقم آپ کو دل کی گہرائیوں سے خوش آمدید کہتا ہوں اور اللہ تعالیٰ کی بارگاہ میں دعاگو ہوں کہ اللہ تعالیٰ محض اپنے فضل و کرم سے ان اپیلوں کو شرف قبول عطا فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ آپ کی دی ہوئی پائی پائی کو قبول فرمائے پھینی پھینی کو قبول فرمائے آپ کا ڈونیشن آپ کے لیے اس جہان میں بھی باعث خیر و برکت ثابت ہو اور موت کے وقت بھی اللہ تعالیٰ راحت کا سامان اور سبب اسے بنائے اور اسی طریقے سے آخرت کی ہر گھڑی میں قیامت کی ہر گھڑی میں روز مح روز محشر کی ہر گھبراہٹ کے موقع پر اللہ تعالیٰ اس کو سکون تسلی آرام راحت اور خیر و برکت کا ذریعہ بنائے اللہ تعالیٰ تمام کے صدقات قبول فرما کر ان اپیلوں کو بھی شرف قبول عطا فرمائے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کو بھی بہترین انداز میں اپنی کارکردگی پوری دنیا میں جاری رکھنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے محترم ناظرین ضرورت اس بات کی ہے کہ ان مبارک لمحات اور ان مقدس ساعتوں میں ایک ایک پل کی قدر و قیمت سمجھ اچھی طرح سمجھتے ہوئے محسوس کرتے ہوئے آپ نے ڈونیٹ کرنا ہے آپ نے ڈونیشن دینا ہے کہ پتہ نہیں دوبارہ رمضان ہماری قسمت میں ہے یا نہیں دوبارہ ایک اور رمضان زندگی میں ملے گا بھی کہ نہیں کتنے بے شمار افراد میں یہ بات بار بار کہتا ہوں ہر مرتبہ ایک نئے جذبے کے ساتھ یہ بات میری زبان پر آتی ہے کہ پچھلے سال کتنے لاکھوں افراد ایسے تھے جو رمضان ہمارے ساتھ گزارتے رہے ہیں اور رمضان کا مقدس مہینہ انہوں نے ہمارے ساتھ گزارا ہے لیکن اس سال وہ ہمارے درمیان موجود نہیں ہے اس سال ہمارے درمیان موجود نہیں ہے پچھلے سال ان کو احساس بھی نہیں تھا کہ آئندہ سال ہمیں رمضان نہیں ملے گا اس سال ہمارے ساتھ اتنے بے شمار افراد موجود ہیں لاکھوں افراد ایسے موجود ہیں جو یقیناً آئندہ سال ہمارے درمیان نہیں ہوں گے اس دنیا میں وہ جیتے جی ہمارے درمیان نہیں ہوں گے اور اس دنیا سے وہ رخصت ہو چکے ہوں گے اس لسٹ میں ان فہرستوں میں موت پا جانے والے 
روح قبض ہو جانے والوں کی اس فہرست میں کس کس کا نام شامل ہے کون کون شمار ہے کس کا نام لکھا جا چکا ہے کون ایکسیڈنٹ میں مرے گا کس کا راستے میں حادثاتی موت ہوگی اور کس کو بیماری لاحق ہوگی اور آن کے آن میں وہ دنیا سے رخصت ہو جائے گا اچانک ایک ہفتہ پہلے کینسر کی تشخیص ہوتی ہے ایک ہفتے کے اندر جو ہے انسان چل بستا ہے اور دنیا سے رخصت ہو جاتا ہے بالکل صحیح سالم اور تھگڑا جوان ہوتا ہے لیکن فوری طور پر بلاوہ آ جاتا ہے اور آن کے آن میں چند گھنٹوں میں چند لمحوں میں دنیا سے رخصت ہو جاتا ہے صبح کو آدمی صحیح سالم گھر سے نکلتا ہے شام کو واپسی کا پروگرام ہوتا ہے اگلے دن کسی اور جگہ سفر کا پروگرام تیار رہتا ہے لیکن اس کے باوجود شام کو اس کی میت گھر واپس پہنچتی ہے اس کی لاش گھر واپس پہنچتی ہے یہ روزانہ کا قصہ ہے یہ روزانہ کا واقعہ ہے اس کے یہ بات یقینی ہے کہ اس سال جو لوگ رمضان میں ہم ایک ساتھ گزار رہے ہیں ہم میں سے بے شمار لوگ آئندہ رمضان میں دنیا میں نہیں ہوں گے پچھلے سال جس طرح بے شمار تھے اور اس سال نہیں ہے اسی طریقے اس سال بے شمار ہمارے درمیان موجود ہیں اور ہم میں سے بہت سارے آئندہ سال دنیا میں نہیں ہوں گے ایک رمضان تو کوئی نہ کوئی رمضان تو زندگی کا آخری رمضان ہوگا اس لیے حضرات علماء کرام نے اللہ والوں نے یہ بتایا ہے کہ اس رمضان کو زندگی کا آخری رمضان سمجھتے ہوئے گزارنا چاہیے اگر زندگی میں یقینی طور پر کسی کے علم میں یہ بات ہو کہ یہ میری زندگی کا آخری رمضان ہے کوئی اور رمضان مجھے ملنے والا نہیں ہے دوسرا رمضان میرے نصیب میں نہیں ہوگا یہ زندگی کا آخری رمضان ہے یہ بات اگر سو فیصد یقین کے ساتھ کسی کے علم میں ہو کسی کو معلوم ہو جائے تو پھر وہ غفلت نہیں برت سکتا وہ سستی کے عالم میں کوئی لمحہ وہ گزار نہیں سکتا ایک ایک لمحہ اللہ کے عبادت میں ایک ایک لمحہ اللہ کے ذکر میں ایک ایک لمحہ صدقہ و خیرات میں ایک ایک لمحہ دوسروں کے ساتھ تعاون میں ایک ایک لمحہ ہمدردی کا مظاہرہ کرتے ہوئے غم خاری کا مظاہرہ کرتے ہوئے غم گساری کا مظاہرہ کرتے ہوئے بہترین انداز میں ایک ایک لمحہ انسان گزارنے کی کوشش کرے گا نمازوں میں وقت گزرے گا عبادات میں وقت اس کا صرف ہوگا اور دعا و مناجات میں وہ مشغول رہے گا صدقہ و خیرات جتنا اپنے بس میں ہیں اتنا وہ ادا کرتا رہے گا اور سبحان اللہ صدقہ و خیرات میں بڑھ چڑھ کر وہ حصہ لے گا اور زندگی کی ساری جمع پونجی اللہ کی راہ میں خرچ کرنے کی آخری کوشش اس کی ہوگی اور کوئی بھی غفلت کے عالم میں زندگی کا ایک لمحہ بھی گزارنے کے لیے تیار نہیں ہوگا بشرت کہ وہ صاحب ایمان ہو بشرت کہ خوف خدا اس کو لاحق ہو آخرت پر ایمان ہو جب یہ بات ہے تو یقین سے میں کہہ سکتا ہوں کہ آئندہ سال ہم میں سے لاکھوں کروڑوں انسان دنیا میں نہیں ہوں گے جو دنیا سے رخصت ہو چکے ہوں گے اور آئندہ سال رمضان جب آئے گا اپنوں میں سے بہت سوں کی جدائی ہو چکی ہوگی کیا پتا کہ میرا نام شاید اس لسٹ میں شامل ہے اس فہرست میں شامل ہے حدیث میں فرمایا گیا ایسے بہت سارے لوگ ہوتے ہیں جو تجارتی منصوبے بناتے ہیں اور آئندہ چند سالوں میں وہ کیا کرنا چاہتے ہیں پندرہ بیس سالوں کا منصوبہ پچاس سال کا منصوبہ سو سال کا منصوبہ لوگ بناتے ہیں کہ میری تجارت اس, آگے, اس طرح آگے آگے بڑھے گی اس کے بعد جو ہے اتنی برانچز اور شاخیں کھلیں گی اور اس کے بعد میرے اتنے پیسے ہوں گے وہ خواب اپنے خواب میں منصوبہ بناتا رہتا ہے اور شیخ چلی کا جس طرح خواب ہوتا ہے اور شیخ چلی کے جس طرح منصوبے ہوتے ہیں اس طرح وہ منصوبے تیار کرتا رہتا ہے اور فرشتوں کو حدیث میں آیا ہے کہ وہ ایسے انسان پر ہنسی آ رہی ہوتی ہے کہ ان کے علم میں یہ بات آ چکی ہوتی ہے ان کے ہاتھ میں لسٹ دی جا چکی ہوتی ہے فہرست ان کے ہاتھ میں تھما دی جا چکی ہوتی ہے کہ اس آدمی کا انتقال پندرہ دنوں کے بعد ہونے والا ہے فلاں کا انتقال ایک مہینے کے بعد ہونے والا ہے فلاں کا انتقال دو مہینوں کے بعد کسی کا ڈیڑھ مہینے کے بعد کسی کا تین مہینے کے بعد اور وہ تیس سال کا منصوبہ بنا رہا ہے اور, اور اس, اس کے لیے ایگریمنٹ تیار کر رہا ہے اور اپنے تجارت اپنی تجارت کو فروغ دینے کے لیے اور پیسوں کی ریل پیل جمع کرنے کے لیے دولت بٹورنے کے لیے اور اپنی 
تجارت کو چمکانے کے لیے اور روپے پیسے کی لالچ کے لیے وہ نہ جانے کتنے منصوبہ بناتا ہے منصوبے بناتا ہے نہ جانے کتنے کتنی پلاننگ وہ کرتا ہے لیکن صورت حال یہ ہے کہ اس کی موت کا وقت مقرر ہو چکا ہوتا ہے اس کی زندگی کا چراغ گل ہونے والا ہوتا ہے اور فرشتے جب ایسے انسان کو منصوبے بناتے ہوئے دیکھتے ہیں اور تجارتی منصوبہ اور سال ہر سال کا آئندہ کا منصوبہ وہ بناتے ہوئے دیکھتے ہیں تو ان کو حسرت بھی ہوتی ہے ہنسی بھی آتی ہے کہ اس اللہ کے بندے کو یہ معلوم نہیں ہے کہ اس کی زندگی کا چراغ گل ہونے والا ہے اس کی روح قبض ہونے والی ہے اس کی موت کا وقت مقرر ہو چکا ہے اس کا کفن بازار میں آ چکا ہے کفن کی دکان بھی اس کی تیار اس کے لیے تیار ہے اور کفن کا کی کپڑوں کی کفن کے کپڑوں کی تھان دکان میں آ چکی ہے اور اس کے کفن اس کا کفن بھی بازار میں آ چکا ہے اس کی زندگی ختم ہونے والی ہے اور یہ منصوبے بنا رہا ہے یہ پروگرام بنا رہا ہے اس کو یہ پتہ نہیں ہے کہ میری زندگی کا چراغ گل ہونے والا ہے اور میں راہی آخرت ہونے والا ہوں میں عازم سفر ہونے والا ہوں مجھے قبر میں جانا ہے اور قبر کے گھڑے میں مجھے جواب دینا ہے اور پوری زندگی پوری زندگی کے ایک ایک کرتوت کا ایک ایک عمل کا مجھے حساب دینا ہے اور نام اعمال کا نام اعمال تیار ہونے والا ہے فائنل ہونے والا ہے اور اعمال وزن ہونے والے ہیں اور قبر میں سوال جواب کا سلسلہ اس کے لیے تیار ہے اور پوری زندگی کا کیا دھرا اس کے سامنے رکھ دیا جائے گا اور اللہ کی بارگاہ میں حاضری دینی پڑے گی اور اس کو اللہ کے کٹھیرے میں لایا جائے گا چاہیے تو یہ تھا کہ وہ اپنے جرائم سے معافی مانگتا چاہیے تو یہ تھا کہ وہ صدقہ و خیرات کرتا چاہیے تو یہ تھا کہ وہ غریبوں کی ہمدردی غریبوں سے ہمدردی کر کے اور صدقہ و خیرات زیادہ سے زیادہ کر کے نیکیاں بجا لا کر اور زیادہ سے زیادہ نیک اعمال کر کے وہ اپنے ماضی کی تلافی میں مشغول ہوتا اپنے اپنے گناہوں کا کفارہ وہ کرتا لیکن وہ کچھ نہیں کر رہا وہ صرف مستقبل کے منصوبے بنا رہا ہے آج ہم میں سے ہر ایک کا تقریباً حال ایک جیسا ہے کہ ہم زندگی کے ہم مستقبل کے بارے میں سوچتے ہیں ہم منصوبے بناتے ہیں ہمارا مستقبل کا بڑا لمبا چوڑا پروگرام ہوتا ہے اور ہمیں یہ پتہ نہیں ہمیں یہ خبر نہیں کہ یہ زندگی بہت چند دن کی زندگی ہے یہ چند روزہ دنیا کی زندگی ہے یہ تین دن کی زندگی ہے ایک دن گزر گیا اور ایک دن میں میں ہوں اور آئندہ ایک دن شاید ملے کہ نہ ملے پتہ نہیں کب میری زندگی کا چراغ گل ہو جائے کب بلاوا آ جائے کب ملک الموت روح قبض کرنے کے لیے آ جائے یہ نامعلوم المیعاد ویزا ہے یہ ومل حیات الدنیا اللہ لہو ولعب ومل حیات الدنیا اللہ متاع الغرور یہ دھوکے کا سامان ہے یہ مکڑے کا جالا ہے یہ کوئی پائیدار زندگی نہیں ہے یہ دائمی زندگی نہیں ہے یہ مستقل زندگی نہیں ہے یہ سرمدی نہیں ہے یہ عبدی نہیں ہے یہ لازوال نہیں ہے بلکہ حقیقت یہ ہے کہ یہ زندگی چند روزہ عارضی دنیا کی زندگی ہے اور کسی بھی وقت بلاوا آ سکتا ہے ہمارے اکابر بزرگان اور تابعین طبع تابعین سے لے کر اسلاف جو گزرے ہیں ان کا معمول یہ تھا کہ چالیس سال کے ہوتے ہی وہ دنیا سے بالکل الگ تلگ ہو جاتے تھے وہ مکمل طور پر آخرت کے لیے یکسو ہو جاتے تھے چالیس سال وہ سمجھتے تھے یہ آخری حد ہے اب جو ہے وہ جانے کی تیاری رہے اب تو وہ عروج کی طرف ہم آ رہے تھے اب جو ہے وہ جانے کی تیاری میں مشغول ہو جانا چاہیے چالیس سال کے بعد اب مزید دنیا کی طرف کوئی توجہ نہیں رکھتے تھے مزید دنیا کی کوئی فکر دنیا کی کوئی خواہش دنیا کی کوئی تمنا دنیا کی کوئی آرزو ان کے دل میں مچلتی نہیں تھی بلکہ وہ آخرت کی تیاری میں مستقل طور پر مشغول ہو جاتے تھے اور صدقہ و خیرات کیا کرتے تھے ایک ایک لمحہ تول تول کر خرچ کرتے تھے زندگی کا ایک ایک لمحہ وہ ایک ایک لمحہ بہت سوچ سمجھ کر خرچ کرتے تھے اور کوئی کام ہر کام کے بارے میں یہ سوچ تھی یہ ذہنیت تھی یہ خیال ہوتا تھا اس بات کا احتمام ہوتا تھا کہ آخرت میں اس کے لیے پکڑ تو نہیں ہو جائے گی ماضی کی تلافی ہم کیسے کریں چالیس سالہ زندگی کا حساب کتاب ہم کیسے برابر کریں جو غفلتیں ہو چکی ہیں جو کتاہیاں سرزد ہو گئی ہیں جو, غف... جو گناہ سرزد ہو گئے ہیں ان کی تلافی کیسے کی جائے ان کے لیے توبہ کیسے کی جائے اور آئندہ اللہ کی بارگاہ میں کیسے ہم سرخ روئی کے ساتھ اللہ کی بارگاہ میں کس طرح خوشی ہنسی خوشی جنتی بن کر ہم حاضری دے سکیں اس کی تیاری اس کی فکر مندی ان کو لاحق ہو جاتی تھی اور آج افسوسناک صورت حال یہ ہے کہ ہم ماضی کو بلا بیٹھتے ہیں اور چالیس پچاس سال کے بعد اور مزید دنیا کمانے مزید دنیا سے لطف اندوز ہونے مزید جو ہے وہ دنیا 
کے مال و دولت سے متمتع ہونے اور بہت بڑا مالدار بہت بڑا ملینر بلینر بننے کا خواب ہم دیکھنا ہی شروع کرتے ہیں اور اس کے بعد دنیا کی محبت اور زیادہ اچھا جاتی ہے پھر وہ وقت آ بھی جاتا ہے آ ہی جاتا ہے آ کر رہتا ہے کہ جب یہ ساری خواہشیں دب جاتی ہیں ساری خواہشوں کو چھوڑ کر اور ساری دنیا کی محبت کو پسے پش ڈال کر اور ساری خواہشات کی تکلیف برداشت کرتے ہوئے ہماری روح قبض کر لی جاتی ہے ہماری جان کنی ہو جاتی ہے ہماری ہماری زندگی کا چراغ گل ہو جاتا ہے محترم ناظرین اب میں دل کی گہرائیوں سے آپ کی خدمت میں یہ عرض کرنا چاہوں گا کہ اس رمضان کو زندگی کا آخری رمضان سمجھتے ہوئے اس عشر مغفرت کو زندگی کا آخری عشر مغفرت سمجھتے ہوئے ان راتوں کو زندگی کی آخری رات سمجھتے ہوئے زندگی کا سنہرا موقع سمجھتے ہوئے اگر ہم اور آپ غریبوں کی مدد کریں گے اہل غزہ کی مدد کریں گے تو اس سے بڑھ کر قیمتی رمضان اور کوئی نہیں ہو سکتا قیمتی رمضان اور کوئی نہیں ہو سکتا میں آپ کے سامنے یہ کہنا چاہتا ہوں کہ اس سال سب سے بڑھ کر جو ایک عظیم پروجیکٹ ہر سال رمضان میں پیش کیا جاتا ہے اس کی طرف ہمیں آنا چاہیے انتقال کے بعد میں نے موت کی بات عرض کی موت کے بارے میں آپ سے تفصیلات آپ کے سامنے پیش کی میرے سا... میں جو بات آپ کے سامنے عرض کرنا چاہتا ہوں وہ یہ ہے کہ سب سے عظیم ایک پروجیکٹ ہے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کا جس پروجیکٹ نے پوری دنیا میں ماشاء اللہ ایک خوشنامی پیدا کی پوری دنیا میں اس عظیم پروجیکٹ کو ماشاء اللہ بہت سراہا گیا اور اس کی ضرورت اور اہمیت بہت زیادہ ہے اور مختلف ملکوں میں مختلف غریب علاقوں میں جہاں مسجدیں قائم نہیں ہیں اور مسجدیں بنانے کی ضرورت بہت زیادہ ہے اور سال ہر سال سے بلکہ ہزار سال سے جہاں پر کچی مسجد میں لوگ نمازیں پڑھ رہے ہوتے ہیں اور اس علاقے میں نمازوں کا اہتمام نہیں اور نمازوں کا اہتمام لوگوں کے لیے کرنا مشکل ہوتا ہے جماعت کا اہتمام آسان نہیں رہتا اور کچی فرش پر اور مٹی کے کے فلور پر نماز ادا کرنے کی نوبت آتی ہے رمضان گزارنے کی ضرورت پیش آتی ہے اور اس طریقے سے وہاں مکتب کا نظام اچھی طرح چلایا نہیں جا سکتا مسجدوں کے اندر بارش کا پانی ٹپکتا ہے اور مسجد گیلی ہو جاتی ہے اور ایسے ایسے علاقے ہیں جہاں پر مسجدوں کے نہ ہونے کی وجہ سے کنکریوں پر نماز پڑھنے کی نوبت آتی ہے کوئی ہموار زمین نہیں ہوتی اور عجیب کیفیت ہوتی ہے تکلیفوں کا سامنا رہتا ہے اس لیے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن نے سبحان اللہ مساجد کا جو پروجیکٹ بنایا مسجدوں کی تعمیر کا جو سلسلہ شروع کیا اس نے پوری دنیا میں خوشی کی ایک لہر پیدا کر دی پوری دنیا میں مسرتوں مسرتوں کی لہر دوڑا دی بے شمار علاقوں علاقوں کی ضرورتیں الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کے مسجد پروجیکٹ کے ذریعے ماشاء اللہ ضرورتیں پوری ہوئی افغانستان کے پہاڑوں کے دامن پر آپ جا کے دیکھ لیں الخیر کی مسجدیں بنی ہوئی ہیں پنجاب میں جا کے آپ دیکھ لیں الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کی بے شمار مسجدیں ہیں سندھ کے تھر پار کر کے علاقے میں جا کے دیکھ لیں الخیر کی مسجدیں ہیں سندھ کے دیہی علاقوں میں آپ جا کے دیکھ لیں بلوچستان میں جا کے دیکھ لیں کے پی کے میں جا کے دیکھ لیں افغانستان میں جا کے دیکھیں اور بنگلہ دیش کے مختلف اضلاع میں جا کے آپ دیکھیں کہ ماشاء اللہ الخیر فاؤنڈیشن نے مسجدوں کی تعمیر کرتے ہوئے ایک خوشنامی کا بہترین ریکارڈ قائم کیا ایک تاریخ رقم کی اور سبحان اللہ خوشی کی لہر دوڑا دی پاکستان میں تاریخ کا سب سے بدترین اور سب سے خطرناک سیلاب آیا سترہ ہزار مسجدیں شہید ہو گئی اور الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کے ذریعے پانچ سو چھ سو سے زیادہ مسجدیں الحمدللہ قائم ہو گئی ہیں اور اب تک تو الخیر کے ذریعے ایک ہزار سے ڈیڑھ ہزار کے لگ بگ بارہ سو کے قریب مسجدیں الحمدللہ تعمیر ہو چکی ہیں افریقہ میں مسجدیں الخیر نے تعمیر کی پاکستان میں تعمیر کی بنگلہ دیش میں تعمیر کی افغانستان میں تعمیر کی ایک ایک علاقے میں ایک ایک ملک میں سمالیہ میں سمالی لینڈ میں اور مختلف ملکوں میں ماشاء اللہ مسجدوں کی تعمیر کے ذریعے اس ادارے نے نیک نامی کا جو ریکارڈ قائم کیا خوش نامی کا جو ریکارڈ قائم کیا جو شاندار ریکارڈ ریکارڈ قائم کیا سبحان اللہ وہ تاریخ کا ایک حصہ ہے میں دل کی گہرائیوں سے آپ سے یہ کہنا چاہتا ہوں کہ رسول کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ہمیں یہ خوشخبری دی ہے کہ من بنا للہ مسجدا بن اللہ له بیتا فی الجنہ اگر کوئی دنیا میں اللہ کا گھر مسجد کی تعمیر کرتا ہے مسجد بناتا ہے تو اللہ جنت میں گھر 
تعمیر کرتے ہیں یہ ترجمہ صحیح نہیں ہے بلکہ بن اللہ بیتن بیتن میں تنوین لتعظیم ہے یعنی اللہ تعالیٰ شاندار محل جنت میں تعمیر فرمائیں گے پیلس تعمیر فرمائیں گے اور بہت بڑی عمارت تعمیر کریں گے اور جنت کے عمارتوں کا حال یہ ہوگا کہ ایک روایت میں آیا ہے عمارتیں اتنی بڑی ہوں گی اتنی اونچی ہوں گی اتنی بلند و بالا ہوں گی اتنی شاندار ہوں گی اتنی وسیع ہوں گی سبحان اللہ کہ ایک ایک عمارت جنت کی ایسی ہوگی کہ جن مکہ مکرمہ سے لے کر بسرہ تک جو فاصلہ ہے وہ ایک دروازہ ہوگا ایک بلڈنگ کا ایک دروازہ اتنا بڑا ہوگا سبحان اللہ العظیم تو اللہ جب جنت میں عمارتیں بنائیں گے تو ان عمارتوں کا حجم کتنا بڑا ہوگا ان عمارتوں کا سکائر فٹ کتنا زیادہ ہوگا ان عمارتوں کی ان عمارتوں کا احاطہ کتنا بڑا ہوگا ان عمارتوں کی بڑائی کتنی ہوگی شان کتنی بلند و بالا ہوگی خوبصورتی کتنی زیادہ ہوگی وہ جنت کی شان کے مطابق اور اللہ کی شان کبریائی کے مطابق وہ اتنی شاندار عمارتیں ہوں گی وہ اتنے زیادہ خوبصورت پیلس ہوں گے کہ اس کا ایک چھوٹا سا ذرہ بھی دنیا میں لایا جائے تو اس ایک ذرے کی قیمت پوری دنیا کی مال و دولت کا پورا خزانہ ادا نہیں کر سکتا جنت کے ایک ایک ایٹ کی قیمت پوری دنیا ادا نہیں کر سکتی پوری دنیا کا ساز و سامان پوری دنیا کے جو دفائن ہے جو خزائن ہے اور جو مٹی کے نیچے جو سونا چاندی کا خزانہ ہے وہ سب اگر یک جا کر لیا جائے سب اگر جمع کر لیا جائے تو جنت کے ایک ایٹ کی قیمت کے برابر بھی نہیں ہے سبحان اللہ جو ایک ایٹ چاندی کی ہوتی ہے ایک ایٹ سبحان اللہ سونے کی ہوتی ہے اور پھر زمرد کا سبحان اللہ مسالہ درمیان میں ہوتا ہے ایسی شاندار عمارتیں ہوتی ہیں بعض عمارتیں تو ایسی ہوتی ہیں کہ اندر سے باہر کا منظر صاف طور پر نظر آتا ہے اور باہر سے اندر کے خوبصورتیاں سامنے نظر آتی ہیں وہ عمارت کیسی ہوگی اس کی شان کیا ہوگی اس کا مقام کیا ہوگا اس کی خوبصورتی کیا ہوگی اس کی دل فریبی کا سامان کیا ہوگا اور اس کی خوشنمائی کیا ہوگی اس کی رنگینیاں کیا ہوں گی اور اس کی اس کی راحتیں کتنی زیادہ ہوں گی اس کا سکون کتنی زیادہ ہوگا اس کی فضائیں کتنی پرسکون ہوں گی کتنی آرام دہ عمارتیں ہوں گی کتنی خوبصورت وہ مکانات ہوں گے الفاظ بیان کرنے سے قاصر ہیں ما لا عین رأت ولا اذن سمیعت ولا خطر علا قلب بشر جنت کی عمارتیں ایسی ہوں گی جن کو کبھی کسی آنکھ نے نہیں دیکھا جن کو کبھی ما لا عین رأت ولا اذن سمیعت نہ کسی کان نے ایسی عمارتیں عمارت کی تفصیلات کبھی سنی اور نہ کبھی کسی دل میں ان عمارتوں کی خوبصورتی کا خیال گزرا ہو ہمارے خیالات کی پرواز سے بالا تر ہمارے تمام سوچوں سے بالا تر ہمارے تمام اندازوں سے زیادہ خوبصورت راحت والا مکان اور شاندار محل اللہ تعالیٰ مسجد بنانے والوں کو عطا فرمائیں گے تو جنت میں مسجد کے میں اتنی زیادہ فضیلتیں اتنا سواب ایک لاکھ سواب دو لاکھ سواب ایک کروڑ سواب یہ کوئی حد نہیں یہ کوئی حساب نہیں جنت جس طرح لا متناہی ہے جنت جس طرح بے حد و حساب ہے جنت کا جس طرح کوئی اندازہ نہیں ہوتا جنت کا جس طرح کوئی شمار اور گنا ممکن نہیں ہوتا اسی طریقے سے سبحان اللہ جنت کے شاندار محلات کی قیفیت ہوگی اور ایسا شاندار محل اللہ تعالیٰ مسجد بنانے والوں کو عطا فرمائیں گے میں چاہوں گا کہ چھوٹی مسجد درمیانی مسجد بڑی مسجد ہر قسم کی مسجد آپ لوگ دینے کے لیے سامنے آ جائیں کیونکہ حدیث میں فرمایا گیا ہے کہ اگر بہت چھوٹی سی ایک جھوپڑی کے برابر ایک مختصر سی مسجد بھی اگر کوئی بنا دے تو اللہ جنت میں شاندار محل تعمیر فرمائے گا اور میدان قیامت میں روز محشر میں اللہ کی طرف سے اعلان ہوگا این جوار اللہ کہاں ہے اللہ کے پڑوسی کہاں ہے اللہ کے خاص پڑوسی جو جنت میں اللہ کے پڑوس ہونے کا جن کو شرف حاصل ہے فرمایا جائے گا یہ کون ہے جن کا قلب مسجد کے ساتھ جڑا ہوا ہوگا جو مسجد تعمیر کرنے والے ہوں گے جن کو مسجد کے ساتھ خصوصی لگا ہوگا مسجد کی محبت جن کے دلوں میں پیوست ہوگی مسجد کی مسجد کے قدر قیمت جن کے دلوں میں ہوگی مسجدیں جنت میں جائیں گی کعبہ بیت اللہ شریف کے وہ شاخیں ہیں برانچز ہے اور وہ بیت اللہ کے ساتھ وہ ساری مسجدیں جنت میں جائیں گی اور جو مسجد والے ہوں گے اہل مسجد ہوں گے مسجد بنانے والے ہوں گے مسجد تعمیر کرنے والے ہوں گے اور مسجد آباد کرنے والے ہوں گے ان کو اللہ تعالیٰ سبحان اللہ جنت میں ٹھکانہ عطا فرمائیں گے جنت میں جگہ عطا فرمائیں گے اس لیے سب سے اچھا صدقہ وہ صدقہ ہے جو صدقہ جاریہ ہے یعنی ہمیشہ جاری رہنے 
والا صدقہ کنٹینیو رہنے والا صدقہ اور صدقہ جاریہ میں سب سے اعلی صدقہ مسجد کی تعمیر کا صدقہ ہے اور اتنی زیادہ فضیلت کسی اور صدقے کے بارے میں سبحان اللہ وارد نہیں ہوئی ہے بشارت اتنی زیادہ کسی اور صدقے کے بارے میں نہیں دی گئی ہے میں تمام بھائیوں سے بہنوں سے یہ کہنا چاہتا ہوں اور کچھ نہیں تو 1000 پاؤنڈ 500 پاؤنڈ 100 پاؤنڈ اور 10000 پاؤنڈ 12000 پاؤنڈ 25000 پاؤنڈ اس طریقے سے آپ نے مسجد میں مسجد کی تعمیر میں آپ نے ضرور حصہ لینا ہے اور الخیر کے اس پروجیکٹ کو شاد و آباد رکھنا ہے آگے بڑھانا ہے تمام بھائیوں سے بہنوں سے گزارش کروں گا مسجد کی تعمیر کی جو بے پناہ فضیلت ہے اسے حاصل کرنے کے لیے آپ لوگ کمپیٹیشن کا جذبہ دکھائیں اور آج مسجد کی تعمیر کے سلسلے میں اتنا زیادہ آپ ڈونیٹ کریں کہ تاریخ قائم ہو جائے ریکارڈ قائم ہو جائے اللہ آپ سب کو جزائے خیر عطا فرمائے اور مسجد کی تعمیر میں بڑھ چڑھ کر حصہ لینے کی بے پناہ فضیلت حاصل کرنے کی توفیق سے نوازیں وقفے کے لیے چلتے ہیں ہمارے ساتھ رہی السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ باہر جا رہے تھے ہمارے لیے کام کرنے کے لیے مزوری کرنے کے لیے پہاڑیوں سے اتر کے گئے تو راستے میں دریا تھا دریا بہت زیادہ تھا بارش ہوئی بھی تھی تو وہاں پہ ڈوبے دو سال ہو گئے پر لگتا ہے کل ہی کی بات ہے میرے دادی دادوں نے ہم لوگوں کے پاس لاش بھی نہیں چھوڑی ہوئی ہم لوگوں سے کھیچ کے لے کے گئے پھر میری مما کو تانے دیتے رہے یہاں سے جاؤ یہ شکر تم لوگوں نے مارا ہوئے پھر میری مما کو گھر سے دکے مار کر نکالے پھر اس کے بعد ہم لوگوں کے بعد پیسے نہیں تھے پھر ہم لوگ پیادل آئے پھر نانو لوگوں کے گھر آئے نانو لوگوں نے ہم لوگوں کو چھپرا بنا کر دیئے ہوئے ہمارا جو مکان ہے وہ بھی گتوں کا ہے ہم لوگوں نے مٹی کے ذات اپنا گھر بنایا ہوئے اتنے دور سے ہم لوگ مٹی لاتے ہیں اور اس کے ساتھ گھر کو نیا کر دیں تو پھر بھی گھر نیا نہیں ہوتا بارش ہوتی ہے جب تو وہ مٹی جو ہوتی ہے وہ خراب ہو جاتی ہے میری مما کو کسی نے پلاسکر دی ہوئی ہے وہ ڈالتے اوپر برف ہوتی ہے تو بہت سردی ہوتی ہے پھر ہم لوگوں کو برداشت کرنی پڑتی ہے چھوٹی چھوٹی چرپائیں وہاں ہی پہ ہم تین مینے ایک بھائی ہو رہے ہیں ہم میں وہاں ہی پہ سوتے زلزلہ ہوتا ہے تو بہت پیرشانی ہوتی ہے ایک دن زلزلہ ہوا تو پھر ہم لوگ دس دن سو نہیں پاتے کہ ہم لوگ گر جائیں گے ہمارا جو چھپ رہے ہیں یہ گرے گا تو ہمارا کیا ہوگا برف بھی پڑتی ہے تو میری مما جا کر پہاڑوں سے جنگلوں سے لے کے آتی ہے پھر آگ جلاتی ہے پھر ہم لوگ بیٹھ کر ایک لیتے ہیں کھیتوں میں جا کے تھوڑی سی سبزی لے آتے ہیں کبھی دے دیتے ہیں کبھی لوگ باتیں سناتے ہیں باتیں بھی سننی پڑتی ہیں ہم لوگوں کبھی دل کرتے ہیں کہ ہم لوگ گوز کھائیں ہمارے پاس پیسے نہیں ہوتے کہ ہم لوگ لائے اور کھائیں ایک مہینے پہلے میرے ماموں نے کسی کی دعوت کی ہوئی اس نے ہم لوگوں کے لیے سال نہ بجوایا تھا تو تب کھایا تھا اب نہیں کھایا ہمارے رشتدار بہت زیادہ ہیں پر ہم لوگوں کے ساتھ سے کچھ نہیں کرتے کبھی کبھی کچھ چیز دے دیتے ہیں اگر ہمارے ابو ہوتے تو ہمیں بکھا نہیں رہنے دیتے روزے میں کوئی زکاة دے تو پھر گزارہ کر لیتے اگر سائری کے ٹیم پہ کھانے کے لیے کچھ ہو تو کھا کے روزہ رکھ لیتے ہیں اگر کچھ نہ ہو تو پھر پانی پی کے اور نیت کر کے روزے کی رکھ لیتے ہیں افتار کا ڈام آتا ہے تو پھر نمک اور پانی سے روزہ کھول لیتے ہیں کبھی کسی نے فروٹ دیا تو ہم لوگ کھا لیتے ہیں اگر نہیں ہوا تو ہم اللہ کے بروسے پہ بیٹھ جاتے ہیں پھر ہم لوگ بولتے ہیں کہ اللہ ہمارا ابو ہوتا اور ہمیں بھی اس طرح نہیں رہنے دیتا ہمارا سکول بہت دور ہے دو گھنٹوں کا راستہ ہے تو میں چل کے جاتی ہوں سو بس ویلا جاتی ہوں اور چلتی ہوں 
फिर मैं अपनी दोस्तों से पहले जाती हूँ बाद में पहुँचती हूँ वो गाड़ी पे जाती हैं तो मैंने गाड़ी नहीं लगवाई भी मेरे पास पैसे नहीं हैं यूनिफाम मेरे पास नहीं था मेरी दोस्त ने मुझे दिए है तो वो पहन के जाती हूँ मैं फिर वो लंच करती हैं तो उनका लंच का टाइम आता है तो मैं फिर साइड पर बैठ जाती हूँ अब वो होते तो फिर नहीं ऐसे हालात नहीं होते हम लोगों के फिर हम लोगों को अबू भूखा नहीं रहने देता स्कूल में लड़की की चीजें पूरी होती हैं और मेरे काम होती है मैं मुझे अकेला खड़ा करवा देती है कि तुम्हारी चीजें नहीं है जब लोगों की चीजें देखती हूँ तो फिर मैं भी कहती हूँ कि मेरे अबू होते तो मुझे भी ऐसी चीजें ले कर देते जब अबू भी याद आते हैं फिर मैं खामोश होकर बैठ जाती हूँ कि मेरा भाई छोटा है वो भी रोएगा मेरा छोटा भाई भी स्कूल पढ़ता है वो बोलता है कि मेरे दोस्त की ऐसी चीज़ है मुझे भी ऐसी ला के दो मेरी मम्मा फिर बेवास हो जाती है उसे बोलती है कि बेटा ला के दूंगी वो पूछते हैं मम्मा मेरा बाबा कह दे रहे बाबा तो मेरे बाबा होते तो मुझे इस तरह की चीज़ें ला कर देते जो मेरी छोटी बहन है वो उसकी सांस की तकलीफ होती है वो सांस की बीमार है स्कूल भी नहीं पढ़ती मम्मा को बोलती है मुझे अस्पताल ले कर जाऊँ मम्मा ने बोला फिर ले कर जाऊँगी कभी हम लोगों के पास इतने पैसे नहीं होते कि उसे अस्पताल ले कर जाए फिर हम लोग सोचते हैं कि अबू की तरह ये हमें छोड़ कर चली ना जाए जब मेरे अबू जिंदा थे तो वह हमें शॉपिंग पर ले कर जाते थे अब मेरे अबू नहीं हम पुराने कपड़े पहनते हैं सब कुछ अच्छा लगता है पर मम्मा को नहीं बोलते मेरे पास कपड़े थे सर्दियों के पर वो फट गए थे उसके बाद ना मेरे बहन के पास है कपड़े थे और ना ही मेरे पास थे मेरी कोई वही साथ पूरी नहीं हो रही मैं सोचती हूँ कि मेरे अबू होते और हमारी ख्वाहिशात पूरी करते हमें नहीं पता था कि मेरे अबू जाने के बाद हम लोगों के साथ लोग इतने बुरे होंगे बहुत दुआएं करते हैं कि जो हम लोगों के साथ ऐसा करेगा या अल्लाह उसे भी हर उसकी हर ख्वाहिशात पूरी करे हम लोगों को घर बना कर देते हैं अल्लाह उनकी मदद करे अल्लाह इतना करे कि वो संभाल नहीं पाए और अल्लाह उनके बच्चों की भी हिफाजत करे Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters as you can see right now we are packing the blankets into bags which will then inshallah will be easier for us to load onto trucks which will be then be sent to Gaza inshallah my brothers and sisters these packs that you can see these blankets alhamdulillah are good quality blankets and as you can see I'll, I'll, I'll take one out here you can see subhanallah they are big blankets large blankets and inshallah these will be going to Gaza alongside uh, the tents that we sent alongside the mattresses And inshallah my brothers and sisters through your donations we will be able to continue this work as long as we can because the people of Gaza they have to move to one place then the next few days they'll have to move to a new place so you know these tents and these these different uh, mattresses pillows blankets are needed all the time so keep please keep donating them as long as you can we can provide shelter alongside mattresses alongside blankets and alongside subhanallah uh, mattresses and pillows can provide the family with all of these items please call 03000999786 or visit alkhair.org make sure you donate because your aid is reaching the people of gaza بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسوله الكريم 
وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول في كتابه العزيز والفرقان الحميد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة صدق الله العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته وأهل بيته وخلفائه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى على مجمعين ناظرین اکرام میں قاسم رشید احمد آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوں آج کی یہ ٹرانسمیشن لے کر کے تھوڑی دیر کے لیے آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہوں اس کے بعد میں اپنے کام سے جاؤں گا اور پھر بعد میں انشاءاللہ واپس آپ کی خدمت میں حاضری ہوگی چند گزارشات آپ کی خدمت میں پیش کرنا چاہتا ہوں یہ کہ الحمد للہ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے آپ کو یہ وہ ادارہ نصیب فرمایا ہے وہ ادارہ عطا فرمایا کہ جس کا ایک سالہ سال کا نہیں بلکہ دسیوں سالوں کا کہہ لیجئے دس سال سے اوپر ہو گئے اس کا ریکارڈ ہے ڈیلیوری کا کہ ماشاءاللہ جو ہے جو آپ ڈونیٹ کرتے ہیں وہ یہ ادارہ احسن طریقے سے مشکل ترین مقامات کے اوپر اور پریشان کن حالات میں جا کر کے آپ کے پروجیکٹس ڈیلیور کرتا ہے ماشاءاللہ جس طریقے سے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کی ڈیلیوری ہے دنیا کے بے شمار ممالک کے اندر بہت کم ادارے ایسے ہیں جن کو وہ رسائی ملتی ہے اور وہ پہنچ ان کو حاصل ہوتی ہے اور ان مقامات پر جا کر کے وہ ڈیلیور کر پاتے ہیں اسی کی ایک کڑی الحمدللہ برما کے اندر کام کا ہے سلسلہ ہے انسائیڈ برما ایک تو ہے کہ بنگلہ دیش میں جو کوکس بازار میں ریفیجیز ہیں برما کے ان کی مدد کرنا اس میں بھی جو ہے میرے خیال میں انگلینڈ یا یورپ کے اداروں میں سب سے بڑا کام الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کا ہی ہے تین ہزار فیملیز کو وہاں پر سیٹل کرنا ان کو روزانہ جو ہے پانی وغیرہ کی سہولیات فراہم کرنا ان کے باتروم وغیرہ جو ہے اس کی روزانہ دیکھ بال کرنا صفائی کرنا ان کو جو ہے فلٹر پانی سپلائی کرنا ان کو راشن وغیرہ میڈیکل کلینک جو ہے اور ماشاءاللہ کئی بے شمار پروجیکٹ تو یہ انسائیڈ برما اور پھر انسائیڈ برما اسکولوں کا قیام کہ اسکولز وہاں پر اسٹیبلش کیے ماشاءاللہ تو اب جب ایسی جگہوں پہ پہنچ ہے تو یقیناً جو ہے غزہ جیسے علاقوں میں ماشاءاللہ الخیر کی یقیناً پہنچ ہوگی اور جس لحاظ سے الحمدللہ الخیر فاؤنڈیشن کا کام غزہ کے اندر ہو رہا ہے جو کہ ہم ثابت کر سکتے ہیں ماشاءاللہ یہ کہ اندر ریکارڈ ہے وہ اس کے مطلب ڈاکیمنٹس بھی ہیں اس کے فوٹیج بھی ہیں کافی حد تک تو جس طریقے سے الخیر کا کام غزہ کے اندر ہو رہے ہیں جس طریقے سے الخیر کے ٹرکس غزہ کے اندر پہنچ رہے ہیں اور اس وقت اسکین پر آپ دیکھ بھی رہے ہیں ماشاءاللہ جو یہ بارڈر ہے رفع بارڈر جسے کہتے ہیں تو وہاں سے بے شمار ٹرک جو ہے ہمارے داخل ہو رہے ہیں مختلف دنوں کی یہ فوٹیج ہے کوئی جو ہے کلپ کسی دن کا ہے کوئی کسی دن کا ہے تو روزانہ کی تو فوٹیج ظاہر ہے کوئی بھی ادارہ ریکارڈ نہیں کر سکتا ہے چونکہ بس ٹرک کی اس ٹائم پر داخل ہو رہے ہیں کچھ پتہ نہیں ہوتا ہے تو لیکن یہ کہ جتنا فوٹیج ہم حاصل کر پائے تو جو بھی ہم نے حاصل کیا یقین مانیے کہ جو ہے کسی اور ادارے کے پاس اس کا آدھا کیا ایک تہائی بھی نہیں ہوگا بلکہ جو ہے میں تو ایک بات کہتا ہوں کہ بھئی جو ہے اور ادارے والے اگر جو ہے غزہ میں سامان پہنچا رہے ہیں تو اس بارڈر سے اس گیٹ سے داخل ہوتے ہوئے کہ چند لوریز کے فوٹیج دکھا دیں چند لوریز کا یہ ہے تو امہ ویل فیر ٹرسٹ ہے ماشاءاللہ یہاں پر جن کی لوریز گئی ہیں اس کے علاوہ باقی اداروں کا میں کچھ کہہ نہیں سکتا چونکہ ان اداروں نے فراہم نہیں کیا ہے تو الحمدللہ الخیر یہ کہ صرف دعویٰ نہیں کر رہا ہے بلکہ آپ کو دکھا بھی رہا ہے الحمدللہ تو اس وقت ضرورت اس بات کی ہے کہ آپ حضرات بڑھ چڑھ کر کے تعاون کریں اور بڑھ چڑھ کر کے سپورٹ کریں اللہ نے اگر توفیق دی ہے تو پوری ایک لوری کا خرچہ آپ اٹھائیں 
یعنی اگر آٹے کی خالی لوری ہو فلاورز کی تو وہ درمیانی سائز کی لوری جو ہے وہ تقریباً پندرہ ہزار پونڈ میں ہے فوڈ پیک کی لوری جو ہے وہ تقریباً پینتیس ہزار پونڈ میں تھرٹی فائیو تھاؤزن پونڈ میں فوڈ پیک کی لوری اس کے اندر کھانے کی مختلف اشیاء وغیرہ پیکس بنا کر کے فوڈ پیکس بنا کر کے وہ ماشاءاللہ جاتی ہیں اگر آپ جو ہے پیلٹ کے لیے لحاظ سے کرنا چاہتے ہیں تو وہ بھی کر سکتے ہیں ماشاءاللہ تو الحمدللہ اتنا زبردست کام اور اتنا زبردست پروفائل جو ہے بہت ہی کم اداروں کو یہ مواقع نصیب ہوتے ہیں الخیر دنیا میں شاید ہی جو ہے اس جیسا کوئی اور ادارہ ہو جس کو اس حد تک رسائی ہو جو ہے نون گورنمنٹ اداروں کی میں بات کر رہا ہوں میں یونائٹڈ نیشن ریڈ کریزنٹ ریڈ کراس وغیرہ ان کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں میں گورنمنٹس کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں کوئیت قطر وغیرہ کی گورنمنٹ کی بات نہیں کر رہا ہوں اگرچہ بعض گورنمنٹس آپ تعجب کریں گے اس وقت کم از کم تین چار ممالک کی حکومتیں یا ان کی منسٹریز الخیر کے تھرو بھی ڈیلیور کر رہے ہیں وہ اپنے ذریعے سے بھی بھیج رہے ہیں لیکن الخیر کے ذریعے سے بھی بھیج رہے ہیں اور جو آج ماشاءاللہ جو ہے جو نیوز آئی ہے ہمارے پاس کہ بھئی چند دن پہلے ہی ابھی رمضان کی ابتدا میں جو ہے رمضان کی ابتدا میں قطر کے آفیشلز نے ہمیں کافی بڑا کنسائمنٹ دیا کئی لوریز کا کہ یہ لوریز کا جو ہے آٹا اور کھانا وغیرہ آپ نے اندر پہنچانا ہے اس شرط کے ساتھ کہ آپ نے یہ خیموں میں جا کر کے تقسیم کرنا ہے ٹینٹوں میں جا کر کے آپ نے ایک ایک ٹینٹ کو ایک ایک بوری پہنچانی ہے تو اور دوسرا یہ کہ اس کے ساتھ ساتھ مزید یہ کہ بریڈ بنا کر کے وہ بھی جو ہے آپ نے دینی ہے روٹی بنا کر کے تو الحمدللہ ہم اس میں پورے کامیاب ہوئے ہمیں خدشہ تھا ان حالات کے اندر جہاں جیسے وہ فلاور مسیکل کی خبریں آ رہی ہیں کہ آٹا تقسیم کرتے ہوئے جو لوگوں کی جانے جا رہی ہیں وہاں پر وہ جو خبریں آ رہی ہیں تو ان خبروں کے ہوتے ہوئے ہمیں خدشہ تھا کہ ہم یہ وعدہ فلفل کر بھی پائیں گے کہ نہیں تو پہلے لوریز اندر داخل ہوئی بورڈر کے اندر وہ ایک مرحلہ الحمدللہ مکمل ہوا اس کے بعد غزہ کے اندر وہ لوریز داخل ہوئی الحمدللہ وہ اگلا مرحلہ مکمل ہوا اس کے بعد تیسرے مرحلے کے اوپر ماشاءاللہ جو ہے اللہ نے توفیق دی اور ہماری ٹیم نے جو ہے اس کی تقسیم کی ماشاءاللہ وہ سارا جو ہے وہاں پر تقسیم کیا تو اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی جزائے خیرت آفر میں ہماری ٹیم کو کہ واقعی مطلب یہ نہیں ایک حکومتی یہ کہہ لیجئے آفیشلز کے لیے ڈیلیور کر پانا یہ بہت ہی بڑی بات ہے ہمارے لیے اور یہ اس سے اب آپ اندار لگا سکتے ہیں کہ اگر جو ہے ان کا ڈونیشن پہلے چند لاکھوں میں اگر تھا چند لاکھ ڈالر میں تھا تو اب انشاءاللہ ان کا ڈونیشن کتنا بڑا ہوگا اس کا اندازہ آپ لگا لیں ہم خیر پھر بھی بہت بڑے وعدے ہم نہیں کرتے اور ہم مطلب ہی نہیں حکومتوں سے یہ کہتے ہیں کہ جتنا ہم سنبھال سکتے ہیں وہ اتنا ہم لیں گے بعض جو ہے وہ مطلب ہمارے سے بات کر رہے ہیں دس ملین ڈالر کی جو ہے ہم کہتے ہیں آپ آدھا آدھا ملین کر کے جو ہے دیں ہم آہستہ آہستہ جتنا پہنچاتے رہیں گے ہم ایک ساتھ دس ملین ڈالر لے لیں اور پھر نہ پہنچا پائیں تو وہ تعلقات بھی خراب ہوں گے ریپیٹیشن بھی خراب ہوگی اور یہ وہ سارا تو اس وقت دنیا کے ماشاءاللہ کئی ممالک ہیں اور دنیا کے بے شمار بڑے بڑے ادارے ہیں جن کی طرف سے الخیر فاؤنڈیشن ماشاءاللہ ڈیلیور کر رہا ہے تو اگر دنیا کے اتنے لوگ الخیر کے اوپر اعتماد اور بھروسہ کر رہے ہیں تو آپ کا بھی حق بنتا ہے کہ آپ اس ادارے کے ساتھ مل کر کے کچھ تعاون کریں کچھ کام کریں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی جزائے خیر عطا فرمائے اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی آپ کو توفیق عطا فرمائے ناظرین اکرام جو ہے اس وقت حالات ایسے ہیں کہ ہم ان تک کے صرف یہ کہہ لیجئے کہ اگر ایک پانی کا گلاس بھی پہنچا پائیں اور اس پانی کا گلاس پہنچانے کے اوپر ہماری سو پونڈ بھی کوسٹ آ جائے تو بھی میں مانتا ہوں کہ بہت ہی کار آمد ہے بہت ہی کار آمد ہے دیکھیں قرآن کریم کے اندر ایک آیت ہے اور جو ہے یعنی گنہگاروں کا اور جہنمیوں کا تذکرہ ہو رہا ہے اس میں جہنمیوں کا تذکرہ ہو رہا ہے قرآن is talking about basically those who will be who are going in hellfire اور ان کی نشانیاں بتائی جاتی ہیں 
ان نشانیوں میں ایک نشانی ہے ولا حض اللہ تو عامل مسکین کہ یہ ضرورت مندوں کو مسکینوں کو غریبوں کو کھلانے کے اوپر ابھارتے نہیں تھے دے دے ڈڈ ان انکریج پیپل ٹو فیڈ دا پور اینڈ نیڈی ٹو فیڈ مساکین دے ڈڈ ان انکریج اب جو ہے میں یہ چاہتا ہوں کہ اس آیت کا مصداق کوئی نہ بنے ہر ایک جو ہے اس آیت کے زمرے سے دور رہے ولا حض و اللہ تو عامل مسکین کہ وہ غریبوں کو کھلانے کے اوپر ابھارتے نہیں تھے تو اب اس کی ایک شکل تو یہی ہے کہ وہ ابھارتے نہیں تھے اور ایک شکل اس سے بھی بری ہے جو اس سے بھی بری ہے اس کی طرف میں بعد میں آتا ہوں لیکن یہ کہ اس سے بچنے کے لیے اس آیت کا مصداق آپ نہ ہو اس کے لیے ایک تو سب سے پہلے اپنے آپ کو ابھارے اپنی فیملی کو ابھارے اپنے متعلقین اور دوسروں کو جہاں تک آپ کی پہنچ ہو سکتی ہے ان کو ابھارے کہ بھائی یہ الخیر فاؤنڈیشن ادارہ یا فلاں ادارہ جو بھی ادارہ جو ہے آپ کو لگتا ہے اچھا کام کر رہا ہے بھائی یہ اچھا کام کر رہے ہیں ان کے ذریعے اس وقت غزہ کے لوگ ضرورت مند ہیں ان تک کہ ہم آٹا تیل چاول جو بھی ہو سکتا ہے وہ پہنچائیں جی تو اس وقت جو ہے غزہ سے زیادہ بھوک دنیا کے کس خطے میں ہوگی ان سے زیادہ بہتر اور ضرورت مند حقدار کون ہوں گے اس وقت لہذا ان کو جتنا بھی ہم پہنچا سکتے ہیں پہنچائیں اور اس کے اوپر ابھاریں دوسروں کو ابھاریں اور یہی ہم لوگ بھی کر رہے ہیں دوسری اس کی شکل ہے جو کہ اس سے خطرناک ہے اور وہی یہ کہ جو اچھے کام کر رہے ہیں اس میں رکاوٹ ڈالے جو اچھا کام کر رہے ہیں جو غریبوں کو مسکینوں کو کھلا رہے ہیں اس میں رکاوٹ ڈالے ایک ہے کہ کوئی ادارہ ہے وہ غلط کام کر رہا ہے گڑبڑی کر رہا ہے دھوکے بازی کر رہا ہے کوئی ادارہ گڑبڑی کر رہا ہے تو اس کا جو ہے پھر یس وہ گڑبڑی کو ہائی لائٹ کرنا ضروری ہے لیکن ایک ادارہ ماشاء اللہ اتنا زبردست کام کر رہا ہے اور وہ نظر بھی آ رہا ہے صرف دعویٰ نہیں ہے بلکہ دلیل بھی ساتھ میں ہے صرف دعویٰ نہیں ہے بلکہ ایویڈنس بھی ساتھ میں ہے جو ہے ود ایویڈنس ماشاء اللہ ایک ادارہ ڈیلیور کر رہا ہے اور اس میں جو ہے اس ادارے کے لیے یا اور کسی اداروں کی مخالفت کریں جو اچھے کام کر رہے ہیں تو پھر یہ جو ہے ولا حض اللہ تو عامل مسکین کا بہت ہی خطرناک مصداق ہوگا یہ شخص ہم اگر جو ہے غریبوں کو جو کھانا کھلا رہے ہیں ان تک جو پہنچا رہے ہیں اس کی اگر مخالفت کرتے ہیں تو یہ ہمارے لیے بہت خطرناک ہے اور بہت بڑا ڈر کا مقام ہے میں یہ نہیں میں یہ بات اس لیے نہیں کہہ رہا ہوں کہ جو ہے کوئی مخالفت میرے سامنے آئی ہے الحمد اس سال میرے سامنے کوئی ایسا واقعہ نہیں آیا کسی کا کہ جو ہے انہوں نے مخالفت کی ہو یہ وہ جو ہے سوالات لوگ کرتے ہیں جو ہے سوالات کا جہاں تک ہوتا ہے جس جو ہے اپنے ڈونر ہیں جو اپنے منسل متعلقین ہیں ان کو اور اقرا ٹی وی کے ذریعے جوابات دیتے ہیں لیکن کوئی اگر کہیں سے اٹھ کے کھڑا ہو جائے کہ بھائی مجھے ایویڈنس دو اور یہ وہ آپ ہمارے آفس آئیں ہم آپ کو کیوں بھیجیں ایویڈنس جس کو چاہیے وہ ہمارے آفس آئیں ہاں اگر کسی نے کوئی پروجیکٹ اسپانسر کیا ہے کسی نے کوئی ٹرک یا لوری اسپانسر کی ہے کسی نے کوئی یتیم بچے کو اسپانسر کیا ہے کسی نے کوئی پانی کا کنویں اسپانسر کیا ہے تو ان کا حق بنتا ہے کہ ان کو ایویڈنس دیا جائے کہ بھائی آپ کا پروجیکٹ تو ڈونر کا تو حق بنتا ہے لیکن اور وہ ڈونرس کا بھی حق بنتا ہے جنہوں نے اس پروجیکٹ کے نہیں لیے کسی اور پروجیکٹ کے لیے ڈونیٹ کیا ان کا بھی حق بنتا ہے کہ ان کو جو ہے انفارمیشن ملتی رہے لیکن کوئی ہے جو ڈونر بھی نہیں ہے کچھ بھی نہیں اور وہ سوالات کریں تو ہم ان سے یہی کہتے ہیں بھائی آپ ہمارے آفس آئیں آ کر کے جو ہے ہمارے ساتھ بیٹھے ہم آپ کو سارا دکھاتے ہیں ماشاء اللہ تو اس طریقے کا معاملہ ہے کہ اللہ سبحانہ و نے یہ ادارہ عطا فرمایا آپ کو اور ہمیں کہ جس کے ذریعے سے دنیا کے بہترین طریقے سے جو ہے کام ہو رہے ہیں ان کاموں کو سراہنے کی ضرورت ہے اور اس کو اپریشیٹ کرنے کا اس کا اس کی شکر گزاری کا ایک طریقہ سب سے بہترین طریقہ یہ ہے کہ اس کا حصہ بنے ہم آج میں آپ سب کو دعوت دیتا ہوں کہ جتنے بھی لوگ یہ اپیل دیکھ رہے ہیں آپ کا جو ہے بڑے سے بڑے لیول کے اوپر جتنا بھی ہو سکے حصہ اس ادارے کے ساتھ لگنا چاہیے تاکہ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی اس ادارے کے ذریعے آپ کے تعاون سے جو ہے بے شمار لوگوں کو انشاءاللہ بھوک اور پیاس سے مفلسی سے بچائے انشاءاللہ
جزاکم اللہ الخیر فی امان اللہ والسلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أنعم علينا بفضله في محافظات شمال قطاع غزة في مدينة غزة وفي شمال قطاع غزة بل وجدنا هذا المكان الذي يحتوي على مجموعة كبيرة من الخراف والتي ندر توفرها في السوق وندرت وجودها في محافظات شمال قطاع غزة هذا الخراف والتي يتراوح تكلفة الواحد منها حسب سعر السوق لهذه الأيام 1100 إلى 1200 دولار هذا الخراف يمكن العمل على ذبحها وتوزيعها أو ذبحها وطهوها كوجبات إفطار صائم خاصة وأننا مقبلون على شهر رمضان المبارك خلال الأيام القليلة القادمة اليوم التاسع من مارس استطعنا بعد جهد كبير من الوصول لهذا المكان وإيجاد هذه الخراف هذه الخراف التي ستكون إن شاء الله حاجة وسدا لجوع وحاجة الأطفال والعوائل والأسر في قطاع غزة هذه الأسر التي تعاني من الجوع والحصار بالتزامن مع فتك آلة الحرب عليهم وإذ أننا ندعوكم أيها المتبرعون والمحسنون والمساهمون بأموالكم وصدقاتكم وزكواتكم بأن تقدموا كل ما لديكم من من أموال ومن عطاء لأهل شمال قطاع غزة في هذه الأيام والتي انطبقت فيها الآية الكريمة أو إطعام في يوم ذي مصغبة هذه الأيام التي يعانون فيها القهر والجوع نسأل الله تعالى أن يجعل عملكم صالحا لوجه الكريم وأن يتقبل صدقاتكم وأموالكم لا زلنا مستمرين في البحث لاجل مد يد العطاء لاهل قطاع غزه بنوايانا الطيبة بتيسير كل خير لأهل قطاع غزة يسر الله لنا بأن دلنا أحد المتواجدين خلال تصوير الخراف على مكان لتواجد العجول في هذا في محافظات شمال قطاع غزة هذه العجول التي سيتم إن شاء الله بتبرع وبجودي وبعطاء المحسنين وفاعلي الخير ذبحها وتوزيعها إما لحوما أو طهوها كوجبات كوجبات إفطار صائم على المواطنين المتواجدين في محافظات شمال قطاع غزة في مدينة غزة ومدن شمال قطاع غزة لذا ندعوكم ونهيب بكم أيها المحسنون أن تمدوا يد العطاء وتتبرعوا بأجود ما لديكم لأهل قطاع غزة خاصة وأنهم يعانون من الخوف والجوع وهذا ينطبق على الآية الكريمة الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف نسأل الله تعالى أن يكون خيرا وفيرا وعطاءكم كبيرا ودعاء أهل غزة إن شاء الله لكم وفيرا إن شاء الله تعالى والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As displaced children in Gaza prepare for Ramadan, with the support of the Al Care Foundation, a sense of hope and resilience can be felt amongst the community. Despite the challenges they face, the children are coming together to observe this holy month with faith and determination. Al Care's support not only provides them with the necessary essentials for Ramadan, but also a sense of belonging and solidarity. As they break their fast each evening, the children are reminded of the importance of compassion and unity in times of hardship. Through their shared experiences, they find strength in their newfound communities and faith, forging bonds that will help them overcome the difficulties they face. Ramadan is a time of reflection, prayer, and gratitude for these displaced children as they navigate their uncertain circumstances with the support of the Al Care Foundation on the ground. Let us remember the displaced children of Gaza who are in desperate need of our support. These innocent children have been through unimaginable hardships and trauma. 
and it is our duty to provide them with the assistance they need to rebuild their lives. Your generosity can make a significant impact on their well-being and future prospects. Together, we can make a difference in the lives of these vulnerable children and offer them hope for a better tomorrow. Your contribution, no matter how big or small, can make a lasting difference in their lives. The displaced children of Gaza need your support in this holy month of Ramadan. Donate with confidence with Al Care Foundation today. During Ramadan, a time of spiritual reflection and communal prayer, mosques traditionally serve as sanctuaries for the faithful. Despite the destruction of more than 520 mosques in Gaza, Palestinians remain unwavering in their dedication. Muhammad, who tragically lost family members and his home to the conflict, emphasizes their resilience even amidst adversity. Today, as we usher in the holy month of Ramadan, we do so amidst the wounds, tragedies and displacement inflicted by war. Yet, we persevere in prayer even in the open, for the Israelis have destroyed our mosques. Nevertheless, we are resolute in observing Taraweeh prayers, reciting the Quran and upholding all our religious rights undeterred by adversity. While hopes for a ceasefire before Ramadan were high, the holy month arrived before peace could be attained. Despite ongoing hardships, Palestinians expressed determination for Ramadan to endure, mirroring their own survival. Despite the siege, hunger and tragedies, we stand firm in our homeland, knowing that our reward from God is immense. No matter the hardships imposed upon us, we will remain steadfast in our land. We will bake bread in clay ovens, fashion decorations from cardboard and balloons, and faithfully observe the fast during Ramadan. We had hoped to welcome Ramadan within the comfort of our homes, but this was not to be, as it was decreed by God. The plight of the people is grave, Many cannot afford basic necessities, and prices soar beyond reach. As twilight falls over impoverished camps, Abdullah and his neighbors gather to break their fast, yearning for an end to the nightmare. This year is different from all preceding years. We find ourselves displaced, far from our homes, and separated from our loved ones. The challenges we face are daunting, as evidenced by our current existence in tents. The dirt is now sharing our food but we hold on to hope for a brighter tomorrow. Ramadan arrives amid a humanitarian crisis, with Israel's strikes intensifying the enclave's suffering. UN reports indicate that a quarter of Gaza's population is on the brink of famine. In the blessed month of Ramadan's embrace, where hearts are touched by mercy and grace, let us embark on a noble quest to save an orphan and put their fears to rest. In the depths of shadows, where sorrow resides, where innocence fades and hope barely survives, there lies a fragile soul adrift in despair, an orphan heart burdened by life's unfair. Let us gather our kindness like the divine rain to nurture the seeds of love, to ease their pain. For in this world of chaos, where cruelty thrives, we must be the beacon that keeps hope alive. With tender hands, let us embrace their fears. Let compassion guide us through their unshed tears. For every child, abandoned and alone, deserves a chance to find a place to call their own. In their eyes, the echoes of shattered dreams. In their hearts, the yearning for love redeems. Let us be the shelter, the refuge they seek, a haven of solace where their spirits can speak. Let us not turn away in ignorance blind, but open our hearts and let compassion unwind. For in saving an orphan, we save ourselves too, unleashing the power of love, pure and true. Let us rise as a collective embrace and erase the scars that time cannot efface. 
for every child lost in the depths of despair deserves a chance to know that someone does care in this ramadan let us save a life amidst the darkness the strife for in our unity we shall find the beauty of humanity divinely designed بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله رب العالمين لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك فلك الحمد كل ولك الشكر كل عاجله وعاجلة في الدنيا والآخرة وصل الله م على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين خاصة على سيد الرسل وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear respected brothers and sisters and welcome to another segment of tonight's live appeal my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the blessing of Iman. Allah has given us the ni'mah, the blessing that we can't thank Him enough for. And that is, uh, you know, first and foremost, the blessing of Iman. B the b having the blessing of being in the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And being amongst that group of people, my brothers and sisters, who can call their leader Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we know and we subhanAllah are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the people of truth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this nation upon this people and, and the nation of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has placed a responsibility on our shoulders we are here in this world for a very limited time and after this time has finished we will go on to the next world to the hereafter we, before we are we, before is decided of what will happen with us where we will end up, a hisab will take place, an accountability will take place, and we are accountable to the, 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 the most highest, subhanAllah, the Lord of all the worlds, of all of our deeds. We will have to answer for every action that we have done, we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every penny that we have spent, we will have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every word we have spoken. And this is the reality, whether we like it, or whether we don't like it and right now as we speak this nation is under attack the nation of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is under attack and if you ask me where then I could say everywhere from the from the lands of Yemen in Arabia to the lands of Sham the entire region of Sham subhanAllah is under attack from subhanallah look at Kashmir you look at subhanallah all the different places around the world you see Muslims are being persecuted everywhere Muslims are being attacked everywhere Muslims are suffering everywhere people are going through hunger everywhere everywhere 
And right now when we speak about suffering, we speak about pain, we speak about, you know, attacking Muslims who are being attacked because they believe in Allah and, his last, and the last day, they believe in Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they understand the importance and the significance of Al-Aqsa, then we remember the name of Gaza. We remember the name of Palestine. And this land and this, 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 these people and this land is not a land unknown to us. It isn't because of the war that we are now away of a place called Gaza, a place called Palestine. In fact, when we speak about Kashmir, we speak about other places. You know, we, we might, many people might not even have heard of these places if it wasn't for subhanAllah, all the atrocities that are taking place, for all the zulm that is taking place in those lands. But when it comes to Palestine, when it comes to Gaza, these places are known to us because these are connected with our Iman. They are connected with our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if there was no war going on, even if there's no persecution happening, we would have all known about the land of Palestine, about Ar Ard al Muqaddas, about Baytul Muqaddis, about Subhanallah Gaza, about these areas in Palestine. Because these are attached to our Iman, not just Subhanallah identity, not just the country we live in, or the flag that we you know, hold above, high above our hands and heads. My brothers and sisters, we all know, and, and, and subhanAllah, you know, I don't have to go every time into detail what's happening in Gaza because we are all aware of what's happening in Gaza. But sometimes, my brothers and sisters, it is good to be reminded. Because the life we are living, the, t the time, how we are spending it, the, the work, the businesses, the family, the so many different things are happening around us that our mind is not always fixated on Gaza and we can all understand. But just because our mind is not fixated on Gaza all the time does not mean the people of Gaza are not suffering all the time. The people of Gaza are suffering day in, day out, whether we remember or whether we don't remember. Whether we feel sad or we don't feel sad. Whether we help them or we don't help them, they are suffering. They are in pain and they need our help. These people who are living on a small strip in the Middle East, who have no access to the internet, who have no electricity which has been cut off, the telecommunications has been cut off. The borders have been closed and very limited amount of aid is allowed to go in. These people, subhanAllah, whilst being in this dunya, it is as if, subhanAllah, they've got nothing, you know, they're going for them. No food, no water, no communications, nothing. But despite all those blockings, you know, they have found a way to the internet to upload some stuff. When we upload something to the internet, when we go on the internet, on Facebook, on sorry, Instagram, when we go on, 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 on TikTok or whatever else, you know, other platform we are on, when we go on these platforms, why do we go on there, my brothers and sisters? We go on there because we want to keep, we stay up to date with what's happening around the world. You want to look at what the latest trends are. You want to see what the celebrities are wearing. We want to share our pictures so you know, we can show the world that look, this is how I'm living my life. You know, despite our lives being completely opposite to what we are showing on social media. My brothers and sisters, this is what we do when we upload to social media. We want some likes, we want some shares, we want to comment on other people and all, all of this happens you know, on our social medias. But when the people of Gaza are using their social media in the middle of this genocide, they are not doing this to enjoy themselves a little. They are not going on social media and uploading videos to share, subhanAllah, just how great their life is. But when the people of Gaza upload to social media, it is a cry for help. It's a plea for help. It is them trying to tell us, look, this is what's happening to us. Look how our life is compared to yours. Look at how our people are being killed and murdered. Look at the hunger we are facing. Look at all of these things that is happening to us. Will you help us or will you ignore us? 
And this is why they upload to social media. Subhan, look at the contrast. Look at the difference. We upload pictures of our food that we had in the restaurant. And they upload pictures of the empty plates. We upload pictures with our new clothes on. And they upload pictures with those same clothes they've been wearing for the past three, four months. Which have God knows how many stitches in there. Are dirty, not clean enough, subhanAllah. But that's the only thing they have to wear. We go on holiday and we take pictures to show how much we're enjoying. And they show pictures and videos to show how much they're in pain. They are going right, subhanAllah, opposite. Uh, they're experiencing right the opposite things of what we are experiencing, subhanAllah. So I understand, my brothers and sisters, and I'm not going to say it is not understandable. I understand when we sometimes forget what's happening in Gaza, or when our mind is occupied somewhere else, that we don't pay attention to Gaza. And sometimes days go by, sometimes weeks go by, until we remember again, oh no, this is what's happening in Gaza. My brothers and sisters, I want to share some videos with you. And in these videos, these people of Gaza are trying to tell, give us a message. And I want all of us to watch these videos together. So for a moment we are reminded again. Because we all forget. So we all reminded again that this is actually what the people of Gaza are going through. So let's go to the first video. And inshallah when we come back we'll discuss it further. <laughs> أنا بكونت بالليل هيك أتسيبهم يبردوا يضلهم مع الجوع طول الليل يعيطوا لما يجوعوا إيش يعملوا يحطوا الحرام عليهم عشان أمهم ما توجعش عشانهم يعني أنا بالليل بكون جوعانة بالليل إيش عشان ما يطلعش صوت الجوع عندي في بطني بطني بضل يكركز بالليل بحط الحرام على تمي عشان ماما ما تسمعش إني جوعانة عشان ماما ما تتوجعش عليا بس برضه الحمد لله في غيرنا مش حاسس بهذا النعمة اللي إحنا حاسين فيها. كان إحنا إذا بدنا هيك يصير فينا تشوف أطفال العالم الثانية كيف في تركيا وفي اليابان وفي الصين وفي أمريكا وفي أوروبا كيف عايشين؟ عايشين أحسن من عيشتنا على أقل أبوهم أمهم جنبيهم إخواتهم جنبيهم أغراضهم جنبيهم كتبهم مدرستهم شدتهم كل إشي جنبيهم كل إشي يعني ما بقولوش يعني بلا أقول إشي قبل ما يقولوا بدهم إياه إحنا هنا يعني بنقول مئة مرة بدنا هذا الإشي ما حدش بحقق لنا إياه. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters. For a moment, we might have forgotten, Subhanallah, you know, after all the blessings we had, or after all the food that we had, now our stomachs and, and, and Subhanallah are full. Khana khaliya amne, you know, we prayed our salah, our maghrib, and now we are sitting for a few moments to relax. We might have forgotten for a moment, in, all, in the midst of all of these blessings, that what the children of Gaza are going through. What the people of Gaza are going through. And this is why, you know, we are sharing these videos. It's not to, you know, make anyone feel bad, but to remind each other that this is what the people of Gaza are going through. This is how they are feeling. And I know you care. And I know you, subhanAllah, might have seen many videos on social media, but there is such a large group of people who has no access to these videos, whose feeds, subhanAllah, is, are not showing these videos. So it's important we all watch these videos together so we are reminded of the pain. Look at what she was saying. Look at what she was saying. She gets so hungry at night that her stomach makes noises. You know, like, subhanAllah, you know, sometimes you've been hungry for a while and, you know, your, your, your stomach is making noises. And that's of someone like us that, you know, has food readily available. Imagine someone in Gaza who hasn't had food for a while. Who hasn't had a proper meal in, in, in weeks. Whatever they had was, was just bits and pieces here and there. Some bread here, something to dip it in, you know, maybe something here and, you know, something. Few, little, little but not a proper meal. Surviving, just hanging on, hanging by. Imagine the noises their stomach must be making. The fact that she says that he makes so much noise that I have to cover my mouth. I have to cover myself so my mother doesn't hear. And this is a child. This is a kid. 
She should be enjoying her life. She should be playing in the play field. She should be going out with her friends. She should be eating healthy and growing up to be you know, a strong, healthy young woman. But look instead what's happening with her. Look how she's living her life. Look at the hunger she is facing. I'm going to go to the next video. Because in the next video, you know, we see another uh, perspective of someone in Gaza. Because all of these videos have been filmed by someone, right? Someone in Gaza has filmed this. So all of these videos are perspectives of people. And imagine whatever you are seeing, you didn't see sitting from in inside your living room, but you saw whilst you were there yourself. So imagine whatever you are seeing in that, in that screen is not seeing in on screen, but imagine you were seeing that with your own eyes in Gaza. How would you respond? How would we respond? Let's go to the next video and we'll come back. بنتي مش عارفه اطلعها الى 25 يوم تحت الانقاض هذه بنتي تتجاوز السبع شهور سبع شهور تتجاوز وقاعد بشتغل بايدي باظافري عشان اطلع بنتي اللي لها 25 يوم تحت الانقاض انا بطلع فيها قاعد تحت الانقاض بعد 25 يوم العالم وين الامم المتحده وين الدوليين والعالم وال... انا هو بنك اهداف بدي افهم هو بنك اهداف في طفلي 25 يوم ابوه بيشتغل بقدم خدمه مش عارف يطلعها بعد 25 يوم بحاول يطلع بنته اشلاء مقطعه الراس لحال والايد لحال 25 يوم من اصل قديش 28 جثه في هذا المكان 28 جثه كفي سبحان الله Whilst we are living our lives and we're busy with things, whatever we have to do, this is what they are busy with. This is what they are busy with. They are the father. Imagine 25 days, 25 days, almost a month. He's been trying to dig his daughter out of that rubble, but he can't find her. He can't get her out because of the, 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 the rubble is it, it, too big. He can't move it with his hands, but he's still trying. He wants to, you know, if our family has a photo of us, what do we do? We read his prayer, then we take him to his grave, then we keep him there for him to rest. You know, we, we, we lay them to rest. We do the janaza, we, we pray for them. We get closure. We put sand, sand over them. And this is also a way to get closure as a human being. And this is why the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of burying the dead. You, you put the sand over them yourself. You, you hand them over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you can, you know, move on. Especially as a parent. How many fathers are watching this right now? How many mothers are watching this right now? We all have family members that we love. Imagine we, subhanAllah, a loved one that is someone we love daily. Maybe it's not, you know, someone very, you know, directly related, but someone maybe also you love generally. Right? A, fr a very good friend of yours, a cousin of yours, who are, you know, related but not straight away, you know, very close related. You know, all, all of these people, we are beloved to us. Right? And imagine we leave them one day and they are attacked and they are under the rubble. Wouldn't we want to get their bodies out? Give, you know, put them in a coffin, make dua for them, lower them into a grave, and hand them over to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Would you like our loved ones to be rotting away inside, subhanAllah, large pieces of rubble of a house? No. And this is a father, it's a father. And only a father will be able to explain to you the pain a father goes through when he has to subhanAllah deal with the death of his children. Ask a father who has lost children what it feels like to lose children and then ask a father who hasn't lost any of his children and he, he will tell you how much he hurts him as much as the one that lost one because just the thought of losing a child is too painful to handle. And here we are seeing these men 
our brothers digging through the rubble trying to find the body of a daughter in the next video you know these are all families these are all people in the next video you're gonna see subhanallah and grandmother a grandmother with a message for all of us because the victims in Gaza are not just children are not just women are not just men they're everyone One's a grandfather, another was a grandmother, one was a grandchild, one was an auntie, other was an uncle, one was a father, one was the daughter, one was a mother, one was the son. You know, these are all relationships that these people have. These people love in, uh, live in a community. So they are connected with many, many people that they love and they are loved by them. And subhanAllah, you know, the, the, father, the, the, the pain of a parent is different than the pain of a sibling. The pain of losing a sibling is different from losing a grandparent. The pain of the grandparent of losing a grandchild is different to the one of, of the parent. You know, all of these are different relationships and they have their own pain. They have their own relationships. They have their own memories. Let's go to the next video and see what this grandmother, this grandma has to tell us about her situation. هذا ابن ابني ولد في المدرسة هنا واتشهد أبوه بعد أسبوع الحين أبوه مطنعوش تحت الرب ما جه السنة في جوبه هو ما تقول لا شو ما تقول أيوة حليب حليب أيوة ولا بنبت ولا حليب ولا معي عاد حليب أولاد ثلاثة راهم ما ليش حدا عنهم من وين بدين Subhanallah, look at what these people are facing, my brothers and sisters. You know, situations that we don't think or don't come to our attention. But this is why these people make these videos. Not just to, you know, show some, some, some lifestyle. They are trying to show you their pain, what they are going through. So we wake up, we, you, that the people around the world, their brothers, their sisters, the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, does not just watch on that we do something about it. This grandmother who, is the, who has got a grandson, subhanAllah, in her arms, a baby, a baby. Her son has passed away, all of her sons have passed away. Now she has to look after the son. She has to look after, subhanAllah, her son's children, an old lady. Where is she going to get the money from? Where is she going to get the food from? Where is she going to get everything she needs to look after the baby? You know, those who had babies understand, you know, what it's needed to look after the baby. You know, you need nappies, you need this, you need that, you need milk, you need food, you need, you know, all, all of these items. You know, where is she going to get it from? How is she going to get hands on those in a place where there's a genocide taking place? Forget any shops open to go and shop uh, for, in a local, for groceries. There is no bread and flour available. Forget subhanAllah, you know, baby items. And this is subhanAllah, the suffering of everyone. Grandmothers, grandfathers and, and everyone in subhanAllah, their family, everyone is suffering, everyone is in pain. Every video that we see, subhanAllah, people are in pain. People are just trying to convey how much they're suffering. So we see these videos, my brothers and sisters, and we wake up. You wake up. We all wake up. We have a responsibility on our shoulders again towards these people. We cannot ignore them. By changing the channel, by changing uh, you know, the mind, by, by moving on and, and going to a different room, yes, maybe for a few minutes we will, you'll be relieved of that burden on you. And you will say, you know what, I, I, I don't really want to watch this. You know, Change the channel. But today you can change the channel, but tomorrow when Allah is asking us, and this will happen, when Allah is asking us, will you be able to change channel? Will you be able to start thinking about something else? 
would we be able to walk away and, 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 and try and, and start ourselves doing something else so our mind goes off it? No, we will have to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are seeing little, little children being separated from their parents. Young, young children, subhanAllah, who, you know, uh, subhanAllah, in fact, let's go watch the next video and then we'll come back. Let me show you the video first. ليش خايفة؟ يا اخي مسكين لاي حدا ما تقلقيش هينا انا ليش خايفة يا عمي حبيبي؟ انا كنت انا كنت انا كنت بس انه حتى تخلص عشان امي مسافرة وبتمنى تيجي ان شاء الله بتخلص الحرب وبتشوفي امك تعيطيش شاطرة شوف لايك اي سيد ماي برذرز اند سيسترز Little, little children walking around Gaza, wishing they were together with their mom. Maybe, you know, the mom is, is a different part of Gaza. Maybe she's a doctor in the hospital. You know, I don't know where her mother is. But look at, subhanAllah, the pain these little children are going through. I believe you have a call. To send money to Gaza. Assalamu alaikum. So, wa alaikum assalam. What's your name and where you calling from, sister? Uh, I'm, I'm London, from Masha. London, uh, Kamar Kabir. Just I like to know, clarify the, yes. um, in, uh, the uh, things we are sending or money they're uh, reaching there or? Yes, yes, uh, it is. So we are, we've got a warehouse in Egypt and we have uh, a warehouse in, uh, uh, well, operation in Jordan where we are sending it by plane from two different borders. So okay. we've got the Rafah border and we've got a border in Israel from, which, uh, from where we are sending the aid in. And who, who, who's, taking, who's, who's taking all this? Uh, Al Khair Foundation. Personally? Yes, ourselves. Is okay, our because my, some of my sister and brother in uh, you, you, different you, places, you, yeah, you can they see, asked yeah, me, yeah, I said, yeah, definitely yeah, going. If you, if you see on TV right now, if you see on TV right now, behind yes. me is a report from Al Jazeera. They were showing it, we, you know, we don't call them or so, they're just showing themselves. And, okay. and, and this, was, this was reported live. So you could see the Al Khair trucks entering. This is, this is in Gaza. Okay. So, okay. you know, Alhamdulillah, our trucks are entering Gaza. Okay, Inshallah. thank you very much. Yeah, no Jazakallah problem. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Alaikum. So yeah, Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I will come to our delivery in a moment and I'll go into detail about our delivery in Gaza. But I want to, you know, show these videos. You know, look at that girl we just saw. She's got a small backpack. She had, I think she had a blanket or something in the other hand. And that's all she's, she, she must have had, subhanAllah, and has, you know, right now. Moving from one place to another place, she said, they had to, someone shouted, they had to evacuate, so they evacuated, and then subhanAllah, since then she's saying, you know, she's, she's been, she, she, she's been, subhanAllah, in pain, she's scared, she goes, I'm scared. She's scared, look at subhanAllah, you know, young children, innocent, they, subhanAllah, they, 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 they didn't do anything. But they are the ones that have to suffer. They are the ones that have to go through hunger. They are the ones who are displaced, who have no home. Their homes have been destroyed. All our toys are gone. You know, that's what children care about. All my books are gone. My bedroom is gone. Right? But subhanAllah, look what she's asking for. She wants to be reunited with her mother. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunited with her mother. Ameen, ameen. But this are the stories that the Palestinians themselves are uploading so we can see some, you know, it's, it's still bearable to watch, some it becomes unbearable, some, sometimes it becomes difficult to watch these videos. But this is the reality on the ground in Gaza, this is what they are going through, this is what they are feeling every day. The, mess, the, the chance she got to come in front of a camera whether it was a phone, whether it was whatever they were recording it with, the message she gives out is what? She could have said a lot of things, but she goes, I'm scared. And so many children in Gaza are scared. And what we are saying here, my brothers and sisters, is maybe we cannot stop the bombs. We can't, we can't. I, well, I at least can't, can't stop the bombs. But what we can do, my brothers and sisters, is to provide some comfort to these children. 
let them know that they're not alone in all of this that they don't have to suffer alone that yes you know you, you, you're going through a difficult time but you will have someone to feed you or someone to be there for you someone to give you a tent someone to give you a, a pillow and a mattress to sleep on someone to give you food for the entire month someone to give you subhanallah hygiene kit so you can clean yourself you can wash your face you can wash your hands you can wash your hair you can you know do all the basics right we go to the next video and this is my brothers and sisters you know this is what you're gonna see now what you're gonna see now is reality as well and what and, and this is something the Palestinians and the Gazans are facing every day something these are the scenes that are very become very normal to them this has become everyday life so let's go to the next video Subhanallah This is what they are going through This is Gaza This is Gaza unscripted, unscripted. This is Gaza uncensored This is Gaza as it is being shown to you A little child is holding the dead body of his younger brother Little brother who is subhanallah still, still maybe a baby Now this child, subhanAllah, you know, how is he going to live his life with that, with, that, with that, subhanAllah, memory and that image in his mind of his dead brother and he's holding his body to the streets of Gaza. Look at, subhanAllah, look, look at, subhanAllah, how they have to live their life. And look at our children. What's missing from the lives of our children? Nothing. They've got everything. Maybe they don't realize. Maybe they don't realize that what they have is, is everything and, and they might be complaining about subhanAllah, little little thing. But look at subhanAllah, the children of Gaza, look at how they are living their lives. And if there are any children watching, look at the children of Gaza, look how they are, have, to, have to live their life. Not everyone in the world has a life that we have in the UK, in Europe, in the West. We have everything available to them, but them, they don't even have the bait. The fact that he has to walk the streets of Gaza with his dead body's arm, and subhanAllah, it looks like, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, my brothers and sisters, he's walking down the streets, and when he stands still, people gather around. I mean, when he's walking around, not many people are stopping by, because they are, look, you know, behind them, look behind them. Look around them. People are looking at him, but you know, they're just carrying on with the daily life. Because this has become such a regular occurrence in Gaza for people to be walking the streets with the dead bodies wrapped in a shroud, subhanAllah, of the children, of the babies, of the toddlers, of the teenagers. And here you have a little child walking around with the body of his little brother. This is reality in Gaza, my brothers and sisters. This is how it is. And this is again unscripted. This is what they are experiencing every day. And then I want to reflect back upon us again. Are our experiences the same as this? Is our reality the same as this? Are our blessings the same as this? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Let's move to the next video. And in this video, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's, a, it's a girl. And she's scared again. You know, let's watch the video in fact. Subhanallah, this is a doctor. He's saving lives. He's saving lives, but he gets the news that his house was bombed. Again, 
a glimpse. This is, these are just glimpses. A few seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds from the lives of these people. And their lives are not 40 seconds long, my brothers and sisters. They have been around since October 7. And until now, the amount of suffering these people had to face every day is unbearable for any one of us. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not testing us with this means that we would not be able to bear whatever they are bearing. We would not be dealing with it in this manner. Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul beyond it can bear. And the fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving these people these tests means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them the strength for it as well. To bear some of that pain emotionally, psychologically. We would go crazy. Forget experiencing losing family members. Forget anything. Imagine if, they took, if, if, if someone took us right now and, and took you from your living room and I picked you up and put you into Gaza. You've got no family there. You've got no friends there. You've got nothing there. You just being there. I'm just, me just being there. We're going to go crazy. We're going to think, how are these people living like this? How are these people surviving like this? How are they bearing the hunger and the constant sound of bombs? How are they hearing the drones that are constantly buzzing? How are they bearing to, to burying their dead ones one after the other after the other? How are they bearing, subhanAllah, losing the homes they were living in and now having to live in a makeshift camp? How are they bearing going to the toilet that they have to share with four, five hundred different people? How can these people bear drinking dirty water to survive and then getting kidney diseases? How can these people do it? We would go crazy. But the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not put us there means that they, this is not our test of the bombing and the losing of life. Our test is a different one. It's a different one. And what's our test, my brothers and sisters? Our test is how are we, the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those people that say, we say, Amanna billahi wa rasooli, that we believe, in, and we believe in Allah and His Messenger, that we say we believe in the hereafter, we say we believe in the Book of Allah, we say we believe in the angels, we say we believe in all of these things. We say we believe in Jannah and Jahannam. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, we say we believe all these things, we say it. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a test on us like this. And he puts these images in front of us. And, and people like um, uh, um Khalid, our Uncle Khalid that you just saw with the orange imama. They, subhanAllah, you know, we see their pictures and we see their videos and how they are consoling others. How they are being, subhanAllah, are suffering. How they are in pain, but they are, they are facing with iman. They are facing it with yaqeen. They are facing it with trust and tawakkul on Allah. They've got the dead people in their arms. The shuhada, and they're saying, Hasbun Allah, wa name al-wakil. They're saying, La inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. They're saying, Ya Rabb, be pleased with us. Ya Rabb, this is for you, Ya Rabb. Our test is of our Iman here. Our test is here of our trust in Allah. Our, our Iman is how much we have tawakkul on Allah as well, just like the Palestinians, just like the people of Gaza. The same questions apply to the test, but the test itself is different. Their test is losing their children. children. Their test is losing their loved ones. Their test is losing their homes. Their test is living in poverty. Their test is living in hunger and thirst and subhanAllah being in pain because of the wounds and, and their legs being chopped off. Their test is zulm. What's our test? What's our test? Our test. Our test, my brothers and sisters, is our comforts. Our test is the water that Allah has taken away from them, but Allah has given us. 
Our test is the food that Allah has taken away from them, but Allah has given us. Our test is our homes that Allah has taken away from them, but has given us. Allah is testing us through our wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away from them, but He has put us through that test. He has given it to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has a message for all of humanity, for you and I. Anfiku, anfiku, anfiku. Spend, spend, spend in the path of Allah. Give to Allah. Man yuqridillaha qardan hasana. Who is going to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan? You know, wa tujahidu bi anfusikum wa amwalikum. It is to strive in the path, in the, in, in, in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with yourselves and your wealth. Giving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that one way to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are truly you know, uh, uh, gr grateful for the blessings that Allah has bestowed upon us. Because that's the conditions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put of, of, of showing gratefulness. You cannot and we cannot, my brothers and sisters, say I'm grateful for Allah has given us. Wallahi, I'm sajde bhi kar rahe Allah ko, sajde kar ya Rabb. Tera shukar, tera shukar, tu ne itna mujhe paisa diya. Tera shukar mujhe aise gaadi diya aur itna ghar, itse ghar diya. Tera shukar me karta hu, aur aisa itna bada shukar karta hu, aur main sajde me gir raha hu. Magar ek bhi paisa Allah ke raaste me mara kharch nahi ho raha. Ye shukar nahi hota. This is not shukar. We don't have to pay lip service to Allah and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Allah takes a qasam and an oath by time. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ That indeed man is in loss. Man, all of us are losing. Every minute, every, every minute and second of the day we are losing. That's the standard rule. We are always losing. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Accept. So by standard definition, everyone is losing. Then Allah says, except the one. Amanu. Illa ladina amanu. Except those who believe. But is believing enough? Is believing enough? No. Allah says, Illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. And they do pious deeds. They do good actions, good deeds. That's how important it is. Allah has not separated these two. That's it. Just believe and that will be enough. No. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ So, who is everyone losing except those people who are believing in Allah. And then these believing people are doing good actions. And the good actions, subhanAllah, وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ And they call towards the truth and they call towards patience. So brothers and sisters doing shukr does not mean just to believe and just pay, say empty slogans here. We have to show physically by giving our wealth, by showing that Allah did the passe apne mujhe diye, the wealth that you have given me. I'm not, I'm not gonna get so attached to this money that I will forget the duty that's put, that you have put on me. That yeah, Allah, this money and this house and this cause that you have given me, this is not gonna divert me from the remembrance of your, of you, Ya Rabb. That the, the luxuries and the comforts that you have provided for me, Ya Rabb, is not going to take me away from my duty towards my brothers and sisters. This is the test. Exactly, this is the test. And you might be asked, you know, your brother Harun, you said, tawakkul and, uh, you know, relying on Allah and believing in Allah, they, the questions are the same for us and them. But the actions are different. The conditions and the situations are different. Because when these people lose someone, what did they do? They tawakkul on Allah. They are pleased with Allah. They are content with Allah. They have no complaint against Allah. That why have you taken my son? They will say Alhamdulillah. Yes, they will cry. They will feel sad like any of us. But in the end, they will, they will be happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be happy with all of this, my brothers and sisters. We are also in a situation. And we have the choice of either keeping the money in our pockets and not trusting Allah because that's what we're doing when we, when we don't want to donate 
We are saying, Ya Allah, I don't trust you enough with my wealth. Ya Allah, I would love to give it, but I don't trust you. Because, you know what I mean, I've got the money right here. And if I give it away, I don't know if you're going to give me money back or not. You know, that's what we are doing basically. And the trust comes into play, the tawakkul, the reliance on Allah comes into place exactly this time. That when you are parting with your money, you are doing it knowing in your heart that the money that I'm going to give away, the money that I'm going to spend on the people of Gaza, on the people of Yemen, the people of Syria, is not going to be wasted. Is not, I'm not going to lose this money. Rather, Ya Rabb, I'm spending my money in your path because you gave it to me and you provided it to me in the first place. And I know because you said in the Quran, your Nabi said in many, many hadiths that sadaqah does not decrease your wealth. That you said that you give me one pound and I will multiply this money for you, Allah says in the Quran. Allah says, Man qardan hasana. Who is going to give Allah a goodly loan? So he can multiply for you many folds. That's the ayah. For you da'ifu ad'afin kathira. So he can multiply for you many times. Kathira, ad'afin kathira, many times. Ya Allah, you say this, so I, you've said it and that's enough for me. I don't need to be reminded 25, 26 different ways of how Allah is going to help me. Because you've said it once to me, that's enough for me. That's my reliance. Here's my money. So, my brothers and sisters, do you see now? Do you see and can we see how the questions are the same? The test is the same, but the situation is difficult and there is it's loss of wealth and loss of homes and loss of lives and loss of business and loss of crops and loss of everything. And ours is the opposite. Here we are getting and giving and getting and getting and getting. And they are pleased with Allah with what they have lost. And we have to be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He has given us and what we are giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, we again have a responsibility that we have to fulfill. When I was in Egypt and I was in the warehouse and I was seeing the food packs being prepared and I seen the trucks being loaded and they are leaving from the warehouse and I can see different organizations, partner organizations coming and they are subhanAllah doing their bit subhanAllah through Al Khair Foundation and they are doing all of these things my brothers and sisters you know he, he gave me a, a level of sukoon in my heart thinking about the fact that this is what happens when everyone fulfills their personal and individual responsibility because one may, you know, if every single person, if oh, this entire pallet that you can see behind me, if every single person on that pallet thought, what's my 50 pound going to make a difference? You know, mera so pound, do so pound, so pound, kya difference banai ga? Kuch zara to hoega ni. Yaar, kya faida? Better hai, mein ye, is basically ye kar loo, wo kareed loo. Baad mein de dunga mein. If everyone on that, 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 that moving pallet that you can see thought like this, there would be no pallet there. There would be no all these boxes lying out. But it is because all of you at home individually are fulfilling your responsibility and you are feeling to yourself that, you know what, I should be giving something. I should be helping the people of Palestine and Gaza and I should be sending my aid. That this, what you see behind me, is made possible. Al Khair Foundation is getting aid into Gaza. And let me make it clear for all our brothers and sisters who are watching right now. You may ask, brother, they are not letting aid into Gaza. So how are you getting your aid into Gaza? First of all, they are letting aid in. They are claiming, to, you know, they, they, they made a claim that we would allow 500 trucks every day into Gaza. They did not, uh, subhanAllah, fulfill that promise. Then some news agencies said about 150 trucks are entering a day. That is also not true. About every day, about 90 trucks they are allowing in. That's the latest report I've, I've, I've read, subhanAllah, from the United Nations. They are allowing about 90 trucks in a day. And Alhamdulillah, Al Khair Foundation is one from those organizations that is, that is being allowed to take their aid inside. And you may ask, why Al Khair Foundation? Why not someone else? Why is it that there are thousands of trucks waiting at the Rafa border? That's because, my brothers and sisters, we are not an organization that started our operation on October 7. We have been sending aid into Gaza since 2018. If not a daily basis, then at least three, four times a week have our trucks been going into Gaza. So you can imagine the border forces know Al Khair Foundation very well. And let me tell you something else. You know when October 7th happened? 
and people were still in shock, people were still trying to take in, a lot of charities were trying to find partners who could deliver on their behalf. Al Khair Foundation was not in a position where they had to look for a partner, they had to find a way how can we get aid in. Because let me tell you, on October 7, our trucks, an entire convoy went in. On October 8, our convoys went in. And convoy, not our truck, convoys went in of Al Khair Foundation. And let me tell you something else, on October 6, when the world did not even know something was about to happen in Gaza, on October 6, our trucks were going in. So since then, when they closed the borders, and then after a while when they opened them again, they are not going to, of course, they're not going to choose an organization or, 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 or people they've never seen before. They are going to allow those trucks and those organizations to go in first of, of that they know already. And because we've got the experience of so many years that we know how to pack the items. We know how to place them on the trucks because everything matters. We know how to prepare the list. We know how to deal with the people on the border. We know about everything, subhanAllah. We have got experience in this. And let me tell you something else. It is not that we are only delivering this on behalf of our donors. We are delivering more aid on behalf of our international partners than we are for our own donors. You know that? You know our latest addition of, of a partner that wants to deliver in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. You know who that is? It's the Qatari government. And we just delivered a couple of days ago, we delivered their first delivery in Gaza. And their first delivery, it was just a, 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 subhan, you know, the, the first test, you could say. It was the initial test. They wanted, maybe they were testing us, but the first delivery was already over 250,000 pounds just for that organization. We have other organizations who are much, much bigger than Al Khair Foundation that are delivering through Al Khair Foundation in Gaza because they don't have the access to Gaza. Even if they are bigger than us, when they arrive at the border, they'll look at them and they'll say, okay, don't worry, wait. But when they see Al Khair Foundation, they, they know Al Khair Foundation for many, many years. Our entire hospital was imported. All the materials for our hospitals were imported, everything. So, you know, you can imagine the experience that we have with importing food and medicines and all the rest into Gaza. When the health ministry ran out of medicines in Gaza, they came to Al Khair Foundation and Al Khair Foundation delivered. And you could see, subhanAllah, the Al Jazeera footages that we showed at the time, where Al Jazeera is showing, subhanAllah, our aid supplies entering Gaza. So, you know, be rest assured, our aid that I'm donating, that you are donating, is reaching Gaza. You know, this is the footage I was talking about. This is Al Jazeera, you know, you could see the health ministry, 15 of Gaza's 35 hospitals forced to close down. And, they, and this was a time where they needed a lot of medicines. They said there is no medicines left. So it was Al Khair Foundation that they gave the assignment to bring in medicines. And you can see the Al Khair Foundation logo. You can see this is not, this was in November, December, I believe. Right? Is there a date on here somewhere? You know, I don't have it right in front of me. But this is subhanAllah inside Gaza. This is in Khan Yunus. This is our truck arriving at a hospital full of medicines through your donations. So again, we are not, uh, subhanAllah, new in the game when it comes to Gaza. We are very well established. We are very well established, my brothers and sisters, without delaying any further. You have the power to deliver your aid to the people of Gaza by providing a food pack by giving an entire pallet of food, food packs, by giving an entire air cargo pallet of food packs that will enter Gaza, by providing medicines, by providing shelter, by providing flour. The prices are all displayed on the screen. You can see the prices, but we need you to respond and we need you to give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to go on a break my brothers and sisters, and in this break, I don't want you to relax. I don't want you to hold back, but my brothers and sisters, we need to respond and give as much as you can. Before you're going to leave for Tarawi, or before you're about to pray your Tarawi, you know, first give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an open, a happy, and a sound heart. And then when you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, watch how that salah will change. Look how that connection with Allah will change. We'll see you after break. Stay with us. See you soon. Salaam alaikum.
نام فاطمہ بیوی ہے چار سال ہوگی میرے شوہر کے انتقال کو وہاں سے مجھے میکے میں بھائیوں نے شفٹ کر دیا تھا یہاں پہ میں رہتی ہوں لیکن بڑی مشکل اور بڑی تنگ درسی سے رہ رہی ہوں میرا اپنا کوئی مستقبل نہیں ہے خود میرے پاس اتنی تعلیم نہیں کوئی جوب کر سکوں گھر کا خرچہ ہے راشن وغیرہ ہے دودھ ہے سبزی ہے ہر چیز ہے پھر بچے بیمار ہو جاتے ہیں بڑے بیٹھے کا بھی مسئلہ ہے اب اس کے سر کا بتا رہے ہیں نہیں میری گنجائش نہیں ہے کہ میں سی ٹی اسکین کرا سکوں بچے کا چھوٹے بچے کا جگر کا بور رہے ہیں میری بیٹی اس کی کمر کا تھوڑا ہڈی کا مسئلہ ہے وہ چلتی ہے تو اس کے پھر بھی درد ہو جاتا ہے تو اتنی مشکلات آتی رہی ہے میرے پاس اتنی پیسے نہیں آتی ہماری گھر کے پاس سے گاڑی جاتی میں یہاں سے گاڑی لگا سکوں پھر سامنے روڈ سے میں نے گاڑی لگائی ہے وہ بھی اب میرے پاس ایسا وقت آ جاتا ہے کہ اس گاڑی والے کے لیے میرے پاس پیسے نہیں ہوتے پھر وہ کہتے ہیں باجی میں آپ کے بچوں کو نہیں اٹھاؤں گا پیسے دو کبھی بچوں کے سکول کے لیے پیسے نہیں ہوتے پھر وہاں سے ٹیچر بولتے ہیں ہم آپ کے بچوں کا نام کاٹ رہے ہیں ہم لوگوں کو کبھی گاڑی والے چھوٹ چل جاتے ہیں ماموں کے پاس پیسے نہیں ہوتے تو کبھی اسکول میں پیسوں کی ضرورت ہوتی ہے ماموں کے پاس پیسے نہیں ہوتے پھر یہ سال کے بعد ان فارم لینے پڑتے پھر کوپیاں لینے پڑتے ماموں کے پاس پیسے نہیں ہوتے بہت مشکلات ہوتے ہیں ان کہتے ہیں کہ ہم لوگ جائیں کہ ٹھیک سے ہمارے پاس پیسے ہم لوگ چیزیں لیں تو ماموں کے پاس اتنے پیسے نہیں ہوتے ہم لوگ کو کوئی لنچ کر دیں ساتھ میں اسکول میں اور بچے بھی چیزیں لاتے ہیں ہم لوگ کو کبھی دل ہوتے ہیں کہ ہمارے پاس بھی لنچ ہو شاید کیا آج بھی بابا ہوتے ہیں ہم لوگ کو کوئی چیز کی کمی نہیں ہوتی بچے یہ بات بہت زیادہ بولتے ہیں کہ پاپا ہوتا ہے کاش ماما یہ بات ہماری پوری ہوتی پاپا ہوتا ہے یہ بات پوری ہوتی اس لیے پھر مجھے بہت دکھ ہوتا ہے میں کوشش کرتی ہوں کہ ہر بات پوری کر سکتی ہوں نہیں کر سکتی بچی بہت زیادہ کلوز تھی اپنے باپ کے ساتھ نہ اکثر محسوس کرتی رہتی ہے میں اس کو حوصلہ دیتی ہوں مت دیتی ہوں لیکن خود ٹوٹ جاتی ہوں بچے بھیجے تھے وہ کہے تھے کہ آپ لوگ کو کتنا ٹیم ہو گیا آپ لوگوں نے پیسے نہیں دیے تو ہمارا کرزہ دے پروسیوں سے ادھار لیتی ہوں قرض بہت ہو گیا مجھ پہ دکانوں کا قرضہ ہے سکول میں قرضہ ہے بہت سارے قرضے مجھ پہ پریشانی رہتی ہوں سوچتی رہتی ہوں کیسے اتاروں گی کیا کروں گی اتنی سپورٹ نہیں ہے اتنے پیسے آمدن ہے نہیں پھر بچوں کی پڑھائی کا خرچ ہے پھر بچوں کی بماری کا دکھ درد کا خرچ ہے یہاں کے حالات بھی ایسی ہیں سوطالیں بھی مہنگی ہیں لے کے جاتی ہوں بچوں کو تین چار ہزار پانچ ہزار آسانی سے لگتا ہے اور کبھی وقت ایسا ہے میرے پاس ہزار روپیہ بھی نہیں ہوا لوگوں کا کھانا ٹیپ بھی ہوتا ہے کبھی لیٹ ہو جاتے ہیں کبھی ایسا ایسا ٹیپ آئے کہ ہم لوگوں نے کھائے جو کھانا پھر ہم لوگ ایک ٹیپ کی نہیں کھاتے تھے دو ٹیپ کی نہیں کھاتے تھے پھر تیسری ٹیپ بھی کھائے لیتے تھے یا پروسی دے یا پھر مامو لوگ دے رات کو اگر ہم لوگ اٹھے ہیں تو بھوک لگ جو ہو تو کھانے کے لیے آگے پچھ کی ہوتا ہے محلے میں دکندار ہیں ان سے ادھار لگایا ہوئے لیکن یہ بھی پھر اس صورت میں دیتے ہیں کہ پہلے کے پیسے میں کلیئر کر لوں پھر میں نے پروسیوں سے ادھار مانگے یا گرودار بھی نہیں ملا پھر ایک وقت کا میں نے کھانا مانگے یا ایک وقت کے لیے میں نے آٹا مانگے دودھ مانگے اس طرح کا وقت بھی ہے میرے اوپر ہم لوگ بابا کے ساتھ بزار جائے بابا اگر کچھ چیز چاہیے ہوئے ہمیں تو اگر ہم لوگ بابا کو بولے ہیں بابا یہ چاہیے بابا کہتے ہیں ہمارے پاس میرے پاس میں پیسے نہیں پھر آپ پھر لے کے دے دوں گی فروٹ ہونے چاہیے اچھا یہ سانو ہوتے ہیں اچھا ہونے چاہیے
तो हमारे पास इतने पैसे नहीं थे जो वो हमारी पैसे पूरे करे ज़िंदगी के कोई भरोसा नहीं होता कभी क्या पता मुझे मेरी कितनी ज़िंदगी है मैं मैं चाहती हूँ जब मेरे बच्चे बड़े हों तो इनको मुश्किलात ना करनी पड़े अपने घर के लिए इनके लिए घर बन जाए ताकि अगर ये कोई काम कर सकें तो इनको टेंशन तो ना रहने की ना हमारे पास में कपड़े हो अब फिर रमजान आ गए बच्चे ही बोलते मामा कपड़े कपड़े बनाओगी मैंने कहा कोशिश करूंगी बेटा अब हालात देख के जाए कोशिश होती नहीं है पैसे पास होते नहीं बना नहीं सकती यही होती बड़ा बेटा मेरा बहुत दिल पे लगा रहे बात को ना वो कुमोश छुमोश रहते हैं बस इधर उधर से वापस आए बोले मामा काश ऐसा होता काश ऐसा होता तो तब बहुत ज्यादा दुख होता है मैं गिर जाती हूँ टूट जाती हूँ लेकिन फिर मैं उसको हौसला देती हूँ मैं कहती हूँ बेटा देखो वो भी तो होते हैं जिनका कोई नहीं होता वो भी तो वक्त गुजारते हैं मेरी गुजारिश है प्लीज मेरे बहन भाइयों मेरे बच्चों के लिए ये मसला हल करें उनकी जगह के लिए उनकी रिहायश के लिए उनकी खाई पी के लिए उनकी पढ़ाई के लिए प्लीज मेरी अर्ज है आप लोगों के आगे मेरी बहन भाई मैं आपके लिए हमेशा दुआ करती रहूंगी आज रोजे में आज भी दुआ करूंगी अल्लाह ने आप लोगों को मेरे लिए शायद के भेजो वसीला बना के जरिया बना के तो प्लीज मेरा ये मसला हल करना है अल्लाह आपको बहुत बहुत कामयाबी देगा जो हम लोग के साथ करें लगे जितना हमें दिया अल्लाह इससे उससे ज़्यादा उनको दे अल्लाह पाक उनके पूरा पाक करें अल्लाह पाक उनके लिए तो हम को दे उससे ज़्यादा उनको दे
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The scenes that you just saw right now in front of you, these were just glimpses from Gaza. These were just small, little, few second clips from the lives of the people inside Gaza. This is reality of Gaza. My brothers and sisters, the Khair Foundation is on the ground in Gaza, and we are there and have been there since many, many years. We have been working in Gaza for well over a decade now. October 7 was not when we suddenly decided to go and work into Gaza. In fact, we have been there for many, many years. When it comes to aid delivery in, in Gaza, we have been sending trucks into Gaza on a weekly basis, if not daily, subhanAllah, since 2018. So you can understand the scale of our operations inside Gaza since many, many years. And well before that, we were already working there, uh, subhanAllah, in terms of delivering aid, putting water wells, filtration plants, orphans, building, subhanAllah, and supporting hospitals through medicines. And then to the extent where we finally decided to build a hospital in Gaza. My brothers and sisters, an organization doesn't randomly build a hospital in a random place. They will only build a hospital in a place, in the scale of the hospital, the size of the hospital, with the amount of, uh, of, of uh, procedures that are able to be done from the hospital. You know, it's only built in a place where, you know, they are themselves present, where they know about the situation. You know, we are not going to build a hospital in a random place, subhanAllah, where we have no access to. We can only build a hospital in a place where we have access. Every every brick from the hospital was imported into Gaza. So you can imagine how long ago we were, we, we were importing stuff into Gaza. And when October 7 happened, when the rest of the world was trying to figure out a way to get the aid to Gaza, on 7 of October, Al Khair Foundation trucks entered Gaza. On the 8th of October, Al Khair Foundation trucks entered Gaza. In fact, let me tell you something else. On the 6th of October, Al Khair Foundation trucks were entering Gaza. So, alhamdulillah, we have a long, long, uh, you know, experience uh, in this field when it comes to delivery in Gaza. We know how to do it. We know what, what are the rules, you know, the regulations. We know the way to, to, to subhanAllah, put the trucks uh, together, the way we have to uh, put, uh, subhanAllah, uh, the boxes, in which way we put it out, how we have to sort it out, where we put the food, where we put the medicines, if they are going in the same lorry what to put on the banners and what not to put on the banners. You know, all of these small things many organizations are not aware of. But because of that, maybe they didn't put the right banner on. Maybe they didn't place the food bags in a certain way. They didn't prepare the list in a certain way. Right, they are finding difficulties to enter Gaza. But Al Khair Foundation, because we have a long relationship with the border, where we have been sending and, and, the, and, the, and the border force has been seeing Al Khair Foundation trucks on, subhanAllah, a, a daily basis. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, this is uh, when it comes to our aid delivery. So we can assure you, rest assured, your aid is reaching Gaza. The donations that we are asking here, we would not be asking if we could not deliver in Gaza, I'm telling you. And even if, if someone else, I would not be standing here at least, right? And I'm sure the organization itself would not be standing here either, asking for donations if we were not able to deliver in Gaza. But the fact that we are, and the fact that many organizations in the UK, the, you know, other charities that other people donate to thinking that that charity is delivering in Gaza are in fact delivering in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. Many organizations internationally, the, 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 the Awqaf in Turkey, the Ministry of All the Masajid is delivering in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. The, one of the largest charity, you know, half a million, half, uh, uh, not half a million, 500 million pound charities are delivering in Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. And subhanAllah, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Maldives, there's only two main organizations in the Maldives that are operating and the government supports. One is the Red Crescent and the second one is another organization which is a partner organization. And they are sending millions into Gaza through Al Khair Foundation. The Qatar government, the Qatar government, my brothers, the Qatari government, they are sending aid, into, even though they have a Qatar Red Crescent, right? The Red Crescent, they have a Qatar Red Crescent, but they are still have chosen Al Khair Foundation 
and recently we will fulfill the uh, delivery and subhanallah it's all on film it's all on video because we have to prove short to them you know we have to show to them as well that we were delivering so we got all the videos we got all the proof we got all the details of all the trucks that have entered so you know no one can say you're lying no one can say you're making it up because if you really really uh, want to see subhanallah and you're a donor and you're a supporter and you want to see if you are you know come to the office come to the HQ inshallah the team will show you my brothers and sisters, we are, we are very confident that we can deliver your aid in Gaza. And what are we delivering in Gaza? You know, one may ask. We have, alhamdulillah, many different kinds of projects in Gaza. But right now, because there is a war happening in Gaza, we uh, focus on a few main things. And first of all is food. It's food packs. Because they need food. We are sending in flour, pallets full of flour. And for example, for a food pack, it costs 50 pounds. If you want to provide bread, Subhanallah, you know, baked bread ready so they don't have to, you know, find the ingredients, have, need yeast and, and all the different ingredients to make bread. They, we, we make bread ourselves in our bakery and we distribute that. So you can give bread. And how much does bread cost? You can provide bread to 20 families for 100 pounds. That's not a big amount, my brothers and sisters. But look at the amount of families you'll be feeding. Each family, imagine if they have, you know, they have more families right now. But even if you add it, you know, for a minimum of five, Five times, uh, subhanAllah, uh, five times uh, 20 is 100 pounds. So 100 pounds you are paying to feed, subhanAllah, four twenty families. Ramadan kitchen. So we have a Ramadan kitchen in Gaza. In this kitchen, we are every day preparing meals. Chawal, rice, soup, all kinds of different things we are preparing in that kitchen. And that food is being distributed. And let me tell you something amazing. The amazing thing, my brothers and sisters, is the fact that this kitchen is also in the north of Gaza. In the north of Gaza where, there's a, where, where the signs of famine have, have become very, very clear, Al Khair Foundation is running a kitchen where you can feed hot meals to the people of Gaza, people who are starving to death. In that area, you can feed people hot meals through Al Khair Foundation for 120 pounds for 40 people. So you donate 120 pounds, you are feeding 40 people in Gaza. Subhanallah, and the meal that we provide, my brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, you know, that could last them and give them energy for quite some time. Because the small, small meals that, we, that they're having, and then suddenly they get rice and chicken in front of them. Subhanallah, or they meet because we are slaughtering animals. You know, you might, you might be thinking, where are you getting your meat from? We've got, the, we've got our own, we had our own farm, remember? So we've, we've got access to animals, we've been purchasing animals, livestock from people that have been selling them because they need the money to buy other stuff. So we've got the animals that have been slaughtering and doing qurbani and, and, and zabiha of those animals and cooking meat and, and food with that meat and subhanAllah distributing that to the people. So for 40 people, 120 pounds. Then my brothers and sisters, we've got the 100 meals pack. You can provide 100 meals for 400 pounds. Then my brothers and sisters, you can send on a truck food supplies uh, and you can donate towards this pallet 1,300 pounds. So towards a pallet, uh, you know, subhanAllah, depending on what the food is, it will cost about 1,300 pounds. Uh, medical supplies, Gaza per pallet. So every pallet full of medical supplies is 2,000 pounds. If you want to send an entire truck, so on a truck there's about 40 to 42 pallets on there, and each pallet is about a ton, more than a ton. So a medi uh, uh, subhanAllah, where is it gone? All right, the truck of uh, flour supplies is 15,000 pounds. 15,000 pounds, my brothers and sisters, you can send an entire truck. And you might say for, to yourself, uh, you know, 50,000 pounds is a bit of, of a stretch for, for us. You know, it's not of a stretch if you really wanted to give it. And the reason I'm saying this is because when we come together and we st start doing the efforts to try to get to that number. You know, Ramadan is very easy, and let me tell you, because I've been fundraising for many years. Ramadan is the easiest time to go to up to someone and say, look, I'm raising fun, funds to send a truck full of, of, of flour to Gaza for 15,000 pounds and I've, I've got you know, a few thousand pounds already. People are going to give. Trust me. Trust me. It is, this is not just my responsibility, Mulan Huzaifa's responsibility or Imam Qasim's responsibility to stand here and ask for donations. Everyone can include themselves in this work. You can go to your family members and you can go to your friends and your colleagues at work and you can go to the schools and the maktabs and the masjids that you go to and they collect all of this money. One Friday, go to your local masjid and say to the imam, 
We need 15,000 pounds to send one truck of flour to Gaza or 50,000 pounds for a full truck of subhanallah, no, 30,000 pounds for a uh, truck full of food supplies to Gaza. A truck full of food supplies, 30,000 pounds. A truck full of flour, 15,000 pounds. Go to your local masjid, speak to the committee, say, look, I want to raise some money and I'm, I'm, I'm struggling maybe because I don't have the, the right amount of people around me that have that money. So can I do a collection at your masjid? Can after each salah, can I make an announcement? And can I say, you know, I'm collecting money for, subhanAllah, send a, a truck full of flour. My brothers and sisters, look, without you having the money, you have raised enough money. You know, I remember when I was younger, 15, 16, 17, you know, these, these ages, I used to go door to door. I used to go buy 100 samosas for 20 quid, because I know this very well. I used to go in Birmingham, in so on Soho Road. Right, those people from Birmingham that know. Yeah, I used to go to Soho Road. I used to buy vegetable samosas, 20 pounds. I used to give me 100 samosas. I used to grab my friend with me. Yeah, because we wanted to raise money for charity. We used to go to Comedy Road. We used to go to Ladypool Road. We used to go to Stratford Road. We used to go to all, all the main shops. We used to go in the shop, the shopkeeper. You know, they've got, uh, subhanAllah, money in front of them. So, you know, it's very difficult for them to say no. <laughs> so we used to go into the shops and we used to say, uh, we are raising money for Gaza, for Yemen or whatever. The, it was most like for Syria at the time. We were raising money for Syria. You know, people need a help. They knew the situation. You know, these are samosas and, you know, whatever you can donate. And people, instead of donating, and we used to ask a pound for a samosa, I think it was. Uh, but subhanAllah, they, they used to give five pounds for a samosa. They used to give ten pounds. They used to give more. So we used to end up, in, at the end of the day, instead of you know, raising you know, uh, 100 pounds, we used to raise 500 pounds, 400 pounds, 300 pounds. And that was just a little bit of effort on our behalf. Right? Or we used to come together with three, four different people and we used to say, okay, let's hold a charity car wash. See, so it's, it's, it, if you want to do it, you will do it. And if you don't want to do it, you're not going to do it. That's the reality. Right? But be honest with yourself. And the fact that we can do it, and, we, and when we do it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, you know, in this field of work, you know, working with salaka, helping the needy, and trying our best, whatever we can do, I've seen miracles in my life. And I'm not lying to you, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, sell this to you. I've seen miracles in my life. I've seen how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened certain doors for me, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken care of certain problems for me. And I just think to myself, oh, how am I going to get out of this situation? And suddenly, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door and, and, and you are in shock sometimes. Think, whoa, I didn't even know that you know, this was possible and I could get out of the situation this way. Right, because Allah is there for you. If you are in the assistance of your brothers, Allah is in your assistance. That's what he means that Ab Zindigi Guzari and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removing the obstacles from your path. And if you go the other way around, then obstacles are start coming. You know, I heard something uh, uh, yesterday on a video. They said, log paise jodte hain mushkil waqt ke liye, phir mushkil waqt aa bhi, bhi jata hai. Agar aap paise jod rahe hain mushkil waqt ke liye, to wo mushkil waqt to aayega, kyunki aap uske liye tiyari kar rahe hain. <laughs> Agar aap aakhirat ke liye tiyari karenge, Allah ke raaste mein khach karenge, to wo mushkil time nahi aayega, kyunki Allah, wo mushkil waqt aapke zindagi se nikal dega. Magar hum mushkil waqt ke liye tiyari kar rahe hote hain, phir Allah wo mushkil waqt bejta bhi hai saath. Ki ye lo, aap tiyari kar rahe the, abhi enjoy karo. So, you know, brothers and sisters, this is reality. So, you know, these are the prices. If you want to send a tent, a shelter towards Gaza, subhanAllah, people who have no homes left, they are living in, you know, they're, they're taking plastic sheets and they're trying to build tents from it. Take, they take wood and they, and, and they, subhanAllah, place it over the wood and they try to make a tent, but it's not waterproof. It's still raining in there. And because the ground is just soil, it's just, it's, 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 zameena, it's not, uh, you know, asphalt or anything like that. It becomes m muddy. People have no toilets to, subhanAllah, go to, to clean themselves and, and, and relieve themselves because they're so dirty. Women who have, subhanAllah, uh, you know, periods that they need to care, take care of. You know, they need uh, hygiene uh, packs. So we can provide it to them. So all of these items are available. But we can just put it in front of you. We can just say, my brothers and sisters, these are the items that we are doing. Please donate generously. And then we have to wait. And when 100 people come, we'll deliver 100 people worth of aid. If 1,000 people come, we will, we'll deliver 1,000 people's aid. If 10,000 people come, then we'll deliver 10,000 people's aid. That's how it works. We are just the middle, the delivery partner. We take your sadaqah and we deliver it in Gaza. We can't deliver something that we don't have, right? So we need...
to take your donations and then deliver it in Gaza. And that's the reality. So my brothers and sisters, 03,000-999-786. Alhamdulillah, Mulana Huzaifa is at the Rafa border uh, in front of a truck. So let's go to the Rafa border. <laughs> yes, yes, Jazakallah. I wish I was at Rafa border and sending your aid in. Uh, but you know what? To get to Rafa border, it's a, it's a mission and a half. It's not easy because I have been to Rafa border. I have been inside Rafa border. I have been through Rafa border. I have been into Gaza, alhamdulillah. Not now, not in this war, uh, but, you know, a few years ago. And it was a challenge. You know, the, the, the journey of a couple of hundred kilometers from Cairo to Rafa border, which is, you know, 250 kilometers approximately, takes, you know, three, four days. And that's how much it takes. You have to sleep in the car. You know, there's, you know, you can't eat too much because there's no toilets so, uh, readily available on the way. You know, there's no services or motorways and like we have here, you know. So it's, it's a very difficult journey to get to Rafa border. But you know what? Our aid, alhamdulillah, is reaching Rafa border. I, our aid is going through Rafa border. And alhamdulillah, we've had trucks upon trucks, mashallah. You know, what Imam Saab has said, you know, at least 250 odd trucks have gone into Rafa border, you know, 150 of them from the UK donors, mashallah. You know, from you guys, you have, mashallah, sent trucks upon trucks into Gaza. And like Harun just said, you know, he shared with you the, uh, the numbers, even on 6th of October, when this war, before this war started, 7th of October, 8th of October, our trucks have been going in in those days. You know, Imam Saab the other day was sharing exact dates you know, when trucks had been going in on the day of the war, before the war. And, you know, we've had the hospital in Gaza, which we built in 2016, 17, 18. And every few days, we'd have a truck of, you know, all the material for the hospital itself, going in from Egypt for the hospital. So, you know, we have that record of sending trucks into Rafa border, into Gaza, through the Rafa border, you know, for, for the people of Gaza. And when this war started, like I've just said, and Imam Saab said, you know, even one day before our trucks had entered. Obviously for other reason, for food packs and other things, uh, you know, it's after then, you know, when, you know, they, they stopped aid and all of that, that people, you know, got, uh, people got to know that aid is not going in and, you know, all of that. But before that, alhamdulillah, trucks were going in and aid was going in. We have been sending, you know, other uh, you know, medical equipment like medical beds and all the equipment for the hospital had been going into Gaza previous to this September, October the 7th. So we've got that record, alhamdulillah. And even right now, during the war, you know, these uh, you know, 250 trucks that have gone in, over 250 trucks, 150 of them from you guys, from UK donors. This has all gone in during the war, whilst the war was going on, whilst the war is going on right now. And even if it's, go it's going in right now, Imam Sab just, you know, several days ago, he was in Jordan. You know, uh, he took a plane full of, you know, aid into Arish airport. And from Arish airport, because they don't have facility to stock the st uh, stuff, all of those were loaded onto, the, the pallets were loaded onto a truck and immediately they made their way to the border, not the Rafa border, the other border which is through Israel into Gaza. And they let that, they're letting that through, alhamdulillah, for whatever reason, their political reason, they might need to show something, but you know, they, they let that through, alhamdulillah, and it's gone into Gaza. And it's gone in faster than it would go in through the Rafa border. So there, alhamdulillah, our trucks and your aid, your food packs are going in. And we're not going to stop, my brothers and sisters, just because Ramadan, you know, it's middle of Ramadan, coming to middle of Ramadan now. And even when Ramadan comes to an end, Ramadan, agar pura bhi ho jata hai, after two weeks, doesn't mean that our aid will stop going in, like many charities might do, because everyone is just hyped up in the month of Ramadan. You know, we have been sending aid in from the beginning of this war, before the war, and Alhamdulillah, we will continue sending the aid. Because the people of Gaza, the Gaza families, their situation is not going to change after Ramadan. They will be, still be hungry. In fact, according to the survey that have been shared to you by Harun, you know, recently, according to that survey and that poll and that uh, report, you know, they predict that after Ramadan, in a month's time, which is after Ramadan, after Eid, if the situation remains the same, 
i.e. the war keeps going on and aid is not going in that frequently and there's not many people who will send their aid in and the situation remains the same as it is right now then you will see people dying in hundreds because of starvation because of famine this is the report that they have predict this is their prediction of course what Allah knows everything Allah knows you know what's going to happen but the the prediction and the report has been done on the on the basis of the current situation on the current you know circumstances what is happening right now and based on that they can see that if that continues the same situation continues from the thousand trucks that are supposed to get in into Gaza only you know a hundred are going in or 50 are going in a daily is if the situation remains the same then the situation the the time will come in few weeks time in Gaza people will die because of starvation and because of famine that's subhanallah that's the you know unfortunate that's the unfortunate reality that's gonna happen but you know what my brothers and sisters you know how many people are there in Gaza 2.3 million people 2.3 million people individuals how many families are there that's about half a million 600,000 families you know the whole of UK we cannot feed 700,000 800,000 families of course we can we can inshallah you know every month we need to feed because these people just not one month of Ramadan remember this this effort is not for the month of Ramadan if it was just for the month of Ramadan why is our aid entering on the 7th of October 8th of October immediately after the war has started even before October so the 7th so this aid needs to continue and if it doesn't continue there will be mass death mass amount of people will die because of lack of food it comes down to this now brothers and sisters it comes down to food and water the bare the basic we're not looking at mansions we're not looking at villas we're not looking at houses forget about mansions only we're not looking at houses we're not looking at development at the moment this is about saving the lives of the people of Palestine saving the lives of the people of Gaza these food packs subhanallah will last them a month what's going to happen after a month they need another food pack well, then what's going to happen after one more month they need another food pack they, this needs to continue the food packs needs to keep on going day in day out every single day one day if it's a thousand food packs that's gonna be a thousand families what about the others what about the others there's you know hundreds of thousands of families in Gaza so we need to continue inshallah reaching out to as many people if they get a food pack for a month that's alhamdulillah them sorted at least for a month that's them out of danger out of starvation out of that famine that the, the phase the phase five which we talked about and bring them down into in a lower category that is to give them a little bit more time then off you know we need another food pack to them it needs to continue so don't think this appeal is for month of Ramadan only this we are doing this in the month of Ramadan we need to continue inshallah even after the month of Ramadan in fact majority of the time it's afterwards that people are in more in need because Ramadan may people are always generous alhamdulillah they give it but after Ramadan keep continuing inshallah keep donating mashallah uh, the numbers on the screen 03000 786 that's the number you need to call give food packs in 5 10 15 because people of Gaza need your support they need your food packs they need to be helped inshallah in this dire need of their time my brother sisters come forward inshallah we're going to go towards a very very short break inshallah after the break we will continue with the appeal during the break look at the documentaries as well some of these documentaries they give a lot of information about what is happening what are we are doing as well so watch them inshallah we'll see you after the break assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh سرف گزارنا ہی نہیں سمجھنا بھی ہے
جب آپ کو اپنی توبہ ہی مانگنی ہے جب آپ کو کسی کے سامنے اپنے دل کا حال ہی رکھنا ہے جب آپ کو کسی کے سامنے گڑ گڑانا ہے تو پھر وہ رب کی ذات ہونی چاہیے رمضان کو سمجھنے کے لیے جڑے رہیے تفیم رمضان کے ساتھ ہم دونوں ہوں گے آپ کے ساتھ سارا رمضان دیکھتے رہیں پیغام رمضان اونلی آن اکراچی زندگی اللہ کی عطا ہے اسے گزارا بھی اللہ کی مرضی کے مطابق جائے الہی تعلیمات کے مطابق زندگی بسر کرنے کے طریقے جاننے کے لیے دیکھتے رہیے پروگرام طریق زندگی بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ اللہ انعم علینا بہت الفضل بان نجد مجموعہ من المواد الاساسیہ التي يمكن إعدادها كطرود صحية لتوزيعها على الأسر النازحة في محافظات شمال قطاع غزة هذه الطرود الصحية التي تعد شيء أساسي أيضا بجانب المواد الغذائية لدينا هنا الأكواف البلاستيكية هنا معجون الأسنان الذي يستخدم بالإضافة لفراشي أسنان هنا حفاضات الأطفال موجود كميات كبيرة لكن هذا الذي يظهر في الصورة عينة هنا حفاضات كبار السن موجودة بكميات كبيرة ومتوفرة أيضا لدينا مجموعة من الأصناف منها الكلينس المعطر أيضا الفوط النسائية لدينا كذلك فراشي الأسنان وسائل الجلي والشامبو والصحون البلاستيكية والكاسات البلاستيكية أيضا الصابون ومعطر الجو وحفاظات حفاظات الأطفال وحفاظات كبار السن هذه الأصناف التي تم ذكرها تعتبر مكون أساسي يمكن العمل على إعداده كطرد صحي بقيمة 50 دولار هنا كما نشاهد البرين هنا الفوط النسائية التي أيضا يعانين النساء من حاجة شديدة بسبب ندرتها في السوق هنا كذلك سائل الغسيل أو معطرات الغسيل هذه الكمية الموجودة الحمد لله يمكن إعدادها كطرد صحية قيمة الطرد الصحي الواحد 50 دولار نسأل الله تعالى أن يجعل هذا العمل خاص لوجه الكريم وندعوكم بالمساهمة لتوفير الأموال التي من خلالها نستطيع شراء هذه الكميات وإعدادها كطرود صحية يتم توزيعها على الأسر النازحة في محافظات غزة ومحافظات شمال قطاع غزة بشكل خاص ونسأله تعالى أن يبارك في عملكم وزكوات أموالكم وصدقاتكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته realm of giving let us embark upon the path of compassion kind and star as ramadan dawns a time of reflection let's embrace those without shelter without protection thoughtful souls let us join hands and weave a tapestry of homes on these lands For in the depths of our hearts as we all know that a sheltered abode can help hearts grow in this sacred month, where blessings flow, let's create havens where love can sow. For every soul deserves a sanctuary, a place of solace, a realm contrary. Imagine the warmth, the embrace of four walls, shielding the vulnerable as darkness falls. Let us donate shelter, a gift so profound to those who wander lost and unfound for beneath every roof there's a story to share a tale of resilience a burden to bear thoughtful hearts let us seize their plight with homes that resonate with warmth and light for a shelter is more than bricks and beams it nurtures belonging it cradles dreams together we can build a haven strong and true a sanctuary that offers a fresh, hopeful view. In donating shelter, we find solace too, a bond that unites us through and through. 
So let us give with a heart full of grace and illuminate lives in this divinity of space. This Ramadan, dear friends, let's donate shelter, for in providing homes, we heal and empower and create a world where love can flower. My dear brothers and sisters, mashallah, we are here, uh, the truck is empty and all the food packs which you can see behind me here are being now loaded uh, onto, as you can see, Harun is helping with the loading of the truck, mashallah, this is going to go into the truck and once it's loaded, it's going to depart from this warehouse, inshallah, it will reach the Rafa border and when we get the permission, it will go through the Rafa border into Gaza and the people of Gaza, inshallah, will be able to have their suhoor, iftar, with your donation which you are giving right now. So pick up the phone, dial that number 03000 999 inshallah. All these pallets are ready to go into onto the truck into Gaza inshallah. And as you can see, uh, the team are already packing the next lot of the pallets and it will be inshallah packed up, uh, loaded onto the pallets and then loaded onto the next cargo that will go into Rafa border inshallah, through the Rafa border into Gaza. Remember, we have already sent 250 trucks have gone in and these are more trucks going into Gaza subhanallah you know we cannot imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken you know such a great level of work through Al Khair Foundation and this is all because of your donation and then now alhamdulillah this truck is also full because the final pallet is inside the truck mashallah <laughs> 